And with all the technical difficulties finally worked out, we are here in 4K! Thank God my computer won't choke. And that also reminds me, I'm going to leave this up in the background so if it starts to choke, I can see it on a graph. <laughs> well, it's good for me to know, too, because if I'm going to build a new one, then, you know, this kind of helps me spec it out, right? And we were, we were just in the midst of peer pressuring our good friend Eric here into making sure he at least records, if not streams, Bioshock Infinite, who, which he's going in blind to. Oh, I'm so excited for that. I really liked part one. I did, I, I, did I play part two? I think I did play part two, but it was not memorable. Part one was great. Um, part two was okay. It had multiple mm -hmm. endings, which is kind of interesting, but it was oh, like... okay, yeah. It, it was back when they were doing multiple endings for everything, and it was like, just... I wouldn't say that they did it just for the sake of doing it, but like, they didn't do it to the same effect. Like, Bioshock 1 had this crazy effect of like, there's this whole new world. Yes. Like, who would have even conceptualized yeah. this? Look at these philosophies playing out in this fucked up way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Infinite feels the same way to that. Excellent. Yeah. That, that, that's nice. And also, well, I mean, 3 is a brand new world, but also, um, I think it was well implemented. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of it had to do with my, my personal mindset, because when I go into gaming, I love playing games. However, mm -hmm. there's different motivations. Sometimes I play to be fully engaged and mm -hmm. invested in the game. And that's how I think I went into Bioshock 1, which is yes. why it made a big impact. I, I, I did play Bioshock 2. Why, why is it so vague? I can tell you why. I wasn't playing to be engaged. It was abnegation. So sometimes there are mm -hmm. parts of my life where like, I'm working crazy hours and mm -hmm. it's stressful as hell and I don't have much time to myself and I just want to sit down and drool in front of a screen for half an hour. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's, I, I, that's why I'm sitting here. Did I clear Bioshock 2? I don't Probably. I think I did. I think I did. But I barely even remember it. Yeah. Because it was like being worked to death in the yeah. mines. You know what I mean? Like we all go through at some point. I mean, most of us go through at some point in time, you know, where you have a heavier, stressful workload and just life sucks. Would you kindly play the sequel? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, I shall. I shall complete this game. <laughs> yeah. I, well, the good thing is now, uh, at least... <laughs> cross my reserve. But uh, I should be heavily engaged in Bioshock Infinite. Mm -hmm. And that... that 100% you should. I, okay. I think you okay. definitely will the same way you were with uh, the first one. It's just, it's not the same story, but there are similar things that happen. But it's less about that and more about the experience for it. Like, <clears throat> two things. One, so it came out, I forget when, like, late 2000s, early 2010s, somewhere in that range. Mm -hmm. This isn't a spoiler. With you, throughout the majority of the game, there's a, like, non-player character that interacts with you in a dynamic way, which at the time was, like, fucking unheard of in programming. Like, the right. ability to make it feel human. Right, and, like, right. have all these optional dialogue lines based on, like, where they went to in the room and what they could see next to them in the room. Like, right. they put so much effort into making this fucking work good. And it's, that's, that's there are some moments okay. people have, like, made YouTube compilations of, like, parts where you can get her to bug out. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just, it's always going to happen, right? Well, it's okay, so yeah. buttery smooth for the majority of the experience, and, like, you super, like, are invested in that character. So yeah. it worked really well, one. And two, without giving away what the story is about, it's a certain type of archetype of a story that I won't say that story has been told, but the the um, trope of that type of story is very hard to do in a way that, in retrospect, doesn't have a bunch of fucking plot holes that don't make any sense once you know what happens. Okay. This is like fucking sealed to the T, like vacuum, like a light bulb. They like vacuum sealed this fucker shit. Like this is <laughs> perfect. Like the writing mm. is fucking unbelievable. <laughs> Good to know. That just makes it all the more. Oh, I love a game of good writing. You know, yes. and the truth is, it's an excellent compliment because, like, I, I enjoy my Souls games. I play Elden Ring a lot, mm -hmm. but that's narrative storytelling. You know, yeah, I've got <laughs> Sif on the chest here, but uh, you know, but that's it's narrative storytelling. You know, I'm sorry, not narrative. Uh, it's environmental storytelling, mm -hmm. and so it's like you know, you get some place and you have to sleuth things out. You know, it's like oh, these arrows belong to this kind of people, and I think maybe something happened here. You know, it's like which is fun. Mm -hmm. I like that, but it's not as narrative driven. It's not as like character driven mm -hmm. as what you kind of are likely talking about. So that's a that's an excellent compliment. I like those two, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so I'm ready to be engaged that way. Because if anything, recently I've been playing Souls, but I've been playing it... Um, have you ever heard of Bar Bartle's Taxonomy of Gaming? Mm -hmm. 
So it's like they split up gamers into more or less four groups. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a really very rough sketch of this stuff, right? And two of the groups apply to me heavily. Is this the, like, Timmy, Spike? Well, it's an explorer and achiever okay. are the two things I really get into. Mm -hmm. So I like to explore a lot. It's probably my first inclination, but just only a little bit behind that is achievement. When I do mm -hmm. a level one run, that's an achievement experience, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. When I when I go through... And no fucking shock with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with... with uh, with a uh, exploration mentality, that's mm -hmm. when I'm just looking through. I want to see what's over the next hill. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to go through every last piece of it and find that item and find that weird weapon and find, you know what I mean, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And so uh, those are the two things that motivate me more. There's also killers and pro uh, pro social people. Um, sometimes I play pro social a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, in Dark Souls 2, I'd lay down my sign a lot next to bosses, especially yeah. tough ones. Especially ones that people will complain about, like the Ruined Sentinels would get complaints. But like, yeah, you're getting teamed up on. It's let's make it two on two. You know? <laughs> Spoiler: <laughs> This is let me solo her. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> not that good. You know, let, let her solo me to the ground, and hopefully you can finish her off. Well, you, you know, level one her. I mean, that's pretty fucking good. Like, that's almost as fucking amazing as it, what he does. Well, I mean, he just does it fucking consistently. He, like, he does it consistently. If you can do it at all, like you could train to eventually be that consistent. Whew, it's tough, and you know? she was really the biggest challenge, and I, I was the biggest coward in the world. I just used weapons to proc, proc everything, yeah. proc poison, proc bleed, proc frost, proc you know, uh, herpes, uh, herpes. <laughs> <laughs> then, please don't kill me, run away. I you love know. the uh, I forget the name of it now, but the one uh, that you get further early on that blocks bleed. It's like a uh, bleed. It's like a scythe or something. But okay. the thing is, you can hold it. I did a sword and board. And you can jab with it. While oh, you like turtling, like yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I cheese so many bosses that way. It was so yeah. fucking easy. <laughs> Some of the hardest. But I watch people struggle to death with these motherfuckers. It's like, hey, just fuck them. Yeah, boop, boop, boop. it's funny. I, gotcha. I I just play with all different styles, but I gravitate towards melee. And late, mm -hmm. lately, what I've done is I've taken uh, I forget the name of the shield, but it looks like a tombstone. And yeah. it was one of the heaviest in the game. It's the thumbprint one? Yeah, it's a thumbprint yeah, one. That's yeah, that's the one I eventually loved yeah, to use. Yeah, yeah, I guess I maxed it out. God, and now so I'm just, good. It's like, you can't scratch the paint. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's literally broken. Yeah, it's yeah, that's totally OP. So I, I have fun with that, too. It's like, go ahead. Boy, the effects look pretty, but you're not doing much. That's right. <laughs> And speaking of well-written games from Bioshock Infinite and uh, Elden Ring, we're going to transition to our topic of well-written things today, Arcane. We have now, uh, well, I've re-watched, you have watched for the first time the rest of Arcane. You've watched previously the first three episodes, that first kind of arc pre-time lapse. Now you've seen it all. I've also spammed you with a bunch of, like, cool Arcane-related com content. Oh, yeah. is it displaying? Yeah, there it is. There's a bunch of, like... AMVs and like uh, just like music that was actually original from Riot for the series that when you hear it in isolation like man some of that music is just fucking killer like it's so well written like the actual uh, the industry term which I've learned recently is like I've always thought of record as like a vinyl record mm -hmm. but in industry they use record to just mean that recording of that performance of it right, so what okay. goes on an album is a record mm. of that song and, like, if you did a live album, like, each song is a different <clears throat> record of that song, because it's, like, a recording. Like oh, okay, a recording that way. Okay, yeah. Um, man, like, some of those records of those songs are just killer. Um, a good jumping-off point, and I want to let you kind of direct this as the person who's not familiar with League, doesn't know what this fucking jacket uh, is. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm totally ignorant. Although, now I'm more interested than ever, uh, and I might be surprising you with this, but like, mm -hmm. okay, I feel like this is trite, and it's like, like, <laughs> oh everybody says this, but I don't care, I want to give it a shot. If I'm going to play this, I want to play a character I like. Yes. I like Vi. Yes. And you mentioned too, off the air last time, I think we were already yeah. off air, that you like kind of, uh, meteor, tankier characters that are also kind of melee in your face. Vi is very much that. You can build her to be more damage focused, but she kind of just naturally in her kit. Like, I think it's been a while since I've played League in a while, just period, but also mm. Vi in particular. But there was a time when I maimed her in the jungle. Okay. Um, she, her passive ability is every time she uses an ability, she gets a shield that's based on a percentage of her health. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you build items that give her flat health, which makes her more tanky and optimizes that percent health shield. Okay. And a lot of her abilities, like, she, she only has really two active abilities. One of them is her auto attack, which she's melee range. Mm -hmm. and she punches and then does a cone of damage behind the oh, target. Okay. So, has to be melee. Okay. And the other one is she gap closes, 
and whatever she comes into contact with, she does damage. Okay. And her ultimate is that same kind of uh, skill, except it's not you're aiming, you point and click and lock onto them, and from a harder range. Mm-hmm. And as you hit shit in the way, they take damage and get knocked out of your way. And okay. then when you reach that one, it's like a very dramatic, knock them in the air, I'll fucking slam them down. <laughs> like, so, she's fun. She's very visceral to play. I, think I was going like to say, it. I would, yeah. Because that's like, if I look at it, like if I was going to play Souls games to be easy, mm-hmm. I would probably go Magic, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't use it that much. When I, when I did it one time for Elden Ring, mm-hmm. and I was just like, I'm just... I'm just ripping them apart, you know? It kind of feels weak. You know what I mean? I want to get in there and trade blows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so I think that's my style of character. Vi definitely is go in, not necessarily go out. Okay. So, like, you will be punished quite a bit as you're learning, but that's part of League. League is very steep learning curve, and death is much like uh, the Soul series, a part of it. <laughs> I died a lot in the Soul series, like a lot, a lot. Yeah. And, I mean, for many different reasons, from the stupid, oh, I fell, to holy shit, what was that that just ripped me to shreds? You know, like, I have to think through that. I don't even know what like, magic they were using, but I cut through my shield, like, you know, all those kinds of experiences. Like, I just get jumped by a death right bird or something yeah. in Elden Ring, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> oh, fuck those, those birds. Oh, those fucking, those fucking, uh, the, um... What is it? The the knights with the reddish armor. Now I'm just I'm blanking on all the names here, but I usually know them. Anyways, like the heavy heavy metal knights is what I'll say. I'm thinking of the red red armor plated ones, not the brighter ones. So they're mm-hmm. not the banished knight armor set, but like the. Um, uh, I don't know the name, but I know what it, you're it's like about. it's they it's something tree or other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they're exactly they, they have a wide wide variety. But I think sometimes they swoop attack you and stuff like yeah. that. And they can have nasty at range abilities. They can move quick, even though they're like plated. Yes, they fucking can. yeah. It's like they <laughs> get up all in your fucking they face. They seem slow when you first approach yeah, them it's like for the first chink, time. Chink. It's like <laughs> okay, know? I can fucking block this, and then it just swoops, and it's like oh no, no, I yeah. cannot. And, and that that I was actually down. partly magic, and it ate through my defense. And, oh fuck! Yes. You know. <laughs> It, you get them fairly early on too, so before you can use that fingerprint shield. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of the times they put them in areas where they can knock you off the fucking edge. And like, <laughs> yes, I got the shield. Uh, uh, yep. Oh, and I'm fucking dead because I fell the dust. Beware my heater shield. <laughs> You know? <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. blow through that shit like it's peanut butter and jelly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but so, anyways, uh, I died a lot. That's my point. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I can take that. Um. Yeah, <laughs> arcane. Uh, so I, I wanted to start off with the music. I think the iconic. There's mm, two iconic okay. scenes that people talk about with the music. Um, the first one is, in my opinion, kind of more obvious: the Echo versus Jinx fight. Oh, that's Very so obvious. good. Um, I think the Vi and Jace versus the like chem tech people yeah, yeah. fight has really killer music, but uh, the part that really stands out to most people in addition to the Echo Jinx one is the moment where Jinx is lighting the torch, mm. and uh, you have like the her psychosis ghost. Yeah, shut up! And it's you know, like, like that, that it's stuff, in yeah. time <laughs> with the fucking song where he like hits that high note and like, I forget the kid's name, but he's like screeching at the same time. Uh, is it one of the dead kids? Yes. Yeah, okay, the yeah. Skinnier one, the skinnier one, Yeah, yeah, think, yeah, yeah okay. Name? I forget the two, I kind of get them mixed up. But yeah, okay, skinnier. Kid. We yeah. both just watched this, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry. Names, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm <laughs> terrible with names. Obviously, I can't even fucking my favorite game. I should have had a character cheat sheet. Well, yeah, for me, for me to do anything like this is learning as I go. I kind of have some name lists because I suck with names. I yeah. remember visibly and viscerally and, and kinetically I kind of have these experiences that I'm not going to forget. When like, I do that like hour long uh, explain video, it's so yeah. much easier because I have a script and I already yeah, looked yeah, up yeah, all yeah. the names. So that's the thing. I gotta work on that. But, anyway, but yeah, so I think honestly I love the effects generally about how they kind of brought in her trauma. You yes. know, and how like fuck dude, it's like it's dark but it's totally valid. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's not like like what she experienced would traumatize somebody, you would think, oh, right? Yeah. And she's kind of, she's burdened with the ghosts of her past, and it's a real dark, visceral connection when it just sketches out, like you can see the animation style where it's like yeah. scribbling hard with all black. Yeah, and it's I like, love that. Yeah, it's really like, it's very um, emotional. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And it's like, it, and it, it denotes chaos, mm-hmm. and it brings her into that kind of interaction. Like she's, she's really... You know, we know this because we're looking on the outside in. She's yelling at her own mind. Yes. Right? You know, but it's very understandable for her to be in that position. Um, good God, I want to give her a hug and give her some therapy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's, it's 
But damn, you know. All right, Silco. Yeah. That's <laughs> uh, your father figure here. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I got here, so I got a daughter, right? But but you know that that's funny about Silco too. I grudgingly like. There's a lot of shit he did that I fucking would never do. Look, he's he's a murderer. He like deals a drug that like degrades your body. All that, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a fucking freedom fighter who took care of Jinx when no one else would. Yes. All right. Yep. He's fucking yeah. dad of and, the year. And in this he show. really really <laughs> loved her with his dying words. He's like, he did. Yeah. And he like, wasn't gonna trade her. Yeah. Like, he was like, he was no, gonna no, fight no. another fucking way. Yeah. It's like, like he, I would never give you up. Yeah. You know. When like, he had that scene dude. with Jace and he walked away. Like, he was clearly thinking, like, all right, how am I going to do this if they demand drinks? There's got to be something else. And they won't take me instead because they need me, which is totally reasonable. Like, we can't take you because what are we making the deal with if not you? Right. So, like, how do I give them enough to not have to give them drinks and still be in charge myself? Right. Like, what is the thing to give them to be able to still make Zahn happen? Yeah. Like, that's the conversation going through his mind. He's not thinking of, I'm going to give them drinks ever. It was right. just never on the table. Well, that's one thing. Despite all the murderous nature, and I could say a lot of negative things, throughout most of the story, I had that negative oh, yeah. inclination with him, right? However... I figured you would, too. I'd yeah. to hear about this. <laughs> but i got to give him some credit, dude. He's a loyal motherfucker to the absolute end, mm-hmm. you know? If he says he's your friend, he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's not full shit like a lot of people can be. Mm. So... His courage, his determination, and here's the thing about it, too, just give him a little bit of an excuse. Mm. If you were born into the underclass, underneath the foot of society, like, sometimes you'll read stories, like, an escaped slave will murder somebody trying to get free. Mm. I don't blame that slave. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're having these societies that are set up on deep, stilted injustice, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't, like, power doesn't concede anything. You yeah. have to fucking take it. And I'm sorry, but, like, that's the reality that we're living with. Yeah. And so somebody like Silco is probably, like... If the best you're going to get out of Zon while it's not independent. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, kind of. Well, not only that, but, like, uh, I would say if he didn't start out... Like, they don't have a deeper background from his, young, his youth. You only get a little bit of a picture of that at all, right? But There like, is some of that they've teased it, might be coming in season two. Oh, or really? Or their backstory, I particularly like the dynamic with him and Vander as they were still, like, pre that was, scene where they had their split. Yeah, and because I don't know who was, like, it's hard for me to make a call on that, because I know it seems like Vander betrayed him or something, right? Like, choked that's, him out in the river, That's right? what I got, the sense but, of... <clears throat> it's like, why? You know, but exactly. they, but considering how well the story was written for season one, I expect it to be compelling. I expect yes. it to be something where you could sympathize with either side and mm-hmm. try to really ferret through. Like, even if I disagree with one side, like, say, if I disagree with Soko, because I do in a lot of things, but mm-hmm. he's still, like, like a lot of the characters that I disagree with, yeah. I sympathize with them nonetheless. Mm-hmm. They're not monsters. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they do some monstrous things. Soko is probably one of the greater villains in the story, as he does destroy the society around him with this drug, which is inexcusable. You know, yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to. We're not you know, fans of meth here, okay? Yeah, <laughs> no kidding, right? Yeah, it's like it's it's almost like a hard drug, like H or meth or something. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like whatever you want to call it. It's just kind of a stand-in for really, because like most drugs don't kill you like that. Like yeah. weed doesn't, uh, hallucinogenics don't. I mean, we're going to be honest about this, but like, right. like there are a few, just a few drugs. I wish we'd be honest about this with society. Because it's really? harmful that we're not. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, if, if my kid, if she she's like 15, she smokes some marijuana, I'm like, okay, don't, you know, it's a little, you know what I mean? You're talk about it. Yeah, 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 right? But if it's like, oh, daddy, I did math. Holy shit! You <laughs> yeah, know, right. Like, no, like, no, 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 Yeah, it's like, this, this is a bad fucking place to go. You're going to be losing all your teeth and looking like you're 42 when you're 14. Right. And so it's like, I, it, 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 there's certain, there's just a few drugs that are really hard. It gives you the impression that it's a hard drug. Yeah, because people are deeply addicted to it and rotten. They're, it's like they rotten them out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, and, and fucking, it's truly like bath salts experience. Yeah, it, like it makes you it makes rage you out crazy, and go right? Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, it seems to have some. Not power. really a benefit. I'd be willing to do that kind of drug to get. But. Well, yeah, it's funny because <laughs> it also seems to stand in. This is something that's a little unclear to me. But mm-hmm. you've watched it twice, so maybe you have a better idea. But like more than twice. <laughs> okay, so, so maybe. But they seem to use it to like to uh, when when um, when. I, I, I'm going to call her, because uh, she was Powder, right? Yes. But I'm going to call her Jinx because... That's her name. That's, yeah. it, well, also, that's the choice she made. In the, you know what I mean? Like, yes. I feel like she was making choices, too. Mm-hmm. And in the end, she embraced her Jinx nature like a motherfucker, right? Oh, yeah. But we'll get to that, I'm sure. But anyways, though, so I'll call her Jinx. Like, when Jinx was really fucked up after the fight with Echo... Yeah, oh, I fucking love that scene. The Dude. pain in her fucking... Oh, God, man. One, I love that uh, Singe, the doctor... 
knocked <laughs> out Sulko so he could do that shit to Jace, because yeah. Sulko would have freaked out if yeah. he saw that like, stuff. Look at that. That. Exactly, like, the yellow <laughs> stuff, it's just a sleepy time thing for you, right? <laughs> yeah. Time to do the work, and it's like, and she's like, fucking having fits, seeing other people in, inflicting this pain upon her, right? Yeah. But, what drug were they, was it the... There was the Shimmer, yeah. It, okay, so if it was Shimmer, then Shimmer, as bad as it is, mm. apparently has some healing effects to it as well, right? It I mean, seems like it enhanced it, her psychosis. Fuck. Which, she didn't really do any help with. Yeah, no kidding, dude. But, uh, yeah, and there were some after effects, like when she was in the show-off with, uh... I uh, mean, she lived. Caitlin. In right? the in the like tea party scene, mm -hmm. we'll call it. Yeah. Um, oh, dude. That moment where she puts her gun down and she just like fucking harkens <laughs> that like speed element. Oh, of the dude. Yeah. That was <laughs> sick. Yeah, it was like all the puppy dog eyes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like kind of all that scene. That's killer. And then yeah. she almost fucking kills Caitlyn too. Yeah. She's like, oh, fucking gonna kill you, bitch. Yeah. Um, on the fucking edge. To the point about her and her hand scene, her psychosis, there's that scene where Silco's at the uh, water fountain of Vander, mm -hmm. and he, like, pours one out for Vander, and he says that iconic line of, is there anything more undoing than a daughter? And Jinx is standing behind the statue the whole time listening to him, thinking that he's going to give her away is what he means. But he means, like, you're undoing all this work I've established for Zon. Like, I've, I've literally got us to that fucking point now. And I'm gonna give it all up for you, like, and now I get why Vander, like, gave all this stuff up. And I think that probably hints to what you were talking about, like, their potential backstory we could get a... Oh, yeah, into. I think there's some meat there if you want to get into it. Yeah. I mean... I wonder if... It seems like it happened around the time that whatever that previous conflict where Jinx and Vi's parents died... Mm -hmm. In and that Vander first took them in after. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I, this is speculation on my part, but I feel like Silco and Vander probably had a split in how they wanted to handle the fight from there, mm -hmm. and Vander went just like he did in the what we do see in a more peaceful, compromised direction. Yeah. Silco was more uncompromising. Right. Um, kind of a little bit of MLK, Malcolm X action going on there. Yeah, definitely. You know? And, uh, the Vi and Jinx adoption was just like a continuation of that because you see him still on the bridge beating the shit out of enforcers ostensibly mm -hmm. um, and then he sees them and the last of his heart kind of melts and he's like alright this is my job now like I have to pick up the pieces of what's mm -hmm. left of Zahn or right. what would have been Zahn and you know and that comes into our personal perspectives like, this is how I feel about myself as a human being. Mm. If I was going to be closer to Martin Luther King Jr. in terms of the, you know, the nature of peaceful protest and mm. all, the very widespread love he had, he's very much anti-war, he's anti against yeah. poverty, and, you know, there's a lot more to him than tends to get discussed. If I get closer to that position, I realize that I'm a better human being. Mm. But if I'm going to be completely honest, after seeing the history of oppressed peoples and how bad it is... It'd be hard to be that <laughs> I can't, person. I can't be that. I'm not good enough. I'm yeah. not good enough. So instead, I'm more agree with Malcolm X. Like, there was uh, something I was reading about, there, uh, the Howard Zinn's, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. the, there were people in, I think it was in the Caribbean islands, but they were pretty much exterminated. They were forced into gold hunts, and they would have their hands cut off and shit like that. When they didn't, you know, I mean, like, they imagine, like, <sighs> you didn't yeah. return with enough gold, you have your hands, they cut them off and put them around your neck. I mean, like, brutality oh, at such a level. I mean, like, and it's like, what should they do? Well, yeah. I mean... I will fight to the death at uh, that point. At, at that point, yeah, I'm, I, I like, I like Vander as a person, but I think I'd be fighting for Silka. Yeah. You know, just because after seeing that shit, like, oh my god, they did that to a twelve-year-old kid, or you know what I mean, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, you see how brutal the enforcers are, right? Yeah. They're there to just break jaws, and it's like, they, yeah. and it's like, what the fuck is this? You're not even. There's no justice Trying. in this. It's <laughs> like you're just you're here as an enemy, as an occupying force. Yes. You know, and you're going to beat the hell out of us, and that's why your your hello to us is a smack in the face. Yeah. So, i got to be honest, I would be siding with Silco because I'd be pretty pissed. It's like uh, how yeah. Britannia ruled over Zone 13, Section 13. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> or a little history of the English Empire, you know. Yeah. You know, kind of, you know, so I mean, it's like there's a lot of, con and I'm not just picking one, mm. there's, this has been going on for, for millennia, not yes. just centuries, but millennia, you know, and so it's like, but, but I see these actions, it's like, what do I think is justified? Well, I think, I wouldn't want to do the things Silco did. <laughs> it's been going on since the Blade of Mika. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so we see it play out a lot of times, and like, okay, where I part with Silco hard mm. is in I I don't know what your justification is for pushing a completely destructive 
drug onto your people, other than maybe it gives you the might to fight back. It seems to be a like it, it gives monstrous power to your your people, right? Yeah. So that might be the motivation. God damn, dude, that's too much of a price. You know what I mean? I I actually think that as much as I would be ready to fight, but this is my I picture my path. Imagine magically I don't get killed. I'm an old man, anyways, right? Sure. But like, <laughs> so I I think I would start out with Silco and then wind up with Echo. You know what I mean? After yeah. the shit got bad enough, I'd be like, wait a minute, that's not, I didn't agree to this, you know? Yeah. And then I get where Echo's Echo's from. faction really throws a wrench in the whole Silco faction thing. Yeah. I, so I want to talk about uh, Shimmer for a minute. So one, oh, good, yeah. it feels like um, people use it as a recreational drug to feel power. <clears throat> and the reason it's not rampant <clears throat> in uh, Filtover, even though I'm sure... I mean, we see scenes like where you first saw the Firelights fight Jinx mm -hmm. was when they were transporting Shimmer smuggling in, into Piltover. Sure. It could have been through one of the warp gates that they've built with uh, all the hex tech technology. The hex gates, excuse me. Right, right, um, sure. I, I'm like, <laughs> um, but ostensibly they would have been happy to sell it to anyone in Piltover. Sure. But the reason people in Piltover aren't using it is because you hear in this dialogue when, when uh, Vi and Caitlin return to that, like, slum of all the people who are, like, deformed from excess shimmer use. Um, uh, so the guy in there that they're talking to who's got all the abnormalities on him, who knows Vi, he's from that early on scene when Vander's still alive and controlling the last drop, where he's trying to negotiate with the people and they're trying to, like, shyst him out of half his pay or whatever, and mm -hmm. Vander steps in. And then, like, the whole bar turns on them to sort of back Vander. Yeah. He was that same guy. The weak guy who was getting shysted. Right. So, yeah. like, now you see him completely deformed and shit. He's like, yeah, I do vibe, but don't, I don't want her to see me like this. <laughs> she, she was just a kid. I want her to remember me like I used to be. Right. And, like, the reason he states of using it is the recreational aspect of wanting to feel power for once. Yep. Because they're in this undercity that's always been kicked around. The people there have never felt any real sense of power. Mm. This drug is like an escape from their reality in a sense to feel that power for once. But similarly, that slum area, the whole reason they, that he knows he can guide them to that woman who crafts the potion using that hint of shimmer um, that heals Vi, is that she's healing all of the people in that area. Now they're probably having to like steal, they're probably having to go cut some catalytic converters that run on hex <laughs> But uh... <laughs> yeah, right? Um, mm. But she's keeping them alive. And mm. it gives me a sense of like, Shimmer is understood to have some type of healing properties and is being widely deployed in not just a drug use, but actually a life extension use. And I wonder, well, yes, Shimmer would have probably been what killed all the people if it didn't have those healing properties. I wonder if Shimmer is also the only reason that entire slum of people is still alive. That's a very good what's point. keeping them alive. It makes it a more complex issue because a lot of the drugs that I... There's only a few that I'm really that concerned about mm -hmm. and, and I think are extremely damaging. Yeah. They're pretty much one-way damaging drugs. Like right. anything in the There's no redemption for meth. <laughs> yeah, right. meth is just... It just fucks people up. And, and honestly, like, okay... I don't mean any offense by this, but I used to have to deal with the public, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. there are different ex ex kind of behaviors you see with different drugs. What I hated about meth is people could be up for like a week and all kinds of paranoid and aggressive. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm not there to fight, you know, like in the extension, I'm, like I'm here, I'm a healer, you know what I mean? Like right. I'm an EMT and I just want to, you know, that was many, many years ago, but, uh, but they could be really, I'm just being honest here, they could, some of them could be very unreasonable, very out of their mind on that drug. Yeah. And it's like, you know... Well, especially with something like that, like you're yeah. saying, like it, yeah. it makes you not go to sleep. Then you're also like sleep deprived, delusional, on yep. top of being methed out. Yes. Like, last thing yes. you need was more compounding yeah. factors to get yeah. even further out of your mind. Yeah, I mean, I remember it's like I remember just some people. This and this, uh, there's one particular caller. There's a guy that you know he had. His, I don't know how it happened. Of course, I wasn't there for it. His face was all kinds of cut up. The cops had him. and He's th still threatening. The cops had already arrested him. He's like trying to wrestle. Yeah. He's it's done right. And he's stuffed and cuffed and it's, and it's like I'm gonna cut you I'm gonna cut all of you know like he wants you right. know if he was free he'd be coming at us with a knife right you yeah. know and it's like but what, I'm not here for that you know what yeah. I mean? so that time's done <laughs> yeah it's like I'm not that I'm guy not. you know but so, anyways what, what I guess I'm getting at is it, it's very it's harder to reason with people that have been up for a week and are messed out mm -hmm. you know whereas like <laughs> heroin makes people docile 
Yeah. I don't want that. I think it's very destructive, but it puts them in like a happy place, but they're like veg- vegetables, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, right. You know, the problem there is more that you uh, have to sometimes give them drugs to prevent them from dying. Right. Like Narcan. Well, and they can just straight OD from it. They can, yeah. Them. You got It's like you push Narcan. Thing, and, yeah. and like I've never had to put, I was never a paramedic. I was just an EMT, so I can mm. set stuff up. But like you got to have to be careful how they push it because if you push it all at once, you'll shock them out of their high. Yeah. And so it's like gradually give it to them to prevent them from dying, you know, yeah. so they don't, ah, you know, come up like that. It'll be really fucked up. You know, but anyway, so, uh, so anyways, but like, so, and again, like, I'm not Nancy Reagan here, you know what I mean? I think there's just a few drugs out there that we should not be fucking with, or at least be, be very, very informed of what they are. Mm. I think that there are some uses, end of life care and stuff like Mm -hmm. that, you know, Um, but there's a whole lot of other lighter drugs that can we don't use that we could use and yeah. they're, they're much less addictive and less, less destructive. wouldn't be as bad for you as cigarettes are and we use that yeah, yeah. <laughs> alcohol like I just had some yeah, alcohol tonight yeah. it's nice I got a little, a little, bit, just a little bit of a buzz you know? <laughs> um, and it's like that's cool And but I acknowledge that alcohol is also something I have to respect and like yeah. you know I can't hey can I have your bottle of Jaeger it's like right. you, I'm not can pounding you? the whole bottle <laughs> you know? on one stream yeah I'll fucking die yeah no kidding we'll be on the floor so I'll I mean, die or I'll die in 10 years yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one or the other right yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I look at the shimmer and, okay, so you have the healing properties of it. You mm-hmm. have the strengthening properties of it. You have, and this is where I would make a line a little bit with, uh, believe it or not, heroin. Heroin isn't like an empowering drug. Mm-hmm. Uh, heroin, I'm not familiar with all the derivatives that are out there nowadays. I know yeah. about them, but I don't know really more than you do. Yeah. So, you know, but heroin and heroin like and all the super powerful stuff they have, you know, mm-hmm. um, and horse tranquilizers and shit. So, anyways, um, you got all that. Uh, it gives, puts people in a happy place, activates the happy center, because they don't, it's like a happy escape. Mm-hmm. It seems like shimmer is not the same, it's a power escape, mm-hmm. you know, but there is, what's overlapping is the escape yeah. from your horrible existence. Mm-hmm. And I don't blame anybody for that. What I was going to mention, why I, I think it's a good thing that we don't see shimmer all around the streets of Piltover, because mm-hmm. let's be honest about this, people, like, they, you know about the rat experiment where they had one rat in a solitary, like, prison environment, yeah. and he OD'd himself on the drugs, and yeah. then they made a rat playground where they have all kinds of rat things to do, and they have friends and everything, and they have the drugs. And they, and they just didn't do that. Yeah, it's like, yeah. They don't, yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly happy. I have yeah. everything I need here. I have friends, I have toys, I have food. You know, so it's a crazy experiment. If anybody yeah. doesn't know that, I don't remember the name of it. I'm not mm. sure if you do, but mm. like, you can Google it. I'm sure it will come right up. Yeah. I think like Rat City is a name that will pull it up pretty uh, quickly okay, because okay, it's like yeah. that's that's the counter environment where they're not isolated because it's like they're in jail. When yeah. you really think about it, if you've just got a rat in a single cage, like, I don't care if it has a wheel. Like that's like giving a prisoner a weight set. Like. They're still in jail. <laughs> yes, yes, and it, and very much I feel like, and this is my own looking at my own piece of history. I never want to say it was that horrible, mm-hmm. but to be just honest about it, this is really weird. But you know the quintiles of like income and all that. Yeah. I've lived in all five, you yeah. know. And uh, when I was at the lowest, I, I'm just I'm not happy to say this, but I think if we met, you probably wouldn't want to be friends with me. You'd be like that guy's too angry. You know? <laughs> yeah. and I'm sorry like I'm not now huh. you know but like it's a really bad place to be yeah. whenever I remember one of the things that really fucked up my head and my brother and I talked about this too like when you have absolutely no money like I remember getting a flat tire it was a fucking panic yeah, so you know, everything's a crisis. Everything's a crisis yeah. all the time because I don't have money for shit. You know, yeah. I'm working my ass off at jobs that pay next to nothing and I'm trying to build myself up, but, like, I lived in a real fucking slum. I lived in a place that was a really small, like, a room, and I had to go outside in the open air across an alley to go to my bathroom and take a shower or a piss or whatever, right? Jesus. And, and, you know, and th- that was my living arrangement, and it was, like, a real shithole. I didn't, I, I, it was super small. I had, like, a burner on top of a, a small fridge, you mm-hmm. know, it didn't even work that well. And I'm just trying, I remember I, I took a job doing super heavy labor for 60 hours a week because I was trying to work my way out of that. Yeah. But it was so horribly tough that even the immigrant labor usually gave up within a week. Yeah. You know, and I did Jesus. that for a summer and it beat the hell out of me. I drank two gallons of water a day and lost two inches off my waist Jesus. despite eating like family size lasagnas at night. Like it was yeah. so, it worked so hard. It wasn't a normal 60 hours. There's tons of driving to add to that. Yeah. And the work itself was brutal. So I would go, I'd be so exhausted afterward. I would just get a cheap ass like frozen dinner for a family, eat yeah. the whole goddamn thing <laughs> and, and, pass out. and pass out. Yeah. I'd wake up like trying to move my hands, you know, and it was like every day was a struggle just to make it there. And it was like, Jesus. I'm going to work my way out of this. I'm going to work my way out of this, you know, and it, it was fucked you know and it's like i had just enough strength to, what if i didn't have enough strength to do that what if i broke right. 
A lot of people did. And there's yeah. a lot of people that are just unlucky. So yeah, a lot like, of people didn't come back after the first week. Dude, like, uh, my friend, because he followed me into it, it's like, shit, dude, I don't know if you want to do this, but he was in the same position as me, so I get it. it yeah. It pays a few dollars more an hour, and you get 60 hours a week, right? Yeah. But Which helps. So it's, it's like, it really helps. So he went, he did it too, but he got swarmed by bees and evacuated with an ambulance. And that's, he's not the only one to have that happen. <laughs> shit, I had, I, I oh, broke a lost oh, nest oh. and a half doing this shit. <laughs> it was forestry work, by the way. Let really, us know really in rough. the chat if you've had a shit job like now, that. High desert, <laughs> high desert, California, over 100 degrees. And I remember ripping a wasp nest in half. And back then I was not so fat, so I was agile. And, and there was a fence, and I <laughs> jumped and got inside the vehicle. And like, ah! you know, because they would have fucked me up. You know, yeah, no they got a few stings. That. They got a few stings. I remember I, I was feeling the, like the stiffness move up my arm towards my heart. Oh god! You know? and, and I actually, yeah, it was the only day after work that I went to the doctor. It's like you're not gonna die. Okay, good. I'm not See gonna. Ya. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Stop the clock. I'm not yeah. paying you for more than that. Yeah. Well, it's like I was freaked out. I get this. This is my poverty mentality. I'm yeah. like. At the rate at which it's moving at my arm and stiffness, and the rate at which my day is going, I think I can finish my day of work and only be like around here, and that's what I did. And then I went in to get seen. And so, like, that's oh, that's dude. where you're at. And I don't yeah. want to waste that money, but at the same time, I don't want to die of a heart attack. I don't know what's going to happen. Right. I was swarmed by wasps, right. you know. And so, ultimately, I was okay. But like, keep in mind, this is also I don't have doctor internet in this time frame. Right. There's nothing I can do for that. You yeah. know, I'm just like. My arm is stiffening up. It's moving towards my heart. What am I going to do? Yeah. You know, maybe I just need to eat less this month and put that into the medical. Right. You know, so I'm not <laughs> going through all this history. What I'm trying to get to is I sympathize with people in the lanes. Yes. I could get where they got to their places. I'm mm. not blaming them. It is a fucked up situation. And there's very little happiness to have there. And as angry as I was, I think one of the things that kept me going mm. was the hope that I could surpass this somehow mm -hmm. you know if i did if i lost that hope i'd still be there i think yeah and i and it would be, it would gradually destroy me like i've seen it destroy other people you know you die young in those situations yeah, absolutely that's why a lot yeah. of the people in the lanes are not old like if you pay attention <laughs> to who's around like it doesn't Ooh. seem like anyone's really that far beyond their 40s like yeah unless if they're yeah. visiting like there's that old person that Vi and Caitlin take the hard path to get down there, mm -hmm. and they take the stagecoach, and they arrive at the same time. But, like, that old person with the cane is, like, the only old person you see anywhere near the lanes. Right. Like, everybody else is, like, not older than Vander was. Sure, yeah. And that's it. Like, he's the sage wisdom of the lanes. Yeah, and you see a lot of child labor going on there, too. Which oh, is, yes. Which quite is, a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you've been aware of Entire this. facility full of it, making shimmer of all things. Yeah, but. it's like, it kind of makes me think of, I don't know if you've been aware, in, in the recent months, there have been reports coming out on this, mm -hmm. but they've, they've been using immigrant children as labor um, in uh, meat factories and stuff like that. In here? In, in America. America. Yeah. <laughs> it's been coming out. Uh, one company had over just 100 children. Needed. Yeah, one company had a little over 100, like 102, something like that. Just over 100 children that that we know about, that they were putting <laughs> yeah, work. Yeah, that we know about. And I've seen pictures with the, with the faces clouded out, but you can totally see they're like a 13-year-old kid or something. And I'm like, yeah. and it's, it's hell. It's like these kids will work into the night and then go to school the next day exhausted, and what are they going to learn, you know? They're just helping their family. Yeah. Helping them escape poverty. Yeah. It's really a charity. Yeah, right? <laughs> the I mean, it's mentality it, 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 it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. dude. So this is like, I guess what I'm saying is the, the story they're telling here mm. It's in a fantasy environment, a very, very cool cyberpunk. I love it. The yeah. aesthetics are awesome, but it's also very contemporary. Yeah. You know, so, you know. More steampunk, but same. Oh, you're same right. Sorry, idea. steampunk. You're right. Yeah. It's, it's totally steampunk, but the, uh, sorry. Not the lanes can feel it's cyberpunk steampunk. at times with yeah. how much they neon the fuck out of the lanes when Silco took over. That was cool. The transformation yeah, right. last drop is no, dope. <laughs> but I was really thinking cyberpunk. I'm sorry, I was really thinking steampunk. steampunk, steampunk yeah. yeah, I said I said cyberpunk, but then I was that's too futuristic. But you're kind of right, but I, I only stumbled into that word. Mm -hmm. Really, I'm thinking steampunk. Mm -hmm. But So it's mostly steampunk with your, I guess you have to concede you're correct when Silco does take it over, it gets, it gets kind of a bright neon high tech edge to it mm. you know but regardless mm. it's a great fantasy environment I enjoy the aesthetics I'm just it's a romp you know I enjoy yeah. that part of it but the storytelling underneath of it is definitely contemporary and I think it's going to be for the rest of our lives mm. you know so one thing I want to talk about too in the context of Shimmer is mm. the juxtaposition of Shimmer in the lanes and Hex Tech in Pilt Over <clears throat> so like oh, okay. interesting Shimmer in the lanes like it's used as that drug, like we talked about, for that, like, high of, like, escapism of having power and control over other people, which no one in lanes really do, in the right. grand sense. Yeah. Um, but it seems like also there's, like, a 
version of it where you can like put that like gas mask on and like huff it. Right. So it seems yeah. like it takes multiple forms, and there's this like medicinal version that may have mm. traumatic effects long term, mm. but it, like keeps you alive. That's so, like beats death, right? Yeah, yeah beats death. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's that, and then also there's this hex tech, which like it, it's funny, like the lanes, like vanilla version of their cool magical thing is like a drug as mm. the baseline and in Piltover the baseline of it is this cool like tech thing but then you see the story with Victor and like Victor Maxine with that hex core as he like gets the biology of his blood starting to be involved with it mm. um, since you don't know much about League lore there's this no, place no, called no. The Void which is like a kind of antimatter realm you could say and occasionally these void creatures come through we can show you some stuff like there's a cinematic that introduced Velkaz, which is this like tentacle monster that can shoot <laughs> laser beams he's very cool but it's okay. very like oh. zerg kind of vibe like how starcraft the kind of aesthetic of all the creatures look mm -hmm. um, very similar kind of feel to anything that's gone to the void or come from the void Belveth mm -hmm. is a champion that's come out that's super fucking cool. I will show you her fucking cinematic after this. <laughs> Sounds like demonic pa stuff. Pause it and cool. go watch it if you haven't seen it already. It's a little Cthulhu killer. or something? <laughs> She's very Cthulhu. It's okay. cool. She's got like, she seems like human at first and then you see her fucking true banter rave void form. It's sick. Yeah, well, right it looks cool. like it's part of her gown initially. She's like regal. Oh, and then right. there she's a fucking monster. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, okay. So, anyways... Uh, so there's a void as mm -hmm. part of the lore of Rune Terra. It's not like a place you go to, it's like an al alternative realm of existence, like mm -hmm. an alternate dimension. Um, but things come from it and have entered here, and you can travel to it, supposedly, like Cassidy has. But we, as far as Arcane goes, we don't really know anything mm -hmm. about it, except I want to say how that. Hex core gets <clears throat> deformed and starts to get this purpley biological. Oh, right, yeah. And almost like hostile, kind of like pulsating. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. it. Feels very voidy. Oh, okay. So, what's interesting is you've got this, like, positive, like, technology, future, harnessing magic and containing it, with this backdrop of a great war that Heimerdinger seen, and then you see the essence of this void thing starting to come over and it vaporizes Victor's assistant, who was in love with him. And almost drives Victor to suicide, that was even though man. Yeah. he gives his healing properties. Right. Juxtapose that with Shimmer, where it's like a drug and degrades people over time. Probably doesn't have much positive benefits, but it can be used to heal people with a cost of long-term side effects. Mm. Like, it almost feels like Shimmer is really the better thing for society as far as the healing aspect that they both have. Because mm -hmm. Victor's, at least from what we've seen in the show so far appears to have this price to pay for it. It took his blood, and then that wasn't enough. It also took the blood sacrifice. <laughs> oh, yeah. if, you're, if you're taking lives as a sacrifice, that's just worse. I yeah. Mean, you know, clearly. I don't, I don't know if it would have to be that way, but I would say that, like, uh, how do I put this? Uh, my approach would really be closer to Heimerdinger's in terms mm -hmm. of, like, you know, like, hey, let's tap the brakes a little bit. Let's study this intensively and carefully and just kind of keep it compartmentalized. Um, and I wouldn't want to bring it out yet. That's, that's me... But that's also because we live in a world where we brought out technologies to terrifying results. Oh yes, we have. <laughs> you know, like so, we we you know we split the atom, and very soon thereafter, we created arsenals that could destroy the entire Earth. Yeah. You know, and we could do that just by mistake at some point. Now, both sides <laughs> even closer today than we have been in quite a while. Yeah, it's like it's a, I believe it's mm. hundred seconds to midnight on the Doomsday Clock. Yeah, and it's that's that's insane. You know, and I mean, mm -hmm. it's like it, it, it's terrifying to see, and it's also like. If this all played out again, if I was in any kind of a universe where I see a new power like this, whoa, 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 okay, once the genie gets out of the bottle, guys, it's, it's out. Yeah. You know, and that that brings up a whole other host of problems about who could get that power and who could use it. So, you can know. you expand what you think about what happened with Heimerdinger before he like meets <clears throat> Echo and all that stuff? Because that's an interesting thing in and of itself. I hope yeah, there's yeah. more about. Him and Echo in their faction in the future. I season. think there could be a lot of sympathy between the two figures, considering their approach to this. Like Heimerdinger wanted to prevent harm. Yes. You know? And so I think if they could have just an honest connection, you know, and it's it almost, seems like they got along. It's the same kind of dejected, reject, uh, dejected, yes, but also rejected from their side of the mm. river. Yeah, yeah. 
And they come to meet in this middle ground of like, well, Heimer wants to help people and prevent these problems. And so does Echo. Yes. But like right. Echo's coming from the lanes in a different context. So like they're fighting and they're like developing these cool technologies that help them fight and help them just get to baseline life. Yeah. Whereas like Heimer Jr. is like, whoa, let's go slow and prevent creating things that can do damage to our baseline life. But then they, like, meet in the middle of, like, the reality is the more pressing thing. Well, at least the thing that he's allowed to participate in is the lanes side of it, where Echo right. has his faction. Right. Um, but before we get to that, <laughs> okay. I want to hear just your thoughts of, like, how he was treated on the council, like, Jace's approach to him. Because it feels like Jace lost himself multiple times in the series. But, yeah. like... That's yeah. also kind of the demands of how his role changed in Piltover throughout the city. Yeah, I, I, and here's the thing about it, too. Like, I feel like Jace lost himself multiple times, and he's a compromised character to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, a morally compromised person that still has a moral core. Yeah. You know, that's how I would describe him. Like, I think in many cases he was trying to do the right thing. Clearly he had doubts about a lot of the decisions he made. Yeah. I think... It's a tremendous mistake. Not just him, but uh, the uh, slender black woman that was like, what is her name? Uh, that she's also on the council. Yeah, what is her fucking name? She kind of, I'm pulling up the cheat sheet. Thank you. Sorry, um, everybody. She was part I of. Didn't prep. <laughs> she was part of like the the motivation to move to push Heimerdinger off. She suggested it. Yes. You know. Yes, and it was originally her. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, her she name. herself is an interesting character. There we go. I think just basically. Oh, God. Um, is it Mel? Oh, Mel. There it Thank is. Thank you. I was, I was trying to call her May or May. No, it's Mel. Thank you. Um, so Mel, I mean, she's an interesting character, but, like, I don't know if they understood what they were doing, but it's like, if I could talk to them before doing that, they'd be like, do you understand that you're going to exercise, you're going to remove a piece of institutional wisdom and conscience from the, from the council? Like, are you really ready to... Are you ready for the repercussions of that? Do you feel like you know, that like, council meeting, Mel, did that spur of the moment, or she really planned it out? Because it felt like she had talked with him about it, but, like, the way she said things with such authority, it almost felt like she was doing it spur of the moment as a gamble to try to convince everyone as if it had been thought out and was obvious to her, and mm -hmm. she has, like, this wisdom she's bringing this mm -hmm. opinion from. Right. And then try to, like, present that to pressure the other council members into supporting her. See, so the thing about that, and I'm not sure, okay, because we, <laughs> we, don't, we don't have conclusive evidence, but I'm looking at her personality... She seems to be somebody that thinks more deeply. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, she doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be impulsive. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So you might be right. That's true. It, it looks like it played out kind of like that, but I, I just get the feeling like, I'm not saying she would plan for seven years to do it, but right. I, I just get the feeling like, whether I was in partnership with her or she was my adversary, either way, she'd be really thinking about her moves. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, she'd be looking at the chessboard a bit, at least. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She's not impulsive. She's not like, one of the guys was just like, I forget his name, but he's just some freaking... guy. Yeah, they freaking <laughs> idiot, you know? Here's a children's toy, be happy, you know? Yeah. But she's not like that. She's more methodical, so I think She's that, the one who gives them the children's Yeah, toy. exactly, yeah. right. You know? So I think, like, when I take a look at her, I guess what I'm saying is I don't see any evidence of a larger plan, so I'm not going to suggest that. Yeah. But at least intention and some mm -hmm. thought is probably... Just, that seems to be her. Well, it might have been a building up of opportunity, too. Because Heimerdinger yeah. is definitely the one... You see it at the, the theater where they're all in the booths. And Heimerdinger is the only one who actually gives a fuck about the play and is paying attention and appreciating yeah. the music and shit. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. else is using it as an opportunity for, like, Machiavellian, like, political Politics, scheming. Yeah, and, yeah. like, making <laughs> deals. And, like, this is where Jace, like, steps up into the political side of things. And mm -hmm. it's like... I don't know, man. It feels like... Jace feels like, in that regard, a typical example of somebody who goes into politics for the right reasons, mm -hmm. but then becomes yeah. a political figure. Yeah. And it's like, to to find success in, in the terms of being able to control the outcome of things, you have to do certain things to be able to acquire power and, like, be able to control the sway of things. Mm -hmm. And, like, if you're doing that with noble intentions, with their, which I think Jace is at every point, I don't think his intentions are compromised at I all. I agree, And his, like, yeah. compass is correct at all points, I would say, even. But, like, he's willing to play the game. Yes. And, like, that has a price to it that's not immediately tangible. Yeah, it's not immediately tangible. And I think, like, my opinion with Jace, he seems intelligent. Yeah. But, and he seems 
so like he doesn't think everything out. It's like he's having to make decisions on the spur of the moment because sometimes you have to, right? Yeah. And I think some of his decisions seem to be a bit, despite his intelligence. I'm not taking anything away in that way, but it seemed yeah. to be like it was he was put upon, a bit rushed, and he had to make decisions. Yeah, and, definitely. <laughs> you know, and then his decisions tended towards taking more power. And yeah. he tried to use the power in a good way. Yeah. At the same time, it had other repercussions that I don't think he probably thought through. Yeah. And uh, you can kind of see him in the end too when he was ready to fight Vi and that you know. It's like she just walked away, right? It's like, yeah. like fuck this, I'm not, you know, like it's it, it's gone too far. And also, yeah. him killing the kid. That really moment where he's that. just like he's spraying down <laughs> all, all the chemtech fucking monsters, and then he hits that kid. Yeah, it's just like what the shit. I love the moment. I this this hit me so much harder on this most recent watch through, where it was like he looks at the kid. He's like, how do I tell the parents? I don't even know who the parents are. It was like, fuck, yeah, you don't no. even know who the parents are. Because if he knew it was one of the fucking barons, he would be treating this way different. Right. Because this was a big deal. It was one of fucking Silco's barons' kids. Mm. Like, this had ramifications. That, like, they tried to assassinate Silco. It caused a whole fucking thing that he will never know about, probably. Right. But, like, this was a big... This wasn't just someone's kid. Right. It's like... And he's just fucking... This is another example of that spur-of-the-moment thing. He's, like, trying to use this power. Like, okay, let's clear out these chem plants. Mm -hmm. Like, we need to start cutting them off at the source. She's right. Let's go. And here's an unintended consequence right there. Well, I There were child labor who got in the way. And yeah. Now, what? I, and I, I think that's a reality, too. If you're ever going to use force... <laughs> like, this is something that... Dan says, Hex Tech lobbyists win again. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, if, if you're ever going to come to the point where you're using force, however good your intentions are, I think you have to take an honest look at, like, if you're crossing that threshold, right, people that you don't want to hurt can get hurt and can die. Yeah. You know? And I'm not saying to never use force, but I think the gravity should always be there. Like, hey you know, look at the options, look at what we have going on, you know. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying they shouldn't stop the shimmer, you know what I mean? But you do understand, before you even go in there, it's like, this might sound strange, but it's the way I think about it. If you're going to want me to do something that's the equivalent of a home invasion on a, you yeah. know, you know kind of like that, it's like, I can expect there may be fatalities. Yeah. You know, I might kill somebody today, you know. Yeah. And so then I have to ask myself if it's worth it, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, and for a lot of things, for most things, it's not. Yeah. You know, and it can, rare occasions where it's like, look, if, if I do nothing, even more death is going to happen. Okay, this is grim and it's dark and it's fucked, but I have to take it on because it's going to be worse if I don't, mm -hmm. right? And I think that might have been his in inclination when he went in there, like, it's yeah. worse if I don't stop it. Well, maybe, maybe, but you do understand, you know, like, he, and he came with to a very realistic, it's not like he killed 17 people, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't want to kill innocents. Right. He definitely did. You know, it's like, that's, yeah. that, that, I did I feel that's like it should be in anyone's calculus, and it's not even a matter of intelligence; it's a matter of wisdom and experience. Yeah, you know, which maybe he's just too young to have, and maybe now he's got it. Yeah, you know, I mean, like, this is how you get it, and fuck. it's unfortunate that you see him yeah. resigning from the council in the end episode. Yeah, it's like mm. the person you want, who's seasoned, who's made these mistakes, and is still trying to do right, and is willing to give up their own power because they don't trust themselves. That's exactly who you would want. Yeah. And therefore, he's giving up his own power because he yeah. doesn't trust himself, and so yeah. you're left with the people who aren't that noble. So, right? Ah, that, that really politics sucks. in a fucking yeah. nutshell. Thank it, you. Really, yeah, no kidding, man. It is a great loss because the truth of the matter is, despite any mistakes, you're way better off with somebody that has actually has that empathy. Yeah. Like I've heard arguments against empathy by powerful assholes. Yeah. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, empathy allows us to love and care about each other. You mm -hmm. know, and I want people in power to have that, and all too all, all, often times they don't. Mm -hmm. You know, and power itself actually corrupts that empathy. Mm -hmm. it, says, it says a lot about the statement of somebody's character. If they can contain power and still love their fellow human beings and try to take care of them. Mm -hmm. That's much more of a statement of character than, you know, most other things other than the bullshit, like how much money you have or how much power you have in society. It's what you do with it and what you, how you see your relationship between your, yourself and others at that point in time, right? Mm -hmm. And Jace, despite all of his mistakes, and he made many, it's like, uh, yeah. fuck, he fucked up a lot. Yeah. Um, but at, at, actually, I would rather put him to the side and say, you need to stay. Yeah. You need to you need to make sure this shit doesn't happen again, right? Yeah. You know, how about your first step of get you invite Heimerdinger back to this council? Yeah. Shouldn't you? Shouldn't you? Yeah, really. You know, I like, wonder in retrospect yeah. if he would. That's a really interesting point. I've never yeah. thought about that. It's, like uh, Jace at the end of the series would probably 
say he should be replaced with Heimerdinger. No kidding, right? Yeah, yeah, it's probably, but I would rather just have them both on there, and it's like, yeah. look, look, like, obviously he feels like shit about this. Yeah. You know, Other, otherwise, what are the other actors here? Machiavellian characters manipulating right. politics? He, you know, uh, Trying just, to manipulate tree. It's like, it's the equivalent of the barons that Sulco was working with. They're just there because they have power uh, and economic wealth. So they're represented on the highest board. Like, these yeah. aren't people of high philosophy or noble means who have earned it through technological advancement, or in Heimerdinger's case, we're a founder of the city. Like, these are just people who have accrued power through economic means. Right, and then also, another take on it, too, is, like, if I look at, like, that rare rarity in Jace, like, even earlier on, mm. I think he didn't understand how much of an impact it would make. Like, mm. his impulse was, we have corruption, we need to root it out. You know, and that, right? <laughs> he immediately fucked up the side hustles of everybody yeah, on the council. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, and it's like, well, shit, now you've made a lot of enemies, dude. And it's like, like one of the things, it's like, I think it's like a night, and it's the thing about Jace, like, I think like he's a smart guy. Mm. He's a smart young man that's principled. I like him. Yeah, I absolutely. like him as a person. However, naive. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you got to understand the, the tendrils, the roots of corruption. Who do you think corruption. would be corrupted if not the highest people in yeah. the council who are economic barons? It's like, Probably them, right? You're yeah. gonna, my, my view, and I know this sounds a little bit, like maybe I'm smarmy, I'm just being honest about it though. Mm -hmm. If I was on the council, I'd want the same thing, but I'd be much more hushed about it, like looking around for like minds and like, okay, okay, who, who, are, these, trying to, who are these motherfuckers are corrupt? Yeah. Who, who's in on it? Who, right. Who's not? Yeah. You know, and if I can at least try, be, even if I can get one solid ally, but I'd like two or three, if I could, you know, and maybe you can't get any. Maybe there's nobody on the council, but maybe yeah. I can find other people that are really principled, like, uh, what's her name? Not not the old sheriff that died, you know, which I kind of like that old tough woman. Yeah. But the, the, the shooter, Caitlin, was that Caitlin? Yes, the, the one who's definitely not in a relationship with Vi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Caitlin. Caitlin, <laughs> yeah. So, like, Caitlin would be a good ally, I think. Yes. You know what I mean? They'd be like, they're both principled. You I, know what I mean? I'd be looking for people like her, like, hey, we got A minor problems. spoiler, I think they do become major allies going forward. Okay. Because yeah. that's, that's kind of like, I, that's just the more experienced version of this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then, like, I've never been in that position of power. The truth of it is, I've never been in, I, I actually uh, avert myself from power, but I've had it thrust on me occasionally, and mm -hmm. actually when I was very young. Mm -hmm. uh, not a huge amount of power. It was just I was in the military and there were two people above me and they should have been controlling everything. One of them retired kind of early. Mm -hmm. The other one had a heart attack. Oh, and then, <laughs> then it's like, okay, Eric, you are running the squad and everything like that. And I'm trying to balance everything. And it was much, so it wasn't like the council. The council's high up, you know. Yeah. But even that level of power to make decisions that impacted the soldiers underneath me really, I did the absolute best I could. I was empathetic. The people above me, like, all of our missions got accomplished. We were cooks, right? So all mm. the food, everything got set up at the right times. Everybody got their food. Everybody got everything. Everything was on time. Mm. But the people above me didn't like it, partly because, okay, I'm going to be frank about this. Fuck Sergeant First Class Haddlestat. I hope he's burning in hell. <laughs> uh, if you're watching, yeah, fuck go, fuck yeah, go fuck you yourself, you piece yourself. of shit. You are a racist <laughs> piece of shit. He hated me. Like, he kind of buddied up to me a little bit, like, because we're yeah. white, you know, and a lot of people aren't. And I'm not, like, I've no, had people do that. Yeah, like, you're know, buddied up to the wrong guy. Yeah, right like, 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 yeah, yeah, it's exactly that. And after that, just friction, you know mm. what I mean? So he couldn't wait to slam me. But what's funny as hell is that he got picked for being a drill sergeant. And at the time, the way the policies were is, like, you couldn't say no. You had to come and try. If you failed twice, they kick you out of the army. He went, tried, failed, and he's going to come back again. And he was looking all worried. Bye-bye. Go, go okay. away. Because, you know, it's like, fuck, you a racist piece of shit. I could tell you a lot of stories about him. but So he's above me, right? And he's giving my review, and it's like, you can't, and like, basically, it's like, you shouldn't care about these people. You know, like... <laughs> Yeah, you should care about everyone. You <laughs> hate everyone, even your own side. They're all fucking ants. Yeah, I'm yeah. Well, well, be <laughs> yeah, before him, Sergeant Fox was above me, right? And mm. he was controlling everything. I was never a sergeant, even though I was work essentially working as one. Mm. But anyways, he was awesome. Mm -hmm. Because everything he did, he showed us how to do it well, and he, he took on the, the brunt of things. Something was difficult, dirty, dangerous. It's, Here, hush, here's how you kick ass at it. Yeah. You know? He, oh, he led like by that. example, right? Yeah. He was an inspiring leader, and we did better underneath him. <laughs> One would say a real leader, not yeah, like the other guy. He was fucking awesome. <laughs> the only thing that Sergeant, ha Sergeant First Class above him, mm -hmm. Hattelstat, had against Sergeant Fox, was that Sergeant Fox was black. All right? So, I'm sorry, this is just how, this is how it was, no, dude. No, I know. And so, I'm like, okay, anyways. <laughs> I don't doubt you. It's, it's just fun. deliberate racism, and I fucking hated it. And, yeah. uh, you know, and like, Sergeant Fox tried to quash it on the way I was leaving. Like, let's make everything mellow. You know, let's make everything cool. It's like, I know he wanted to 
smoothed it over so it would be easier on people as he left. But God damn it, I just, you know, the military is very oppressive and top down. But the point I'm getting to is if you're going to care about people, if you're really going to care about people, right? Yeah. And you're going to exert your what little power you have in that direction, ex expect some opposition yeah. in autocratic designs, you know, I mean, autocratic systems. Yeah. So, I mean, like, anyways, so that's, that's my two cents of it. But, but, uh, <laughs> but so I, I feel sympathy for it. Like, I really like um, how he approached everything. And I, I like, I like, as Caitlin is a figure as well, is also like, I mean, you could, she made some mistakes, but she she's, has some naivete as well. Yeah. Very similar principles. Yeah. You know? And both of them represent that, like, young Hope of Piltover who really bought into the ideals of the Shining City on the Hill. Yeah, yeah, right? And then yeah, they're right? surrounded by people who are like, no, that's not really how it works. Yeah, <laughs> conniving <laughs> bastards that are just trying to get their own ends, you know? And it's like, I'm sorry, but, like, you would want it to be better, but it's so rare. You know, these principled figures do stand out in, in history and in our own time as well. There are people that stand for such great things, you know, make tremendous sacrifices but they are fucking rare so if you're going to get somebody in like a council like that sadly mm -hmm. you might only have one yeah you know? so that just makes yeah I guess it's not unrealistic that it was only Jace who was trying to actually behave that way <sighs> yeah right it really sucks though well it's like but it's funny because if you think about it I would say they had they were fortunate for a short time they had two they had Jace and the Heimerdinger and both of them are people of conscience yeah you know Mel I think kind of feels that way but like she she's is, got she's, her whole thing where she's coming from Demacia, yeah. which is like this. The whole theme of Demacia, which hasn't really been explained yet in Arcane, is like it is Seems truly tough. like a survival of the fittest city. Mm -hmm. Like people okay. resolve yeah. everything through fighting, and like people will kill each other frequently to resolve that conflict. Okay. So it's yeah. literally like. It can't help but be a very warmongering nation because, by definition, the people who got to the top mm -hmm. are the people who have, like, killed the most people and, like, intimidated the rest to be able yeah. to be in a leadership position of a large faction to kind of rule the city. There's some. Yeah, her mother was hardcore, dude. Oh, dude, her yeah. mother's so badass. Hold, yeah. hold that thought for one <laughs> like, second. Like, you know, the hard times, you know. <laughs> I love how she has the boy toy too. That was such a nice. Yeah, that, that was, was so that was great, dude. She was she was hard, man. It's coming out, coming out hard. There's a character <laughs> you don't know yet, but as we play League, you'll get to know named Swain. He's from Demacia. He's been reworked a couple times, but his basic theme is he has like this demonic bird form, mm -hmm. um, and. He's billed as, like, one of the higher-ups, if not the highest up, depending on the one you're talking about, in Demacia. And, uh, or excuse me, not Demacia, Noxus. Excuse me, Demacia is, like, the polar ops of Noxus. Anyway, Noxus. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And, uh, Mel's mother keeps referencing this man who killed her brother and now might be coming for their family. I wonder oh. if Swain is going to get tied into this, okay. and that's how Noxus is going to get dragged into this whole conflict, and why Mel is from Noxus, okay. and her mom from Noxus is coming with this like large faction that's relevant in Noxus. I wonder if we're seeing the build-up for a war between Noxus and Piltover, oh. because she says things like, you look weak. Yeah, I remember that. To yeah. who? To Noxus? Because yeah. Noxus is the one who cares if you look weak. Yeah, they're ready to colonize a motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> or at least okay. pillage you. Yeah, you know more about their culture. Like that, that explains a lot. But I, she seemed like she was coming from a hard place, though. Yeah. So that totally. She makes sense. she is like a a heartwarming <laughs> representation of what Noxus could be. Whoo! <laughs> Damn. Uh, so yeah, I, I would be very worried about that on my board. I'm not even Mr. Militant, but I want to be ready for that shit. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, that. That pushes you to the urgency of using some of these tech things, right? right? That it, it's such a you know, but you're gonna do it if, you, if it's for your survival, right? Right. And that really sucks. It's almost like nuclear weapons or something. Yeah. You know, and then, then okay, so but coming back to like uh, like her as a character, Mel. Mm -hmm. I this is my perceptions. I think she's smart. Mm -hmm. um, she's not without any principles, but she's very ambitious and willing to take risks. And she doesn't want to. She I think too much so, perhaps a bit too much. Mm -hmm. Sees like if some if something or someone is being too much of an obstacle to these advancements, I think she's going to move against them. Yes. You know, and it's like that's not always wise. You know. Yeah. So it's like it, it's. But it is noble. Yeah. She I has mean, a she, noble streak. Yeah. There. She she wants to make good with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a matter of malice. Like I'm going to harness this power and crush you all. Right. But at the same time. It really seems to be a balance. Like what Heimerdinger, he's like, 
he might be a genius scientist, but that's not what he's bringing to the table here. He's bringing yes. wisdom. Yes, you know, very much. He's the wise experience. old man. He's yeah. not the upstart scientist. That's right. what Jace was. Exactly. So it's like maybe uh, try to listen. Like uh, now I'm in the middle of my life, you know, where I'll be honest, I've had experiences with some people where they don't want to listen to me and they have a harder time. Like there are times where I have to train people and they listen really well and they adapt and they learn and that works out great. I've had people also just know I'm going to do it my way and fuck yeah. you and you know it's like and that is not the best man way I was just trying to help you can yeah, do it your own way and learn do, the same can, lesson I did yeah but it's like yeah <laughs> I'm trying to spare you that one I have actually done that I've actually absolutely done that like you know there was <laughs> a specific issue I won't go into all the details of it there's a specific thing that I wasn't looking at mm -hmm. and honestly none of us were looking at it mm -hmm. and it caused an issue and mm -hmm. I'm like wait a minute guys guys I had an issue here let me explain it to you so you don't fall into the same trap and stub your toe mm -hmm. you know I will give pe other people the, the chance to learn vicariously. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, like, like how do I put it? If people are too ambitious and too stubborn and too aggressive with their own ideas, it's like, there's something I've seen in people. Mm -hmm. I think the ability for Jason and Mel to develop and have more wisdom is there because they have decent moral compasses, right? Yeah. However, I, what I've seen in some people is that they're determined to live in their own world and to validate their own experiences. And this goes back to the two human drives. There's two, mm -hmm. basically. There is the drive to feel good and the drive to know the truth. And some mm -hmm. people will go to that feel good, like, no, no, I have my own universe worked out and I can't have anything disrupt it. They just want to huff that shimmer. And yeah, exactly. Good. Right? There is that kind of mentality. I admit I can be a bit of a rain cloud because I can make myself <laughs> and maybe others unhappy because I'm... I tend to truth more. You yeah. Know? Sometimes the truth is a bitter truth. You know, like you're never going to be that Oftentimes. good. Yeah, it really is. Honestly, it could be. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry that I'm such so negative, but I'm not. At least I'm not fully, fully full of bullshit or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's that's a mentality too. But like when I look at both of those characters, because they have those principles and they want to do good, I think they could develop to be more wise characters over time and make mm -hmm. better decisions. But they might be in a harder place if they're going to get invaded. Yes. Then you have to ask yourself, like, how much tech are you going to use? Especially gonna... with the hex gates. Yeah. Now, like, you can warp throughout vast distances. You don't have a warning that Noxus is coming. They might just show up. Yeah. Like, we, we don't know where these warps have gone to. Ooh. Supposedly, you wouldn't put the first one in Noxus. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Like, right. they could have had multiple locations. It sounds like they've got vast train networks relying on this technology mm -hmm. now. Yeah, and, yeah, it, it and there was a reference of the larger gentleman yeah. who said, like, he was importing illegal uh, Noxian wine. Oh, right. Yeah. So supposedly that was through these hex gates that mm -hmm. if they were being shut down temporarily would uh, upset Bitter, him because yeah. it would... Yeah. yeah. So there must be some level of technology that it has interwoven them into this, like, they're no longer just regional hubs now. They are all kind of interconnected through this effective bullet train system. Yeah, but if you look at conventional warfare throughout history, mobility has been absolutely critical. Yes. Um, in fact, there's kind of a phrase that's not... Abs I don't think anything one thing is perfect or always true, mm -hmm. but there's some people have the philosophy of mobility over firepower, kind of like the Mongols had and everything like that. If you have these hex gates and they used them for like an all-out blitzkrieg, yeah. it could be a hell of an attack. Absolutely. You know, like, I don't know what they're armed with. You know, oh, God, know that'd be such a cool scene. I yeah. hope it happens just for the animation of that. <coughs> oh, be so it, sick. It, it, <laughs> if they did it like, you know, like they truly catch uh, um, Piltover by surprise, mm -hmm. then it's going to be it's gonna be brutal. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, it's going to be shit blown up. It's like... Yeah, it, you know, it's interesting what might happen, and I'm just fantasizing here a story, sure, but sure. this this can happen. It's an interesting thing that happens in war sometimes. If Piltover was attacked, and a lot of it broken down, mm -hmm. um, there might be a unity between Piltover and the lanes. Yeah. It could be like a, okay, look, let's drop our shit, I'll even, look, I'll even promise you equality when this is all over, but right now we, we have to join together and fight for our lives. Noxus is not the type of place that would differentiate between Zaun and Piltover. Yeah. Even if Zaun has recently declared independence and been recognized by Piltover, mm -hmm. they would probably treat that city as sister cities and just the same. Conquer it all, right? That's, that's, right. that's what I think, yeah. They'd look at Zaun as the weak version of Piltover that they can more easily stomp into the ground. Yeah, God, yeah. And then, of course, <laughs> Piltover, like, if you're making any kind of wise decision there, you're going to want as much allies as you possibly can against what sound like the fucking Spartans. You know, yeah. Where you're, you know, like, basically, yeah. Yeah, that's that's rough too. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, I hope they. There's a lot, a lot of uh, 
material there for a really good sequel. Mm. So I sure as hell hope they do it. You, they, it's, yeah. It was announced after the series finished that they were already working on season two. Oh, awesome. And this yeah. one took six years in production. They said that season two wouldn't. A lot of it in, there's a killer documentary I recommended to anybody who hasn't seen it, um, in-house done by Riot, of the mm. production of Arcane. And at one point they scrapped everything and started from scratch because they demand excellence with all their products. Wow. Okay, which yeah. leads to a kind of arrogance of the fan base. Like they released a cinematic for this year. Like at the start of every season of mm -hmm. Ranked, they do an annual like cinematic to get people hyped. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be kind of embedded in the lore and show like this custom, like handcrafted cinematic experience. Mm -hmm. This year it wasn't, it was in engine. <coughs> And okay. it, was, it had some cool music, but it was kind of just, like, ambient. It wasn't really hype. Okay. So people were super, in my opinion, overly hard on them for it. But, like, they've crafted this experience of, like, we demand excellence <laughs> of ourselves. <laughs> they so cheat to hear, though, I'd say, yeah. Right, I mean, yeah. it's killer. It's 10 out of 10 reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, it's fucking IMDb, fucking, everything. It's, it's a 10 killer. out of 10 for me. It's the, it is really the best animation I've seen outside of anime itself, and it would contend with some of the best of those. Code of you the know? West per our title. Yeah, Code <laughs> of the West. No kidding, man. This could be like a model, too, for anybody that wants to make true excellence. I mean, I really think it's awesome. I hope so. I hope we get this instead of some of the adaptations we've seen of other things where it's like... Did you even like the crap. source material? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, are you so, doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and speaking of, apropos of nothing, mm -hmm. there are multiple effects that I liked throughout. I liked it when Vi was on the ground she, in that major fight. I forget the name of the woman that she was fighting with, right? But she was one of... Uh, one yeah, Soko's girl. So the the girl. one with the blade. Yeah. That's her name. But regardless, it was a hell of a brawl. Yeah. And she's on the ground, and she's kind of like Vander's like, I wish I could tell you it's going to get easier. But it's, it's not. not. Yeah. yeah. It's so, oh, it's such so, a like, good moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like I feel that dude because it's like yeah. okay so I'm an old man and I have not welcome to the fight sweetheart yeah. Yeah. I, I am an old man and I am nothing I want to be very clear about that but when I was after my ghetto experience I thought I have to become better and better at fighting mm -hmm. so I took martial arts for many years mm -hmm. and I did compete you know, and it doesn't get easier. Yeah. I have had my face punched and kicked in. Mm -hmm. You know, like, mm -hmm. I have lost time. I've been kicked in the head so hard <laughs> that I, I, I asked my friends, did I get knocked out? I'm like, no, you got right back out. I'm like, oh, that's lost. I lost time. You know, <laughs> and I mean, so it's like, I, I get it. I've been there on the floor before, like, oh. <laughs> I love how that pause, too. It came with, like, there was a moment where she stopped and, like, took a shot, and it was like, Okay, I'm back in this. Throw the shot glass at her, and she's like, "Fuck, all right, whatever. We're still doing this. All right, we'll get back up." And then she starts by like, "Okay, let's go." And we take this table and chuck the table at you yeah. to start. Like, what choreography? They yeah. put so much thought into this. It was great, and when like her kind of finishing too by ripping her arm assembly yes, kind of off. That you was know, so that was cute. fucking awesome. You know, like so. I really liked it. I like Vi as a character. I do find her to be. You know, principled. Mm -hmm. The things that she did that might might have contributed to powder later. You know, her her trauma, yeah. right? I, I think that's there's things there, but God, for everything that happened, it's not. You know what I mean? She. That's the one thing I wanted to say, Marcus. Fuck that dude. Okay. I know Marcus was like. He's, like, the failed version of somebody who's trying to do these ethical things and self-sacrifice. Yeah. But he's failing. Yeah. Like, he's and not quite so cool all the way there. He's getting him all the it. negativity of compromising himself and none of the benefit. Like, to your point, that moment where he's yeah. like, what are you going to do? Blow me up? Yeah, it's like, what are you going to be that You're hero? You're not that guy. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, it's like... You're it's a fucking like, wimp. Yeah, and it's Walk like, away. Yeah, and, and it's he a, does. It's a it's so cool like, season. Oh, it's gotcha. totally... That's absolute Marcus is. Also, it's like... What in the flying fuck? Like, okay, this is my take on things, right? Like, how old is Vi when all this shit initially goes down, when she gets split from powder? Um, 15? Yeah, probably uh, younger than 14? that. Yeah. You know, something like that? Dude, like, if I had somebody wrapped up in... This is my own personal ethos. Like, let's say it was a cult thing, and they're doing some violent shit. I, I want to play like, look, dude, that's not life. Yeah. Let's let's introduce you to life. We need to get you some therapy. We need to get you some help. Let's let's integrate you into society, and let's you know we can help. I think we can help most youth that are going in the wrong direction. We, can, you know, like you can take away the elements that cause the problem, and you could at least get her into like a foster home or something, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not the kindest thing to do in the world. It's like if you're gonna if Marcus was really a stand-up dude, you would have adopted her and said, yeah. okay, like look. You're my daughter now. I'm going to take responsibility yeah, for you. Yeah, instead of throwing her in jail. In, in a fucking prison. Right, You know, yeah. it looked brutal. And she talked about it like being beaten and bloody on the floor. Constantly. Like, constantly yeah. like, well, fuck, dude. It's like, yeah. I don't care what you, what she did do or what you think she did. I mean, like, you're dealing with a kid here. You could, 
He's he such choices. a killer character because he's a great juxtaposition of the previous chief, the woman who like was able mm. to thread that needle. Yeah, of, like, yeah. Keeping yeah. Piltover happy, but working with Vander yeah. and like trying to maintain a peace. Yeah. Like, her and Vander were very unique in that they had seen what had happened before and, and been totally seasoned by that. Marcus did not feel seasoned by that. <clears throat> no, Marcus was like, he had almost the like naivete of not being seasoned in that way. But being seeing that the trick was in compromise, so he's trying to find the way to thread the needle with compromise. But in so doing, he just kept compromising himself. Like people just kept taking advantage of him. Silco took advantage of him. The council bullied him around. Mm -hmm. Like he never felt like he was able to really exert that control over the situation. He was able to dictate, like, "Hey, we're doing this. Hey, we're going here." But he never really had control over the situation. Yeah, he never had control, but he sure as hell prosecuted things with violence. You know. Oh, like, he was willing to. Yeah, 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 he was a like, fucking yeah. uh, enforcer, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, well, fuck, the amount of neglect and violence and everything else. Like, I think, yeah, he is a failed character in that sense. Like, I can see that at some level he wants to do the right thing, but it just kind of irks me that he never does it. What's you know, tragic about him tries, you know? is I think that he's actually kind of the everyman. Because, like, it's really hard to be somebody like a Jace or a Heimerdinger or oh God, his yeah. chief before him or target a on your, Target on your back all the time. Yeah, like, yeah, I think most people in that type of situation would be Marcus, which is what's terrifying, kind yeah. of, in retrospect of the whole series, that, is, like, most people are Marcus. Yeah, and that's a good point, just thinking about totalitarian regimes and, you know, really hardcore, like, you know, the Nazis and everything, shit like that, you know, mm. bringing that up. It's like, like, there are normal people in those systems that will do terrible things, you know, because they, the, the amount of mounting pressure and the consequences of not. You know, and it's like, it's fucking, you're asking a lot of people to rebel against that. But, again, if he was really principled, and it's like a little wisdom here, it's like, I know you don't have the power. What do you do if you can't act alone? Start looking for people like Caitlyn. Yeah, right. You know? He wasn't Start, able to recognize what Caitlyn was trying to present to him, which is yeah. what I feel like he was looking for. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, but he, he couldn't see he it. He should have been seeking, yeah. like, Caitlyn should be like, okay, you and I, we're cool. But I had to tell you, like, don't freak out. A lot of corruption. Yeah. I don't have the power to stop it all myself, but we can do better together. We need to get more people. You know. I so feel like, like his chief probably did that with him. Yeah. But it's okay. like he, she did that once she was in a position of control over the situation. Yeah. Since he was never in that situation, he was kind of treating Caitlyn just like any underling. Yeah. And it's like, Fuck, damn it, dude. That was the moment you needed Caitlyn the most. Yeah. Was to bring her in to help you garner control over the situation and understand. The totality of what's happening and the full implications because Caitlin's taking it on one way or another. Like, you don't need to get mad at her about that. You need to, like, bring her in yeah. as part of the brain trust. Indeed. But it's like, that's one of the lessons he didn't learn. And by the way, yes, Dan, I do see you taking up his saying earlier when we were talking about the uh, horrible implications. He's like, yeah, it sounds like a good Saturday night or a good Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, I want to get your thoughts on. Uh, um, so, like, there's so many aspects of this, but so you're talking about how the weaponization of hex tech mm -hmm. and how it's like a genie you can't put in the bottle. Yeah. Um, I definitely agree with that. I think Jace was really spot on with how much resistance he put up and also kind of the inevitable giving into it in a very limited way and being like, all right, you and me, Vi, it's just us. We're doing this one time. Mm -hmm. We're going on this very limited mission for a very specific goal. Like, right. you kind of fucked up, you kind of shot a kid. Yes. <laughs> Put those aside for a minute. Um, if he had or hadn't done that, and I'm going to go silence my phone. Oh, so I thought that was mine. Like, crap. My bad. No, um, no. While, while you respond to this. Okay. Um, whether or not they had done that, and whether or not he created those weapons for himself and Vi, Jinx would have still made the Super Mega Death Rocket, which is, by the way, the canon name for that weapon. Super Mega Death? <laughs> Super oh. Mega Death Rocket. <laughs> I love Jinx I love so it, much. Uh, uh, she calls the thing that shoots it to you the shark. Yeah, she yeah, 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 yeah. Fish bones. Fish bones, okay. <laughs> um, so she would have still made that regardless. Once she got that actual, like, gem form of the hex power, mm -hmm. like, she was going to figure out a way to make that. So I want to know your thoughts on if making the weapons used for good is something that should be done because once the technology exists, 
whether or not you bring the Drini out of the bottle in the form of making it a weaponized form, mm -hmm. if the technology has been birthed, it will be weaponized eventually. By so somebody. you should weaponize it for good, if you have the first crack at it. I, yeah. I want to hear your thoughts on listening as I step out of the window. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so, like, my thoughts on the matter, um, I compare this to the rollout of nuclear power in the world. Mm -hmm. I think that's most adjacent to it, but you could compare it to other technologies, too. And the way I think about it is that, yeah, you should roll it out in its entirety, but you have to understand that the moment you do that, Shut it's up, only, um. only a matter of time before <laughs> it's going to be in other hands, right? Yeah. So you're, uh, really, I think one of the, the great screw-ups is making huge arsenals and threatening each other constantly. Yeah. I, th I think like some of the greatest efforts should be made towards talking to sane people at the, at the highest level that you can. Like, look, dude, we got to have an honest talk here. I don't want to be the empire. I don't want to be the emperor of ash. Nobody yeah, wants no to be shit. the emperor of, uh, of radioactive ash. You know what I mean? It's like so, we need to, to work on some kind of project together here and try to like make some sort of a truce. My approach to this actually has to do with deeper relationships. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll look at what, what has been done right and what's been done wrong with the world. So um, this is my take on it. You, you probably have heard of the Marshall Plan, where, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that kind of approach. Absolutely. But that, that's, you know, like... It, it's, what I wish we were known for internationally, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's more of what I think you need to do in the case of this. Like, okay, this technology is going to be everywhere. We can use it to kill each other and go to absolute ruin. Or, mm -hmm. or we can make greater bonds with people. Some people you can't. But I would try to make as many bonds as humanly possible and as strong as possible with the promise to build upon this and not kill each other because mm -hmm. really the, ultimately and I think this is like um, it, it, it's a problem in modern society with nuclear power but it, it, we crack enough technologies things like antimatter can be actually much more powerful than nuclear yes. we can have much more powerful mm -hmm. technologies for destroying the earth and destroying each other and I think the only way to get through this is to basically <laughs> going to have to eliminate the, the underlying causes for war and I know that's a huge task, but if we keep doing this, we're going to fuck up and kill ourselves. I've said for a long so, time. <laughs> Sorry, but that's, that's the bad news, but, like, get on it, you know? I've said for a long time, eventually we're going to reach it, if we get there with the technology we have now. Yeah. Eventually we're going to reach a point where anyone, a child even, could take household items and assemble a box that when they push the button on the box, it makes our entire species extinct. Right. So and the challenge is not controlling weapons and controlling access to weapons. Though I may be may or may not be in favor of that in the intermediate period. Right, that's <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Um, the challenge is trying to rid the inclination from every human heart to want to do harm. Mm, and it's yeah, like, that's, how do you do that? I don't what even, an like, like, insurmountable project, but I mean, I, we ultimately have to if we're going to survive as a species. I, th I think that's correct, and uh, I don't usually do this, but I'm being honest about this. I'm punting on that one. The reason yeah. is this, I just want to get us down the road in the correct direction. Hopefully someone life, else has that answer. For my lifespan, <laughs> yeah. right? And there'll be other lifespans and generations, and I hope we can get to a point where we're, we're a survivable position. But for the, for the immediate... Um, like if I'm looking at, you know, back in their world and everything, it's like, look, you need to patch things up the lanes. You can't have this kind of oppression. We are not built for that. There's so many experiments that are done with primates and we are essentially apes, right? You know yeah. I mean? It's all, it's like, and uh, then there they are too. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, so it's like, if you're going to you know, like the experiment that I know I've talked to, I think I've talked to you about where you give both uh, the monkeys groups, Grapes and grapes, and they're happy. Yes. Cucumbers and cucumbers, and they're happy. Grapes to one, cucumbers to the other, they're throwing the cucumbers, and they're pissed. Yes. You can't <laughs> I love that. that experiment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like you can't, it, it's just not going to work. It's going to be constant violence and in a bad interchange. You're going to have to find yeah. some way to make a peace and make it equitable. You know, and I mean, like, I know that's a, it's, uh, it feels like an insurmountable challenge, but, but when I look at World War II and the bitter fighting that happened, mm -hmm. And what happened, like, if, if I was in 1943, 1944 uh, world, and I said, you know what, we're going to be great friends with Germany and Japan, we'll never go to war. <laughs> People would be like, I'm crazy. You yeah. know, would be like, we're in a bitter war. We're wiping each other out. We're yeah. bombing the hell out of each other. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, this is ruthless to the end, you know? And, and so, I mean, that it looked like that. If you would have said at the same time, Japan was a nation where it was a great tragedy when they were the last pacifist nation, according to their written laws. Like... God. <laughs> that's the, but that's the direction the, we have to The Imperial to. Japan you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. no them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely them. It, it, it's like, yeah, I mean, and that's really, that's the direction I think we need to move in universally. Yeah. And, and, and I know we can't do it in a day. Uh, the good news is we probably aren't going to die in a day either. So yeah. I'm hoping it's a, it's, a, it's a race of almost like wisdom 
because we see this story that folded, unfolded before us, right? Yeah. Heimerdinger had greater wisdom, yeah. but Jace had great intelligence to, to help, and so did Victor. You know, they, they helped develop this, and they're really intelligent people, but that wisdom is another faculty, right? Yeah. And I think we're in a race between getting enough wisdom to not destroy ourselves and getting the technology to easily do it. And I'll be honest, right now, technology is ahead of us a bit. You know? Well, great parallel, too, is it shows the sides that took the scale to Jace for the economic factors, and they benefited most from what? New tech mm -hmm. and, and intelligence, that's, yeah, but not wisdom. And yeah. that's an interesting point as well. Yeah, wisdom is like how you use it. Yeah. You know? Intelligence is like, like, there's a different faculty, like when I was younger especially, I got to the point where I could do like, and I can't do this now at all, so mm -hmm. it sounds like I'm full of shit, but I'm just being honest. <laughs> when I was at my best in college, I got to a point where I could do fairly complex calculus with no steps. I just write it down, and then I would write the steps down because I want to see it on the test. Yeah. You know, and I can't do that now. It takes a lot of practice, but also I had a younger mind, was faster, right? Yeah. And I had that kind of analytical intelligence to a degree. Not not Einstein here, but I'm just saying, you know, that's I had some capability there, right? Um, older is like, what, what do I do with this ability? You know what I mean? Like, you do things, you execute things. Like, I go into the corporate world and I help to build certain things, right? And I see some things that are good and equitable and some things that are foul and yeah. unacceptable. You know, and I changed the path of my life. In fact, uh, when I went to my current position, it was a matter of principle. Mm -hmm. They were trying to make me do things at my old job that I just refused to do. I refused to bend. And, you know, we all get to these positions. I don't hate people that break underneath that because I went through that position. And I, I can say I'm just super noble, but I'm really not because I left yeah. and I didn't do what they wanted me to do. But I felt like I was under all that pressure, all those meetings, all those higher ups, all that do it, do it, do this bad thing, right? Yeah. And I felt like I was bending like steel. You know, yeah. and I'm like, I got a kid, I got a family, I got, you know, and I just, in the, in the immediate issue, I took a pay cut. Um, and so I could fucking live with myself, you know? Right. A very cryptic character to specifically Dan, who's in our live stream audience right now. <laughs> uh, PPNL and PGE suck. Yes. No one else Google that because we're not supposed to talk about that. It's <laughs> internal. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of shit that goes down. I mean, even the corporate motivation is just yeah. a constant monster that's, you know, kind of devouring. And well, it just doesn't, it's, 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 by design, care about those yeah, things. It's like it growth, just doesn't. Yeah, it's like a carcinogenic growth of power and wealth, you yeah. know. And, you know, people get gobbled up in that process, and I don't like it. And, you know, I, like, I remember one project that I was on. That I thought the woman had a really good point, like you know, like hey, we've kind of yeah, encroached upon her space, you know, it's yeah. making way too much noise. We need to fix it, mm -hmm. and I was spirited to fix it. Like I'll do, I'll do little studies. I'll get you know, look, 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 getting the walls up, getting trees up, all this stuff. And you know what? If we have to, if it really is nothing can stop it, then we can just get a new transformer. Like you know, it's like, no, 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 no. Oh, how much would that cost though? Right? Yeah. No, no, no. We'll yeah. fire you before we. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Like we'll get, we'll get somebody to <laughs> replacing you will cost less than that transformer. <laughs> we'll put a wall up that doesn't stop it, but in a middle finger. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, the middle finger on <laughs> the wall, the yeah. of the wall. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of, I mean, it's like. So I'm, I'm that guy that sympathizes with the people that have to deal with the expansion. I mean, we just saw this shit in East Palestine, right? Yeah. I don't. Right. I, if, if I'm the guy, and I'm not saying I'd have the power. I'm not saying that at all, but yeah. I want to make it safe. If right. I wasn't doing the train work, I'm sure those people wanted to. Right. right? But Accidents happen, but it's no surprise that in America we had an infrastructure failure. Yeah. Well, it's by design. <laughs> you know, it's by design because it's like they'll have infrastructure failure and they'll pay whatever uh, price. Like, like as far as utilities, I think it was uh, as much as a million dollars a day when I was back in that kind of world, you know, and if they're doing violations and to some, some companies do severe violations that I think are unethical. Yeah, you know? and they'll just eat the fine. They'll just eat the fine, exactly. Well, um, it's a very weird juxtaposition. There was this, uh, somebody mentioned on uh, Trash Taste, a podcast I recommend for any podcast. Oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, they uh, had this guest on who uh, brought up this thought experiment of, <laughs> would you rather, and you, you have to do the correct answer to this, but, just theoretically speaking, would you rather have... Uh, all of the costs associated with the daily function for years on end of the TSA, which the cost of that is like every year more than it would cost to build those two towers. Okay. Or would you rather not have any of that safeguarding and then when something like 9-11 happens, you just pay the families out the dividends of how much we uh, saved? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do the right answer, but that's the thing. When it comes to infrastructure improvements, collapsing bridges, collapsing mm -hmm. train tracks, whatever was the cause of that one incident, yeah, we yeah. clearly have 
tons of infrastructure that's being oh my God, crumbling yeah. for decades yes. now. We need, and we need we're going to have to embrace the fact that there are consequences to that. Yeah. And if we're going to say, well, okay, dealing with the consequences of that is cheaper than maintaining our infrastructure properly, well, we didn't make that trade when it came to the TSA. So right. what do you really think people would decide was the right option on that trade? It's yeah, to and do the preventative maintenance like you're supposed to, well, but yeah. we don't do that. We, the, for whatever reason, opt out of that. Well, I can say the corporate calculus that I have seen it, and from infrastructure being, failure. For, yeah, <laughs> for, yeah, from being in the corporate world for ten years, it it is what I've said it was. It's just a cancerous monstrosity that continues to gobble up everything in terms of like growth and wealth and what they call these things we're talking about that kill people are externalities. You know, that yeah. hurt people, that yes. hurt people's health, right? And yes. they don't care about that. Externalities. Externalities. That. It's like, how much, <laughs> how much do we have to pay? How much does it all pencil out? Oh, okay, we're ahead, fine, mm -hmm. then do what you do, right? And then it's like, well, but we're not doing the right thing. Yeah. Uh, like, one of the examples is there's a known factor that there's many ways in which our infrastructure is failing. Mm -hmm. And instead of looking at that, it's to look away from it. Because if you don't know, then you can't be held responsible. But you know it's a problem out there, so you just feign in people feign ignorance, mm -hmm. you know? And they're not doing a calculus of life. They're doing calculus on a, on a spreadsheet. But for the yeah. rest of us, I have to live with this. It's like, you might kill my neighbor. Right. You know, you might kill my wife. And, and the whole thought price is like, you put on that? The whole thought is like, oh, well, we set up the yeah. system to where the cost of things, like, will reflect how it impacts people's lives. So if we just design the system that can optimize, uh, or the system in the form of a corporation that can optimize cost, like, that cost will eventually reflect roughly human life. But it's rough. It's yeah. not accurate. Well, it'll be what they like, calculate human life to be, which well, is... Well, they don't even calculate yeah. the human life. They calculate the ramifications in the form of, like, PR yeah. and, like, lawsuit costs. Exactly. But it's yeah. like, that doesn't actually... Sometimes that pencils out to be worth it. Yes. And is it ever exactly. worth it, really? Yeah, yeah like, exactly. No, right? it's not so, ever really worth it. So, like... What the it, fuck? It, the corporation <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, a corporation at its heart is a monstrous machine. There's there's really extra these externalities I'm talking about are human life and health. People right. die, people get hurt, you know. And so I mean I think the way to properly construct these things that could severely threaten us, really uh, okay, frankly, is to have them as a nationalized system where it's a public service. You know, and it's something we pay for to keep it safe and run well. Well we've demonstrated that the alternative won't take these externalities into account as anything other than externalities that need to be made sense numerically of, you know? At least from the business perspective, they They will. just haven't. They yeah. failed to take them into any more value than what they pencil out to. But what I can honestly say, uh, being my, my look at it from being, because I've been in the corporate world, where it's exactly that, and now, I, as I say, I'm in the public world. You know, mm. about, uh, you, you're, thank you very much for paying my salary, boss. Yeah, uh, you're <laughs> At least so, it's going to somebody, good yeah, fuck. Yeah. So uh, there's a, definitely a better spirit that I've seen in terms of service. Yeah. You know, to, to people and not just money. Money is a part of it. Some people, I think, get way too money motivated. I've mm -hmm. seen that. But it's much more, there's a balance there of like, I've seen people pissed off. Like, I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to fuck with human life. You know, like there's a push, you know, it's like, okay, uh, like I said, we have to shed load because we can't support it. You know, mm -hmm. we'd rather drop a server farm and have no impact to it than drop other things where people could lose at home medical devices and stuff like that. Right. right. So it's like, we're going to, I've been with people that like, if we have to make that decision, we're going to fucking do it and we'll take the heat. And yeah. we know some people are going to be pissed off. And it's just powerful sense. people. Yeah, yeah. Powerful people. Guess what? We're Too doing bad. it. We're not killing people. <laughs> You know, I, I think I've seen much more of that spirit of public service where I'm at now. Yeah. So, I, I'm just saying. And you've seen so much happier since you've moved too. Yeah. It was it was it was a dark cloud over my life. It was yeah. like at, at my honestly, at, frankly, at my absolute worst. Hmm. I was I never planned to hurt myself or kill myself, but at my absolute worst, I'd be work just like a zombie. Like I don't care if I get hit by a bus. Yeah. You know? And I've like, felt that before in my yeah, life. Yeah. And it's like it's just. It was way too fucked. So, I mean, like, and I don't feel good working for the monstrosity. I feel good working for the people. Yeah. And they're, I'm not unique, you know? I mean, there's other yeah. people that, that feel the same way, that don't want to get caught up in the, in, in the greed and the, you know, like, don't get me wrong. If you're, if you're really a hollow person filled with greed and no empathy, you can go very high in the corporate structure and make a hell of a <laughs> lot of money. Yeah. You know, the whole thing about uh, people at the top are more likely to be sociopaths, something like four to one, yeah. you, know, you know? But, you know, so it's like, yeah, th that's definitely, I mean, but good God, it's like if you want to feel good about yourself, I mean, there's you don't have to be in my position to do it. I think there's a lot of opportunities to do that. Oh, yeah. There are small businesses that have an ethos. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I've known some people like, like we're not going to do this ever because that's not, you know, what we do kind of yeah. thing, right? And there are, so there are small businesses that are vile too. I'm not saying they're not. There are sure. small business types. All kinds. Yeah, there's all <laughs> kinds. But I guess what I'm getting at is that that large corporate model is just a beast. And Well, it's self, it self-selects for a certain type of person because like, just, yeah. just thinking in the most literal sense, <clears throat> to be a CEO, you've got to be somebody who is like psychologically weird enough to where you will dedicate your existence to this company. Yeah. Who would do that? Yeah. <laughs> like, really, like, you have no life at all. Like, it's it's one thing, like, that's why I think people, a lot of people look at Elon Musk very positively, because a lot of things after PayPal that he's, like, taken initiative to, like, start and get involved with are things that can nominally be viewed as, like, a net positive for society if they have success. Mm-hmm. Like, they have a general goal that can kind of help advance society in a positive manner. But, like, the, the reason he's unique is most companies are not that way, mm-hmm. but every company has a CEO. Right. So who are these people? Yeah. Like, and there's, well, the thing about, and this is like, <laughs> this is my honest take on the Elon Musk thing. He gets like built as like, he's the Iron Man genius and everything. And I'm like, mm. and, okay. He, it, he's a human. As he's, 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 <laughs> it turns out he's a human. And I'd say what would be more interesting to me mm. would be to talk to some of his top flight engineers and scientists that have made these, actually made these oh, things. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. and that would probably be mind blowing to sit there and just, uh, how did you, cre- how did you create this? How did you go through this process? You know, mm-hmm. for a guy like me, it'd be good. I, mean, I just want to shut up and listen to him for an hour, but you know, so I think, th- but there are people whose names we may never know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's the nature of it. So it's like, it's not these things that are created. It's not like one genius engineer for the most part. You know what I mean? Right. That, that's an incorrect. I can tell you because well, it's works. a team of people. It's a absolutely. team of people. Yeah. It's and there are different people, different specialties, and you know, uh, one of the things I used to do a lot many years ago was ground grid design. I really liked it. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a kind of an iterative process where I was putting copper, designing it, not mm-hmm. actually doing it physically, but I'm simulating all the copper underground and how I'm going to lay it out and how deep it's going to be and kind of optimizing it for cost versus the impact where I'm going to put ground rods and sit it's good simulation. I enjoyed the process. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like a puzzle solving thing. Um, so I kind of got to a position where more often, like when we had ground designs, like, a lot of them get thrown my way, mm-hmm. you know? So I imagine their process is probably like that. It's like they probably have people that, well, I designed this part of the car and I'm really the expert of, you know, yeah. whatever, you know, like navigation systems and, you know, this is how they work and it'd be fascinating. One, you know, and, I, and this actually kind of does hold us back in our game, but I will say, one thing he does uh, is, or Tesla as a company does, I don't know if they still do this. I've only caught like one or two of them they've done over the years, but they do a battery day presentation Mm -hmm. where they like, it's almost like a kind of festival where they have a series of speaker like TED talks back to back, but it's all people internal to Tesla. And it really highlights some of those people beneath him who like are the chief of engineering for some specific design of the battery or some specific design of the Mm -hmm. car. I really like that because I just, it's fascinating to me as somebody who's involved in electrical to see how are you making this work? And it's like, we've got these optimizations where like we've per, uh, we've expanded how far a car can travel on a single charge. Right. How? How yeah. have you done that? That's yeah. just interesting. It I is. Know. It? Yeah, yeah, it really is. And battery technology has come a long way too. Yeah. You know, and that's cool to see because I mean, that has a lot of other implications. Oh, if it gets, so much. If it gets cheap enough, common enough, easy enough to do, then we can use it more in the system. Mm-hmm. It does exist on the bulk power system, but it's rare. Yeah. It's not huge at this point. But I, but, I have high hopes. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been yeah. put in a couple different Generac systems for individual customers, and it's like, the thing I feel best about those systems is not necessarily that individual customer getting a battery backup for their house. It's that, yet again, we've funneled more money into battery backup systems. Because that's going to push that technology forward. Every time we do one of those, I'm like, okay, we're closer to a grid backup. Right. And that's the key. It's not really these individual homes. That's like a personal luxury. The grid is the fucking holy grail of actually being able to start stabilizing things and being able to move away from these instant generation things that are really dirty. Right. And actually, it's funny you should mention, like, I like that, what you're doing. It produces something like I'm. See, I'm different from some other engineers. <laughs> They'll see stuff like there's too much. You're different in a number of ways. Or yeah, <laughs> I, I can break it to you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a little weird. Uh, <laughs> but but like things will come up like this. Damn it! There's too much wind on the grid. Like it's hard to manage or something. Yeah. And I feel the same way. But I also have another part of us like, cool. We, we we have to learn how to deal with all this wind. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like yeah. So we're gonna have That's to a good problem now. <laughs> yeah, it's a good problem to have. And it's like uh, you know, I'd rather rather have that. Like where I'm working, at least we have, and sometimes in excess. Of generation to it's harder to handle the trans trans uh, uh, transmission elements of that you know mm-hmm. move it, 
Um, and I'd rather have that problem than be dr shedding load and stuff like that, which can yeah. happen, right? And there's so many yeah. parts of the system where it happens, just it happens routinely. You yeah. know, there's nothing, it's built, so there's nothing we can do. There's no, there's no magic way out of it. You know, just gotta if really to fix it. We'd have to build our way out of it to make it more reliable. I wish we would. Right. But but more than that, it's like um, it, it, it's like we have this grid system that's designed to deliver power to a load, right? Mm -hmm. And now we have all this distributed stuff that can act like generation. It's not well tracked, mm -hmm. and it's a new and interesting challenge. And I know, I know, a lot of engineers are going to be like. This is some bull bullshit, you know what I mean? But it's like I think we need to adapt to this, and we might yeah. have to put some money into, and that's okay. That's yeah. okay. Let's do it. That's the challenge. <laughs> we'll yeah, do it's it like, not because it's easy, but yeah. because it's hard. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah, in a sense, well, because it, it's because it, it's hard, and there's there's a good payout for it. Yeah. So let's do it. You know, that's my mm -hmm. attitude about it. But I'm not in design anymore because yeah. okay, the problem with design, like I'll be honest, I, I like design, but it gobbles up my mind mm -hmm. because like I'm never ever ever off the clock. There's yeah. always more deadlines. I'm always on a project, mm -hmm. and it's like even I'm on vacation and I'm distracted. You know, I should be having a ball in Tokyo, not thinking about the next fucking <laughs> substation I have to make. Yeah, so you know, uh, so I don't, I don't want to. I love, uh, I do operations now, and it's all very much real time. I enjoy the puzzles. I like the nature of my work. I like the nature of my simulation and studies I enjoy it and a big thing is after my shift I get to walk away yeah you know and I don't I'm not bound to constantly be working on a back-breaking project you know but there's project engineers out there and I want them to have a good life but I, I would subtly say like I think one of the things that needs to develop is we need to get better observation of what's happening out there what you're talking about mm -hmm. and we need to be more prepared for it yeah. because it's coming you know, it's coming and we need to probably optimize our system to handle. Now it's on this load, so it can produce generation too. Mm -hmm. And we got to see what that does because, like, really, this complicated network of system, it matters. Yeah. If you send power in one direction, you can send X amount, right? Mm -hmm. If you send it in the other direction due to the pass it moves through, it moves differently, right? Mm -hmm. So you can send it Y amount. And it matters, you know, is what I'm saying. You know, it matters what pipes, you know, what tr what lines it's going through. Yeah. You know, what direction it's coming from because of the way it's like, you know, a curtain divider is, right? Yeah. You know, it's like that. So it's like sometimes if you're sending it south to north, you're going to get a beefier current divider where if it's north to south, you have stuff that it's, you know, like a load impedance path that takes more around and stuff, but it can't handle it. So yeah. you have to burn out. So then you get in these positions where you're trying to mitigate, like, and you can only do so much of that, right? It sounds like we need a fucking engineer in this room. <laughs> <laughs> you sectionalize lines you open stuff up you know sometimes when you're really in a pinch you, you redispatch generation like you know uh, can I get less of Grant Cooley and more of Chief Joe or, you know, when you're really really in a pinch um, it's easier to just move around the same yard like go from one one generation 230 kV yard to the 500 can you do that for me you know you re requests and there's all these other things that come in a lot of the fish we can't kill the fish and you know it's cool yeah. I agree you know I'm a weird engineer it's like I want to do the right thing yeah. You know, <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry. I'm going on this stuff. Hard boring as hell. But what I don't mean to. Yeah, but <laughs> no, you're good. but it's it's a fun. That's why we call this nerd of all trades. Yeah, so it's trade talking. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so so that's the fun of the job in a sense of like, yeah. oh, you know, like okay, this it's like a, a real time puzzle game. It's a real time puzzle game, and it's like, oh, if you lose line A to B, it'll overline C to D. What should, what do I do about that? Oh, if I open up here, then it kind of changes the path and it saves the line. Yay! You know, it's a <laughs> usually I you know it's a fun thing to actually institute correctly and see the improvements mm -hmm. and everything like that. I, I like it in that sense. Also, I like it as a safeguard because so, I've seen people... Okay, I'm going to get in so much trouble. It's probably my boss. But I, me, you know, like, okay, but... As if your boss watches this Yeah, channel, right, but, but go but, ahead. <laughs> but honestly, uh, like, a lot of people get tribalistic. I think mm -hmm. any institution can make mistakes, but I'm going to keep it limited and say not, not the institution I work for. I think they do a fucking awesome job. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there is one neighboring institution that I have seen jarring mistakes, hmm. you know. A Pacific Regional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who you're talking about. Yeah, they like, probably does well, too, just yeah. by that word. Yeah, and anyway. it's like, so, so I'm just sitting there and I'm observing the system, right? Mm -hmm. And it goes from like everything being okay and they only communicated some of their work. Like they communicated A and B but not C basically, right? Mm -hmm. So they did A and B and I tested for all that and we're good. Then they did C. <laughs> and what I'm seeing is if we lose a line, which you can do at any time, sure. we're going to be at about 175% on the other line, which is a fucking emergency, and we could have the ref re reliability coordinator go, drop low now, you know, you could yeah. get that, right? If it's above 125, they can tell you to do that, yeah. right? So it's it's an immediate emergency. I'm like, I checked it to be sure. No, nope, it's absolutely legit. I took another snapshot. It's real. What the hell is going on? You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, dude, you can't, we need to have people looking because eventually you will lose that line and it will be a hazard. Yeah. 
you know, it'll be a de uh, like you will. What happens? You can overload lines. They will sag. They can break. Yeah. You, know, you can break equipment. It can actually anneal the the metal, and it can break away. But even if it doesn't, it can violate sag limitations and hit something, shock somebody, kill somebody. You know. So it's like, a, in my opinion, like I think there's a reason for my existence. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, I like it because it's meaningful at the moment, and then I get to go home. <laughs> yeah, that's the so, key part of yeah, sometimes the, is the get to go home. Yeah, the get to go home part is oh. superior to the like design something. I'm sorry, like if they if they change design engineering where it, somehow they made it to where it's okay, you're gonna get a clean break. You know, like okay, we're gonna run you for a while, then get a clean break. Just work on some daily stuff and don't. Uh, that that way it wouldn't be so impressive. Nice mix. Yeah. yeah, but it always felt like every time I'm approaching a deadline, run faster for the next one, run faster for the next one. You know, mm. and it's just uh, run into obstacles. God, I got all this crap in my way. Yeah, deadline doesn't move. Bitch. You know? <laughs> Shit. You know. So, uh, anyways. Uh, so to bring this back to Arcane. Yes, go for um, it. So. One of the things I wanted to talk about is, because we've, we've mentioned uh, a couple different angles on, like, power and, like, maintaining power and mm, political style yeah. defense, but we've talked mostly about the council. Mm. Um, I think a, a very interesting juxtaposition, there's so many, one of the reasons I love Arcane is because the whole idea of these sister cities, and I'm really glad, not just because I'm a Jinx fanboy, which I definitely am, <laughs> but <laughs> I love the Harley Quinn archetype in general, but um, the reason I think it was great to start with Piltover and Zahn is it's such a like, universal story of these, like, different life experiences. Right, and it's, right. like, the power structures that I've developed there, there's the council, and there's and then there's, like, Silco and, like, his, like, lords, I guess you could say. <laughs> Czars or whatever term yeah, you want to give yeah, them. Yeah. Like, like made the men council, mafia, you know, kind of. Really? That's what, think, that's what I kind of really think. They're, they're bruisers, too, you know I mean? Like, especially the woman whose name I'll never remember, but, you know, she's a... You know, <laughs> yes. The, the woman charged up on super drugs, you yeah. know? Like, anyways, but... Um, the uh, um, council had this, like, democratic process through debate mm -hmm. and, like, voting where they got rid of Heimerdinger. Yeah. In Silco's side, they tried to do a coup and kill him. Yeah. And then to remind him... Not only uh, did she, like, kill that man, and then, like, so cool was, like, to, to the uh, woman whose son had died at the right. chem plant, he uh -huh. was like, we'll call this even now. Like, uh. he also did the thing where all of them were, I think it was prior to that, gathered around this table, and he started flooding the room with this poison. I remember that, That they yeah. used to grow up having to deal with in the mines down in the lanes. <clears throat> and it's like... He was so used to it that he could breathe the almost entire time without yeah. a single whiff of the mask that yeah. he didn't filter Yeah, I remember that. But every one of them had, like, was on the it seemed the brink of death, really. Yeah, they were they were on the on the gro they were grounded. You know, yeah. it was like they had the wind knocked out of them. Like whatever that whatever's in that gas is just absolutely wrecking them. It's a very interesting juxtaposition of like the flaws in the rule of, like, democracy versus the flaws in the rule of, like, might makes right. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're seeing there's so out. much more brutality that happens in the lanes, but also it seems so much more common for, like, a poverty-ridden area like the lanes to develop this type of might makes right system where brutality is the only rule because it doesn't really matter how you vote. Life sucks no matter what. Well, yeah, when you're in those positions, I remember, like, <laughs> paralleling this to my own life, if that's... Okay, but Absolutely. like, like uh, when when we moved to Southern California, there was a very small area where it's like live anywhere but here, and that's where we lived. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it was just really, it was a very rough kind of an area, you know. And there was a lot of bullshit going on a lot of the time, and there was a lot of gunfire, and it really sucked, and yeah. it was it was scary. Um, and I did get the shit beat out of me, and there was more brutality. And I can tell you, like, the cops aren't there to deliver justice. They're there to fucking like. I remember when they arrested my brother. They're there to police. They're there to police. <laughs> they arrested my brother, and they threatened to kill him. Mm -hmm. They kept him in the back of the, the seat, and he eventually needed a piss. And he's like, hey, charge me or release me, you know? This is what yeah. he was saying to him, because he's like, God, I got to piss, you know? And they're like, shut up, or I'll stab you with your own knife, you know? And they're like, they, you know, because he, he had a knife on him, and they asked why, and it's like, well, do you see where I live? <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, sure. And they actually, believe it or not, they were like, yeah, I get it, you know? Um, eventually, some other shit went down, more violent, gunfire stuff, and they left it, and they're like, fuck it, we don't have time for you. Yeah, you know, so that's eventually got to go. But like, they they're not there to help you, and it's like, look, I don't want to walk around with weapons, but sometimes you fucking have to. Yeah, if you, you know? live in certain areas, there is no alternative. Yeah, it's like, I it's that's rough, but like, 
there's a lot of bad shit that went down, and you know, and if anything, my honest gut feeling is, God damn it, Scott, you need a whole, you need a gun, you don't just need a knife. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's fuck. Anyways, what I'm getting at though is, the cops aren't there to help you. There is no justice system there to help you, and there are little, there's little bits of tyranny that do develop. You know, mm -hmm. but there's so much oppression there. So of course you're like, yeah. you know, we're trapped in a box of poverty, yeah. right? And people are fighting for scraps. And but there is one thing I will say that I truly miss from that time period. And other people don't understand this. Okay, I don't think they ever will. There's a closeness I had with the people I suffered through, that that were my friends. There's a closeness that a tight knit thing that doesn't seem to exist in the middle class. Yeah. It's not there. I see the way everybody acts like they're like playmates. You know, but there was a deeper bond and a connection. We're surviving this shit together. Yeah. You know. Well you get forged by fire with somebody that's a friend for life, you e know? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And that's why I mean I told you like I'm not gonna go into all the details of that, but I had a friend that really went off the rails and I'm like, oh my yeah. fucking god no. So yeah, it was a really hard for for me to go through. But yeah. that said, um I, even in that case it's like that environment where there is no justice and there's only oppression and people are acting out more partly because they're in pain and they're oppressed you know it's going to be a, it, it, you're trapped in hell mm -hmm. so it's like whoever if we switch spaces you know we have the same people have all the other opportunities and the wealth and that development we would probably develop into more of the Athenian style that they have right but we yeah. don't have that so that's why you see a lot of that develop Hmm. And even then, it's like, it gets mystified, like you have some, you know, Esteban-level guy. No, the, the local drug dealers, they might talk a big game, but they don't make super big money. They make money, yeah. you know, but they don't, you know, they're not really rich. Yeah. If they were rich, they wouldn't fucking be here anymore. If they were rich, they, they wouldn't be talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, they're, it's, yeah, they, if they did really well, they might have a nice car or something, but they don't, you know right. I mean? They're not going to, you, you're not going to go buy a mansion in La Jolla, California, where all the rich people live. It's like, that's, yeah. that's not inside your means and everybody, you know, like, you got more than me, but, you know, and I, I didn't talk shit. I'm, I wasn't there to talk shit. That'd be dumb. Right. But it's just my observations after the fact, you know. Um, so, yeah, it fucking sucks. Uh, my brother went through it. Like <laughs> His friends, I think, saved his life because he got in a fight with a guy very soon after we got there, right? He grabbed the guy by the hair and just punched the hell up in the head and beat his ass. Mm. And then, you know, it was a rough place, so shit had to go down like that. And he was ready to do it with this next guy. His friends pulled him back, like, no. Yeah. Like, why no? He's in a gang. Oh, yeah. yeah. That'd be a mistake. <laughs> yeah, a big mistake. Be your last mistake. You know, so, yeah. you know, it's like, <sighs> anyways, so there's a parallel there. Makes I just being honest with it. I'm sympathetic with the lanes. Yeah, I really am. Like I understand it's rougher. I understand it's worse. <laughs> but you know, like what fucking choice do they have? And really, it's like in these moral dilemma with all this Athenian style council. It's like, could you even try for the five minutes to be decent people, not just get your fucking wine from someplace and your own corruption, yeah. and just try to help develop and like have some egalitarian relationship with these people? Well, and the show has a very clear kind of opinion on this that it presents, but it's like, I feel like this is kind of the discussion that, like, Caitlin has with Vi in those, like, last moments at the tea party, mm -hmm. where it's like, she's too far gone. Like, she needs to be put down. It's like, yeah. no, man, Jinx has been through some shit, and, like, Silco took her in. He was the only one who was there for her. I literally couldn't. I was kidnapped to a jail. Yeah. <laughs> like... She was all, he was all that was left for her. Like, fucking Vander had died. Yes. Like, she had literally no one. Milo was dead. Like, the, her friends were dead. Like, yes, she knew yeah. no one. Right. Like, this is the, not just the, who became a fog, father figure for her, but literally the only semblance of anything reminiscent of a family that she could even have. And, like, Silco was in this position to where, like, he saw so much of himself in her with what he had gone through with Vander on a personal level, putting aside the fact that it was literally Vander there, mm -hmm. and, like, she had a relationship directly with Vander. There were so yeah. many parallels between those two characters of Jinx and Silco, but, like, she was just in a spot where Silco had had no one, so he was going to decide better for this next generation. She'll have me, at least. As flawed right. as I am, as damaged as I am, as much as I'm not Mr. Noble like Vander is... Like, at least I can teach her the way the real world works. Like, yeah. Jinx, like, the the attitude from Caitlyn, for, 
though she she doesn't mean it in a negative way. She's very much an outsider looking in. Like I feel like the difference between her and Vi is like Vi's been there and Caitlyn hasn't. Like they're both returning to the lanes for the first time. Well, I guess it's the first time for Caitlyn truly, but like haven't been to the lanes for a very long time for Vi. So it's all kind of new. They're kind of rediscovering the lanes together mm. and like seeing the horrors, but like Caitlyn's more shocked, Vi is less shocked. Yeah. Like Caitlyn's more sympathetic or less sympathetic, Vi is more sympathetic. Yeah. Like Vi has these attachments that ground this in a reality that she's from. And it's like parallel to that, there's this moment where uh it's what I think the first time Jace really catches himself as losing himself. Mm -hmm. Victor's coming back from having talked with Singed and mm -hmm. he's like, Why did you go down there? Don't you know this reflects on me? I'm on the council. He's like, it, Yeah. That was, well, that was I was, I told you I was going to consult with somebody. He's like, Yeah, in the lanes? He's like, mm -hmm. I'm from the lanes. Yeah. Like, he starts like, talking derogatorily about the lanes. Like, he's internalized some of this yeah. as, like, they're the enemy. Because, yes, the parts of their enemies are there. They're, of course, based there. Right. The lanes are not your enemy. Victor yeah. is from Zaun. Yeah. And I loved in that final scene where he's addressing the council, he's like, I come with my friend Victor, a Zaunite. Like, he's clearly got the message, but it's like, man... Like, you can lose it. And, like, Caitlyn, who's just grown up in that, she's, like, trying to buck the system and, like, try to not just be some pilty cop You're right, or, or yeah. enforcer. But, like, even she's, like, trying to advise by, no, we need to go lethal on Jinx. It's like, you really don't. Like, Jinx, and to be fair, too... when you didn't go lethal on Jinx, you fired a fucking missile at yeah, the council. Yeah. But, like, there was a chance, a moment, a way to have saved Jinx if that had played out differently. I, I really agree with that. There's not enough compassion, partly because there's not enough understanding of mutually shared empathy. Yeah. Um, Vi is, I think, God, that's probably why I vibe with her. Like, I want to be really clear. I'm not the badass that can go kick everybody's ass. It's not yeah. me. But I vibe with her in a sense because she has that experience, and mm -hmm. I feel that kind of compassion for people. Like, and I can tell you, being in the, like, there are people around me that have more money now, right? Um, and they're in that top you know, class or upper class people, mm -hmm. right? And some of them just, they would like all the homeless to die. Yeah. You know, and they look at them as They are the problem. They are the problem, yeah. And I'm like... They're the symptom of the problem, my friend. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, yeah, this is not an individual problem, clearly because we've had much increased poverty and homelessness over time. Like, this is, yeah. a, is, this is a systemic issue, yeah. you know, and so we're going to have to deal with it that way, not individual failure. And then mm -hmm. also... Uh, everybody's a human being first and like try to understand the decisions you will make will be relative to that position. Yeah. So how did I get out of my position? Well, I fucked up a lot of times and I spent a lot of time being poor and I, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing and I, yeah. I admit all this. But eventually, it's like I knew there was an exit, right? And I was correct about that. It's like, mm -hmm. look, if you're good enough, because when I was young, I was really good at math and science, yeah. right? So it's like, hey, if you're good enough at this stuff, you get the right degree, you check it out. Freedom. Yeah, freedom. <laughs> yeah, freedom. Yes, and I can use that money, and I do, and I, like, I really want to give my brother Scott more money, but he wants to pay it back, and it's like I've given him a thousand bucks, and just, I'm good with it, dude. Can you take a thousand more? Yeah, I'd just like, have it, bro. Just have it, bro. <laughs> like, dude, like, I, there's no justice in this. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I, uh, I've i gotten paid, right? And I like giving that to people that didn't. I remember, I, it's like, I wish he'd take it, but too much pride. Yeah. You know, and that's, I fucking hate that. It's hard to overcome. It's internalized, like a sense of, you know, like being worth less. I remember this really upset me. I got a really nice dessert for the Super Bowl. Like I made mm -hmm. one and I also bought like a really kind of expensive, fancy mm -hmm. chocolate cake. And he's like, well, that's too fancy. I can't eat that. It's like, I'm not, I'm not like a more class. I'm serving it to you. Yeah, I'm like, I was, I'm telling you, like, I'm about to give you all of it. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Like there, I have the... If you don't eat this, I will shove it into your face yeah, like it's we're like, getting I, married. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I can't take that. So of course I give it to him, you know? Yeah. And he, eats, thankfully he eats it and everything, but I'm like, I don't ever want anybody to feel like that. Yeah. And Scott, this is going towards like, we worked on all those houses for the rich people. Yeah. We were the help. Right. Right? So many of those beautiful arches he built into the house, so much creative artistry that he put to make fantastic, like, arcades and everything, and these highly customized houses, beautiful, smooth wall. Mm -hmm. In my honest opinion, my, my way of thinking, he's done so much work for that. 
he should have one of those beautiful houses overlooking mm. the cove. It should be his. How many of those houses do you need to build before you get to live in one? Yeah, because he's done it. Apparently in infinite sometimes, yeah. depending yeah. on which trade. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's <laughs> like, we were, we were, you know, mud pigs, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like fucking drywall, and it, it doesn't pay great, you know? It, pays, yeah. it can pay okay at best. And But, but really, um, and it's very boom and bust, so mm -hmm. it's like you might have a lot of work, work to death, and then nothing, right? Because yeah. building cycles could be like that. But anyways, what I'm getting at is is I didn't know I'd be in the position I'm in, and there's no justice in it. I'm not better. Yeah. It's just rolling the dice and getting lucky. Yeah. You know, great. Fuck knows I'm not better than most people. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's like you're getting to a really good trade, which is excellent. You don't have to get into any debt to do it, and you get to make money yeah. as you work your way up. So there's a lot of benefits to your path. I mean, I think it's a good one, and I considered it myself. Well, I mean, that kind but, of been like... One of the reasons I resonate with Jace, which I didn't until I watched Arcane, I really loved that they did this with him, is, like, he did the whole thing that I did of, like, oh, I'm not a good enough person to be in politics. I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> See, oh, yeah, yeah. I've done some introspection, and it turns out, uh, though I can, as much as I'd love to piss on other people and say, well, I'm better than they are, at least, mm, no, I should just do something else. This is not... Well, I'm going to have enough failings to where I'm going to let people down, too. My, like, I need to not be that person. Well, also, I look at you, and, like, it's it's kind of sad. I, I have... My heart breaks for you a bit, because you... <laughs> Woe is me, the it, electrician well, boy. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just, you were doing all the right things, and you were fighting for all the right things. Mm. I helped a little bit, honestly, but I was kind of in a dark place for a while where I was getting worked to death, you know? Yeah. And that was a bad place, but I still tried to help, and I, but I was spread really thin. Yeah. Well, uh, you were a big help. I tried to run dust, but it was like, I don't know. It was a non-zero amount of gain we got, but... Did well, it matter? It, it, I don't know. We're still at war. I, I, <laughs> don't, I don't want to put you in that position again, but I just want you to know that I see you as... Uh, you are the right kind of person to have power. I really believe that. You just know? like Jace, the kind of person who would give it up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. But, well, that's just the thing, too. It's like all the, the people that I would want to have power would be the people that would think would think to give it up. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, people that get mad with power, it's like a disease. You yeah. know, and they're they're dangerous. We've got plenty of examples of that. <laughs> yeah, we do. It's more common, actually, sadly, which is why yeah. it's such a it's like I for your own preservation, mm -hmm. I want you to make the best decisions for you. And if you never get involved in politics again, I think that's yeah. totally fine. Um, but that's just a selfish feeling I have towards you as a friend. Yeah. But at the same time, I realize that like the world would be better beyond my conception to my beyond my ability to conceive. Mm -hmm. The world would be better in ways that are beyond me. If it was people like you at the helm, yeah. I, really I wish there were more people who really felt that way. And it's like, to to this point too, there's a character in the League of Legends universe called Cassadin, who's mm -hmm. playable in the game, and he's like, uh, the his default skin we'll talk about is very void like. Mm -hmm. He has this like saber that's very purple iridescenty, oh, okay. um, which is the general kind of thematic of the void. And his whole backstory, at least it might have been changed at some point, I don't think it's been changed for him, is he went into the void as a man to try to fight these creatures that kept coming out of it into our, the world of Runeterra. And just over time, being in there has slowly, like, almost infected and corrupted him. Mm -hmm. So now he's void-like, and, like, his ultimate uh, ability is he, like, warps from one position to another and leaves this, like, void essence, and, like, as he warps to a new place, it does damage to anything around the warp zone. Ooh. Like, he's very... He's a very interesting champion to play. He's got kind of unique mechanics, but, like, he's got this really dope archetype of, like, he's the embodiment of... The longer you stare into the void, the void stares back. Oh, right, yeah, like, okay, we get a little Nietzsche. He is that, that person. <laughs> <laughs> to me, the OP guy, I don't know if this may not be true in the game, but the OP guy seemed to me to be like Echo. Like, the TikTok. If like, you can use he, him very yeah. well, God, he's man. super cool. <laughs> I was going to say, like, having that power, it's like, that's exactly it. How well you use it. He's a, right? he's a very mobility-focused champion, uh -huh. so, like, the higher skill you get, the more that matters. Right, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. And I'm just thinking about the animation, it's like, you know, like, yeah. Let's talk about that scene too. God, oh, that dude, scene is so, so cool. badass. Yeah, it's like <laughs> so, I am so sorry, but you powder is gonna get turned to powder. Uh, you know, I mean, like, like she, she got pounded hard. I mean, but it's like you know, uh, nothing against her because like she's badass. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Everything. I mean, but it's just that that power is so fucking OP because it's like, yeah. oh, that didn't go well. We'll try it again. That didn't go well. Yeah. We'll try it again. Rerun, rerun, rerun until I find. It. Oh, found your weakness. Yeah. Katink. Gotcha. Well, I love you know? how they represent in the show, right? Because I think that 
And we're, we're kind of referencing the cinematic when Echo was released for reference. If you haven't seen that, please go watch it. It's super yeah. cool. Oh, right. Um, yeah, yeah. But so the the thing that he uses, the, and he shows it to Heimerdinger towards the end of the series, mm -hmm. it's that machine. And I don't know if he's harnessed its full potential quite yet, but he's already kind of having that sense that was just a normal stopwatch and thinking about back when they used to fight as kids, him and Jinx, because they've known each other for so long. And he can just kind of anticipate her movements because they know each other so well. Oh, and one okay, of the okay. dialogues that you can do is like a taunt in the game when Echo and Jinx are within a certain distance of each other, is he's like, I used to have a crush. A crush. Used to. Yeah. <laughs> like, or something equivalent of that. And it's like, yeah, like these characters know each other so well and they have such history, like... He doesn't even need that full power yet, and he can just kind of see how it's going to play out and adapt himself to it. her tendencies. Right. Because she's Jinx. She has not been working on her fighting tendencies. She's just been working on herself and trying to, like, maintain her psychosis. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. she's kind of the same. Her. If you know her combat habits, you can kind of anticipate her. Like, right. what a cool way to have played that scene out. And, like, the best part, in my opinion, was that moment of mercy at the end where he's starting to, like, just beat the fuck out of her. And he, like, pauses. Yeah. And he sees the girl that he used to have this connection with, because that's why he was able to beat her. Yeah. He was relying that she's still in there. Yeah. And all this dialogue that he's had with Vi up to this point about, like, no, she's still in there, he's like, well, that is how I was able to anticipate you. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, but I'm fucking committed to this. And she yeah, just is going to nuke both yeah, of them. Yeah. <laughs> Break his weight, you know? Like, what a heartbreaker moment. It, <laughs> it really was. Damn near killed her. and, and But it also showed Echo to be kind of like a badass. Yeah. And, and the way I see it, like, and for the greater picture, mm -hmm. well, Soko dead, right? Yes. I mean, I would hope Echo could kind of... And we'll have uh, to talk about that in a minute. Elevate. Go on. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I like... Well, there's a power vacuum. And that yes. and it's kind of, I think, nature of horror's vacuum in that sense. Like, you, it's going to get filled somehow. Yeah. You know, and I hope... That doesn't mean it takes one person to just jump in and take control of, of Soko's network. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying that there's going to be a shift. And yeah. I hope some percentage of that shift favors Echo because I like his vision for things more. Yeah. You know, um... It'll be interesting yeah. because the the one who seemed the most upstart of the like Soko faction, I guess we can call it his board of trustees, yeah. whatever you want to refer to them as, like he was killed as yeah. a result of being an upstart. Yeah. So like I wonder how much that kind of stunts the rest of the group, or if his like protege will step up to that after she repairs her arm. Yeah. <laughs> And the juxtaposition of that chaos, just as that gets figured out with the group and, like, the head of the snake now being cut off, and Jinx, another potential protege, now being out of the picture, because she's yep. clearly going to be, you know, ousted. Like, the, the sense I get is, like, oh, she's rogue, we'll take the independence, and we'll help you find Jinx. I feel like that's the route that's going to go down. Mm. But then you've got this vying faction of Echo, which, like, Piltover, if they understood the situation, would want to side with Echo's faction. Absolutely. Even yeah. though they're clearly, like, not the powerful faction yeah. compared to those two. So I just, it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. Yeah, really, because that's the thing is, yeah, Echo doesn't have the powerful faction. And what, I'm, what I would be, if I was in his position, I would want to keep, I want to obtain some more power, yes. But I'd also want to be very careful because an absolute direct confrontation might be just getting them wiped out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, we're going to have to stay mobile. We're going to have to stay, you know, like, don't get power, but don't get attention. That's a tough thing to do. Is yes. it? it puts a target on your back. So you got to be really, really careful and diplomatic with how you do things. Which is why I like that Heimerdinger has approached him now. Yeah. And he has the wisdom of a Heimerdinger and potentially with the, the value of retrospect, like we talked earlier about like Jace might want to bring Heimerdinger back now knowing what he knows. Sure. Like yeah. if Heimerdinger could approach the council, if the council survives, let's talk about that in a minute yeah, too. Yeah, because a missile, I'm like, if who's they were there, through that? Yeah. If they were there, Heimerdinger could approach them and have potentially redeemed credibility with the value of hindsight mm -hmm. in that he was kind of right about a lot of things. Um, <laughs> and say like, hey, yeah, he Echo is kind of the faction we need to reach out to. And, like, it's not necessarily about cutting a deal with Zahn in this. Yes, maybe an independent Zahn is the right thing to do, but we need to, like, make sure that this faction of Echo is kind of what is the future of Zahn and mm -hmm. not what has happened with these enterprising individuals who have a lot of economics way but do not have the heart of, like, what Echo's faction represents. Like, they yeah. are the way to bring, like, the best of Piltover to Zahn and I, try to pull yeah. Zahn up. I totally agree with that. And I realize they're the underdog, but that just means to me, if I was in the position... Everybody loves an underdog. Well, yeah, there's, th there's that. But if I was in the position on the council, I'd be like, hey, look, I, I know you don't trust me, 
Echo, I know you're not going to like, just hear me out. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, let us reinforce you a bit. Yeah. We have muscle, you know. Yeah. Let's make sure that you're good. Could you imagine yeah. Echo, the head of the enforcers? Yeah. That would be bizarre. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, this, that's just me if I had the power. You know, if I was in a, p- a position of Marcus, yeah. you know what I mean, or something like that, I'd be like, look, we need to make a deal. Let's, let's yeah. make a deal. It's like, hey, seriously, you want a piece, right? Wouldn't it be better if you were in charge of things here? Another example of a failing yeah. of Marcus to really hold up that mantle of being able to thread the needle. Like, yeah. he should have known about Echo, and instead of, like, taking this lead from Silco of, like, criminalizing the firelights and putting all of the, like, negative consequences of Silco's actions on them as a scapegoat, yeah. they should have been the one he was building up and networking with and trying to fight Silco with. Yes, like, yep. Oh, Absolutely. There's so many great parallels here. In fact, I, and it's like the thing is too with all the shit with Marcus, and he's dead now, right? Yes. So, it, it, I would hope there'd be somebody. If somebody knew it all, you mm-hmm. know, like Caitlin or somebody could maybe, if she was, I don't know, she had the power, or she would be alive, yeah. you know. But uh, it's just, let's say she's okay, you know. She at the end she was, and yeah. She's a little beat up, but that's it. Seemed her and Vi were getting out of their bondage and making it out, but not in time to stop Jinx from firing the rocket. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So that that's kind of the picture I got. So hopefully, if they're still in the picture and they know everything, honestly, I don't know if they would accept it. Right mm-hmm. at 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 Piltover, but it'd be like, look, you can get mad at the lanes, you can freak out about the lanes, but this really wasn't the lanes. Mm-hmm. This was Jinx. Mm-hmm. She went. Rogue, which she lashed out at you. Is definitely Jinx's thing. Yeah. Jinx is much more than someone representing the lanes. She is a force of nature under yeah, herself. Yeah, I was going to say that. That's yeah. what you're dealing with. You know what I mean? Like, do understand that. Like, nobody else planned this or was a part of this. Yeah. This was an individual that did this, yeah. and so it's like. I, I, but I see so many reactions. I'm thinking of Palestine now. You know, it's like where yeah. it's like they fire a rocket. Okay, we're going to destroy everything in the area. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. Fuck. It's like okay, a little more. Uh, judicious use of force, please. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, it, 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 trying to take down, <laughs> trying to take her down would be a hell of a thing. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not, not easy. She's souped up now, mm-hmm. right? And I don't know what that really means, but she seemed fucking quick. Well, in that moment know? where she blew up that building where, like, Caitlin first recognized the monkey mm-hmm. drawing yeah. and, like, tried to scream to the enforcers to get out, but it was too late. Like, Silco was, like, yelling at her. He's like, you blew up a building. You killed enforcers. Like, yeah. There, do you not understand the consequences yeah, the repercussions of repercussions of this, yeah. yeah. And it's like, ultimately, he was kind of persuaded it was <clears throat> worth it when she showed him the gem, but it's like, man, like, she has that, it's not always worth it with Jinx. Fuck like, no. She, she sometimes she, just does shit. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to say, the thing of it about, it's like, I have sympathy for her. Yeah. I, I actually wouldn't want to kill her. But yeah. the truth is, and this is where... <laughs> she needs what happened to Vi. Like, yeah. she needs to be put in jail. Sadly, yes. Like, yeah. I, I... But this is the thing, too. Like, I would want to get her put in jail. I'll be honest. may not be possible. He might be one of killing her, you know. But that wouldn't be... I would love it if, if we could get her in jail. And then, then, please, for the love of God, don't torture this woman. She's tortured <laughs> enough. Yeah. All right? We, not just, the full Vi treatment. Sorry, yeah, I didn't mean it, that. It, well, it's like, well, it's like, well, it's just you know. I mean, it's the thing about it too is like it's a matter of philosophy. It's like, are we going to put Jinx in prison for X amount of years and she gets out and what's what's going to happen? Right. You know what I mean? It's like, or put her in prison forever. Are we going to just do that, lock people away forever? You know right. what I mean? And it's like there's implications to all of this, and it's like really what we should be doing. Jinx needs a hell of a lot of therapy and the best drugs available, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. she needs a lot, many, many years of therapy. To be fair, yeah. I don't know that it's on, uh, Caitlin's wrong and that she's too far gone at this point. Like, at yeah. least once she made the choice to be Jinx and not Powder, which, well, even if she tried to be Powder, I don't know that she really could have been. Yeah. Yeah. She's think, different, Yeah, like she if said. She, if she said, she, I think she wasn't even... Okay, she says she's making a choice. It looks like a choice, but you know what? I think the choice was made. I think it was yeah. overdetermined. Yeah. Materialistically, she'd been so much shit that she was no longer powder, and she's fully jinxed, and you just have to deal with that. You know? Well, I think the choice is like, <clears throat> is she going to try to move herself in the direction of like oh, that okay. person who's like Vi, who's right. trying to do the right thing, who's trying to live on a straight and narrow, right. or is she just this agent of chaos who's this daughter of Zon? Right. Like, is she just the result you get when Zon happens, or is she going to be somebody who tries to like pull herself back? 
Yeah. I think that was the choice she made, was her own, like, agency going forward. I, she I, already I, was damaged. Like, she was yeah. jinxed in that sense. For yeah, sure. I was going to say, in the damage sense, I think it's just it's there no matter what, right? But I get your point where she can make a choice of where the energy goes. Mm-hmm. I would say, in a strange kind of a sense, I'm not justifying it because I think it's fucked up. And the truth is, if I was one of the persons that, let's say I was there and I had a gun, I would try to stop her from shooting a missile into innocent people. Right. You know, I think I would be in the morally right position to, to use lethal force. Push the fat man on the train. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> but it's what we're looking at, right? It's, so, a, it's actually, except the fat man's directing the train into yeah, the people. So yeah, it so kind of deserves it. Yeah, you know? it's like I kind of I can make that moral decision. You know, morally I'm talking about not force because <laughs> I'm not fucking with anybody like that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah me either. But, but, uh, but that said, uh, it, 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 okay, so clearly she's made that decision to be more of an agent of chaos, but... And I know Piltover people aren't going to want to hear this, but it's like, this is the result of trapped up trauma and rage yeah. from all of the shit that sh- this woman had to live through because the lanes are what they were. Yeah. And this is coming back at you. All this oppression, all this beat the hell out of them, like all this, you know, we'll send the enforcers kind of mentality. Yeah. However this is many, what you get. Yeah, however many years of that, you built this up, and it's like they threw a ball at a wall and it came back and hit them in the face. Yeah. And they're upset. The ball sucks you know is that's what people tend to do right but it's like <laughs> not really yeah it's like do you not understand that like if you want to prevent this, this character's like, op you ran under their turret yeah i'm looking at it, it's like like if you want this to not happen again and i don't want it to happen again yeah then we need to make things more equitable yeah or it's just going to keep happening you yeah. know what i mean so it's like let's it, it's not easy and it takes a lot of intent years and wisdom to yeah. get through it to try to settle such well, trauma. We're going to have to work through a generation of people who grew up in the lanes and not independent zone who was treated equally. Yeah. Even if you're willing to do that, and that's a hard transition to make. Like, even if you on paper treated them equally, like how many people in Piltover are going to treat Zonites equally for the next generation? I don't think you're going to get equal, but you can get better. The, yeah. The best I've seen lived through is when I, I was stationed in Germany for a while, and I love to travel. Mm-hmm. And I know that after the war, some Nazis were protected, used as CIA assets and stuff like that. A lot of shady shit did happen. I'm not, mm-hmm. not, getting, not, not, not putting that down, but there was a mentality that I saw all over Germany. Mm-hmm. I talked to many, many Germans, had many beers, bread beers, right? So I had beers with Germans. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, enjoyed my time there, and we talked about different things. But what, what I heard replicated nearly exactly mm-hmm. all over Germany was like, we know what happened was a great tragedy. But we can't change it. Because it's it's history, right? It's already happened. Yeah. But we must never let it happen again. Yeah. You know, I would love that, I would love Piltover to have that spirit. You know, if they really did have that kind of reconciliation. Yeah. It's not going to make things equal immediately, but damn, it makes things better. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's the best you can do. It's, it is the best you can do. I think yeah. I think it's the best you can do, and and it makes a difference mm-hmm. to acknowledge something like that and say, okay, this was a tragedy. Another trip, uh, I was in Berlin, and they were setting up a Jewish museum for the Jewish experience, and this was with Jewish people, yeah. you know, and I had some discussions with them for a while, too, and it's like, how are you doing, you know, are you welcome here, you know, it's like, yeah, we're actually being treated well, mm. you know, comparatively. I uh, know sure as shit that wasn't the history before, they had a museum oh, set up, yeah. like, you know, it's like, <laughs> holy fuck, it was bad, yeah. you know, the Holocaust is a horror, um, you can face it and reconcile it. I, I'm not saying anything's perfect. I, there are flaws everywhere. Yeah. I could point them out. But it's much better to have a spirit of reconciliation like the Germans had and start healing. Yeah. You know, Wouldn't it be great if some of the most oppressed people on earth were allowed to rise up and at least have an equitable life? Yeah. And I understand that we have a system that deprives them and makes a few people very rich. But quite frankly, we can't sustain a system like that and have the justice that we desire. So the yeah. system itself has to change. Well, Germany is a really stellar real-world example of how dramatic of a shift you can have over a single generation. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you really embrace the change in mentality, you really can transform an entire country. Like, it is hard to do. Yeah, it's hard to do. And it's hard to have a zeitgeist like that, like, to really move the hearts of an entire people. But, like, it can be done. Yeah. And you can reap some incredible benefits from that. Yeah, I really think so. And, like, I've known from knowing so many German people, it's like I have a very different attitude about the Germans. That's like the, the stereotype of the Germans are cold and everything. No. No, I spent too much time with the Germans. You don't know them. The Germans are kind. <laughs> I really believe that. The modern day Germans are really quite kind mm. people. They're less bigoted than mm. what I see here. There's bigotry there. 
True. And, and they'll, they'll call that out. There are occasional neo-Nazis and stuff like that. That does exist. I'm mm-hmm. not saying it's not there. But the general spirit of the German people that I've seen is, you know, like, when you be frank about it, you know my wife isn't white. My child isn't white. Yeah. So there are parts of this country I have to be a little bit careful. You know, when I traveled through Germany with them, I never felt like that. And mm-hmm. nobody ever treated us like that. It was not like, like when I was in Ohio and I wanted to rent a place... And yeah, I told you about this, I think, right? The woman was ecstatic because I'm an yeah. engineer. And that means, oh, I have money. So she wants me to move in. She wants me to check out the house right now. My wife gets out of the car and her face just falls like, Ugh. Oh, no. Like, <laughs> you know, like, I, you know, like, I'm not renting to you. Yeah. You know? And it's like, she expected white people. Yeah. You know? And so I'm just saying. Well, it's okay because in Germany, you have the right now, Mike, because Japan was their ally. Yeah, <laughs> but, it, it, but but honestly, like I just even in small towns and stuff, I'm sure it's there in Germany. Yeah, I'm not like I don't know everything of Germany. I spent a couple of years of my life there, and I, mm-hmm. I really travel amongst the people and try to get a feeling of things. And the, just to be completely honest, I think they're more equitable. Yeah, you know, uh, they have ghettos, they have Turkish ghettos, and it's not fully Absolutely. equitable. But they they've made more steps to make it like it's just less brutal than here. I got to be honest. Well, in Germany takes in uh, out of most of Europe, if I remember correctly, <clears throat> per capita the most immigrants. So it's like but for a while that was true. It might even true now, especially when there's these huge crises like with the war in Syria and now the war in Ukraine. Like, yeah, they take in the huge brunt of the wave, in part because they're so far to the east of the continent. Like, right. A lot of them go there, and it's like, well, okay, when you have a lot of poverty-ridden people who are, like, leaving everything behind, so even if they weren't in poverty there, they sure are now. Yeah, like they're traumatized, you know. Well, a lot of them are going to suffer poverty-like conditions. And, and by the way, there's a lot of mixed feelings amongst the Germans because there's been disruptions in society for that. Oh, I, I realize oh, yeah. there's mixed feelings, but it's not like a bigoted I hate them thing. It's more like a, well, this is a really shock. We need to do a better, you know, like, I don't yeah. want things to be unsafe or dangerous. Right, and I get it. these people have been traumatized, and now they have nothing. Right, and they, yeah. but taking a step back, taking in such large groups of people, what would I call that? I would call that kind. Yeah, you know, very I, humanitarian. Very humanitarian. You know what I mean? And they they've taken some steps to make it better. I think they need to do more. Mm-hmm. I'm, but it's like I'm sitting here. It's hard for me, like being an American, to be critical of them because I know that we're not. Because we take in way less. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and we're fucking. Uh, if you were looking at the recent articles out there, we're making immigrant children work in meat factories. You yeah, know? you're talking about. Yeah, that and I'm like over a yeah. hundred were just found recently for a company, like 102 or something, and it's like that's what we know of. How much more is there out there? And I know right. it happens a lot, and they get worked hard. The kids. Yeah, it's an open child secret labor. that we work uh, immigrants who are undocumented. For the sure sake that they're undocumented, yes. we can exploit them on wages and taxes for yeah. that reason. It's like, okay, so we're also willing to do that to children now, too. Great. Yeah, it's, right. just, it's yeah, wonderful. <laughs> you know, and it's like, so I mean, like, I'm not coming from an era, era of superiority. Yeah. I just realized that they're, I, I'm, I can't call Germany any perfect society, but I've seen them do some good things. Yeah. Actually, I think taking in refugees is an act of kindness. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, yeah. and then trying to integrate them into your society is going to be very challenging. There's going to be cultural norms, norming and storming and all that stuff. Yeah. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to put resources in to help them build them up, get them educated, get yeah. them, you know, on the right page. And it's going to take a generation, you want to be honest about it. Yeah, usually. But, but yeah, but at, but at the end of it all, after end of all the disruption, I hope they can have a prosperous and joyful Germany. That's what I want for them. Yeah. Uh, so much more reconciliation compared to other places, compared mm-hmm. to here. Uh, like, we wiped out entire people here, yeah. you know, Native people, and there's... Well, the ones we brought here, we haven't really, truly, emotionally reconciled with yet. Yeah. It seems like there's still a lot of divisions that run deep in this country along those lines. It really it's does. Like, there's, like, a bunch of monuments put up to slavers during the civil rights period, right? Yeah. It's like a rebellion against, no, 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 don't forget that we owned you. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I mean, there's a lot of evil shit that's been put up like that. And, like, honestly, you can criticize Germany, but I'm just going to be honest about what they have here, right? They have less freedom of speech. Yes. If you try to put up a Nazi signia, they're going to tear that down. This shit's illegal. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's like, and I don't know. I mean, like, look, dude, I, maybe there should, like, we always have limits on speech. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Absolutely. Right? So it's like, I'm, so, I'm, I'm really big into freedom of speech, but... I'm just going to be honest. I don't disagree with what they've done here. Yeah. I think they needed. I mean, they're the that. most extreme example, right? I mean, yeah. literally, they were the Nazis. I mean, yeah. fuck, right? Okay. And, and, Maybe they could ban Nazi insignia, but it's like, uh, at the same time, like, 
Wouldn't wouldn't you want to not drive them down into like a like hidden spot of society where they're gathering in secret because they're not allowed to publicly voice these opinions? I like that our idiots here. <laughs> and the idiots they so are they're more that's visible. Kinda nice. But also I think you know who to look out for. <laughs> I also think here they're more numerous. Not that they don't exist yeah. in Germany, because they absolutely do exist in Germany and they get pushed down, and there is an undercurrent, it does exist, it's small yeah. compared to here. But there's a lot less like here there's more fucking riots and shit like that. I'm just like, you know, violence and like storms. Or just happen. more violent people. Yeah, too. we're we're all yeah. more violent. There's all <laughs> kinds of shootings and stuff. In Germany it's really rare, you know. Mm-hmm. Um there's some cops, and I, I, I'm not saying I love the German cops, I'm not saying that, but there, there was a tradition they had, um, and I don't know how many German cops went through this, but they would take them to uh, uh, concentration camps and mm-hmm. say, this is what happens when your power gets out of control. Yeah. You know? So I think that's an important message, but at the same time, it's still a police, police force, right? So you're going to have yeah. problems there. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying it's perfect. What I actually am getting to, though, is that that spirit of reconciliation is what I want to see in other places. I don't think I'm going to see it in America in my lifetime because we're too split. And you don't think we're going to see it in Piltover either. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I think, you know, back to, sorry, back to the arcane. Um, I, I, I don't suspect it. There, there are people that are Machiavellian. Most of them seem to have Machiavellian motivations. Yeah. They're going to be retaliatory. Well, we don't get a know? large slice think. of what the general populace of Piltover is like. That's true. Yeah. The people that we leaders. see of like commonplace are kind of more people, at least that are on the border of Zon, going mm-hmm. back and forth. Like when they were still kids, Jinx and Vi, they, their group encountered another group. Like we see a lot of just uh, kind of transient people who are going through the last drop. Like, we don't really see much of just, like, general Piltover people. Like, it's either people directly related to Victor and Jace, and, and to a lesser extent, Caitlin. Like, you get those cops that are around Caitlin yeah. at that gathering, but yeah. that was pretty much it. The, the rest of it's, like, people who are of the high yeah. society of Piltover, and it's yeah. like, well, yeah, those people aren't really going to be that interested in the reconciliation aspect with Zahn. I mean, yeah. you really yeah. had to twist their arm. It's like, it's part of the reason why a lot of the dialogue, I think, was blocked out with Jace's speech at the end. It's like, they all kind of came around to it, and it wasn't really important how. It was important that they did, and then the rocket hits. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, the, the only thing I could see, and I'm not sure that they will do this with the story arc, but mm-hmm. if they're invaded from that other force, especially if it's like... From a, Noxus. From Noxus, yeah. thank you. Apparently. But like, if they're invaded from Noxus, that could cause it unity to erupt, yeah. you know, possibly. Especially if they already looked weak and now they're getting attacked with rockets from their own people. I mean, yeah. how weak could you look? Yeah. It might be an opportunity, you know what I mean? If they really want to, now might be the time in the chaos, like, blitzkrieg them before they can react. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but, yeah, I'm, but whatever, I don't know, I don't know what, t- what path they'll take. There's a lot of ways to take it, but I just, the way that societies are built, that kind of reconciliation is something I want to see, but I'll be honest, it's very rare. Mm-hmm. You know, it, a lot of, factors have to come together and usually for a power to get to that point mm-hmm. they have to lose yeah you know yeah i mean the germans flat out eventually lost you know and where they were left in the rubble yeah. of everything you know they had to they had to you know there was a lot of soul searching that went on mm-hmm. um so you know <laughs> it, it's 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 it, it's very rough it's almost like the only way i see pilt over coming over is that they really really felt you know, I'm not, and that's kind of tragic in itself because if they do that, it's going to wreck their shining city on the hill. Yeah, truly. You know, like what if they were so wrecked a- after a war that they needed help from the lanes or they needed yeah. to work with uh, them? Yeah. You know, then maybe. Who you're in bad shape if the lanes is helping you? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, it's like holy shit. At least you guys have a little food. We kind of have nothing after this war. I'm yeah. not. I'm just saying a lot of things could play out. Yeah, but uh, but when I think about that reconciliation, it usually takes a massive social force and, quite frankly, a loss involved in it. But yeah. it's not enough because there are some forces, there are some people that have lost but never truly reconciled. Yeah. The pressure wasn't there to reconcile, you know, and that's that's the problem. I think the reconciliation is required for future peace. Yeah, you know, I don't want people to feel bad about it, but it's like I remember <laughs> another like a German thing. Mm. This met this Danish woman. She was cute. Mm-hmm. And I was, you know, I was single back then, and mm-hmm. talking to her. Nothing happened, but you know, but, <laughs> but we're talking. Much to your chagrin. Yeah, my, <laughs> I was Shogunai, the German, uh, Japanese. Uh, uh, nothing couldn't help it. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but we're talking, 
and there's this like international meeting of people that were doing different representation representations of their culture. And the Germans did like a really serious morality play, mm. you know, kind of like the weight of making heavy morality decisions and stuff like that. And the Danish people went up and they just had a competition between each other where they all wore ties, put the end in their mouth, and the person that could get the whole tie in their mouth the fastest won. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, my people. We're yeah, it's sort of like, it like such a good cultural representation of like the Germans is like the weighty. We must make the right moral decisions. The implications are serious, <laughs> and, you know, and then tie eating. Mm, you know? <laughs> so it's oh, like the spirit funny. of people, you know. I, I, by the way, I like Denmark as well. Yeah, I, I, it has whimsy to it that I really enjoy. I like. Yeah. It. I, I think my kid had a great time. I don't know if you know about it, but like mm-hmm. I'm totally going sideways. It's okay, or like it's yeah, okay. Sure. so. Like in, there's an amusement park that mm-hmm. like that is in Copenhagen, right? Mm-hmm. And all the Disney stuff is a total ripoff from. It's total rip. I didn't know that. People said, oh, you know, Disney. Like it predates the Disney? It predates the Disney, and the Disney huh. stuff is just totally like a more built-out version of it. Interesting. Yeah. But this park, uh, and I'm fucking forgetting the name. God, I'm, you know, it sucks getting old. Um, <laughs> but we went to it once, and it, with my daughter had the time of her life at this place with the roller coasters. It was just amazing. It, it is so... It's like, imagine something like the, the problem with Disney, and I don't I don't hate it or anything like that. The Disney mm-hmm. parks are quite fun. But it's all very massive and almost, it feels a little overwhelming at times. Mm-hmm. And this park is just like Disney, but smaller, more intimate, mm-hmm. and more That's whimsical. Nice. You know? Yeah. And it's so wonderful to like, have there. She's like seven or eight years old, you know? And now it's killing me because I'm going to actually pull out my phone. Rudeness <laughs> on my part, my bad. Unacceptable. But, uh, you know what? Ban yourself from my street. <laughs> <laughs> Amusement park in Copenhagen. It'll come up. Tivoli! Yep. No, oh, it's couldn't remember the name. Anyways, Tivoli. Google that, fair yeah. viewers. Yeah, anyways, it, it, was, it, it was an awesome experience, and it kind of like, it was the spirit of the Danish people is there, too. I could kind of see mm-hmm. how, this is how they like to have a good time, an example of it, you know, and it mm-hmm. was just really quite fun. Um, you know, less, less gravity than, like, I've been to German installations that are, like, I went to one for the uh, Holocaust, where it's intended to make you feel dizzy. I feel and, like a lot less fun. <laughs> yeah, a lot less fun. Like, you go through, it's like, you, when they, you know, it's intended to make you feel the confusion and the sickness, and I actually felt sick to mm-hmm. my stomach, and it's a exhibit at going mm-hmm. through it you know and like you're kind of off it's it's weird it's structured to kind of throw off your balance as you're going through it and everything yeah it's like they have these really deep philosophical experiences and stuff huh. like that but it's that actually sounds really cool but yeah. definitely not an amusement park no no, no. <laughs> it's, no it, there. it's a very engaging experience and i highly recommend i think that was in berlin if i remember right but i've been all i've been to so many places in germany it's a little bit of you know, like slurring in the memory. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, okay. But I spent more time in Munich than anywhere else, but that wasn't Munich. I'm pretty sure it was Berlin. And regardless, there's interesting installations all around, you mm-hmm. know. So they live, they make that a part of their lived experience and they mm-hmm. take that wisdom forward, right? Yeah. So it's a different, yeah. different approach. That's yeah, a good thing to do. I, I just think it's good. That, well, it's, what should we do more? Now, back to the uh, arcane. Um, realistically, I don't see it playing out that way. And in fact, on, on all honesty, I'm worried about Echo. Because the more he doesn't have a whole lot of power yet, and yeah. he could take a serious hit in, in the changes. Well, clearly, this is a moment of inflection. Silka's dead. Yeah. Jinx has gone rogue. <laughs> Absolutely. The lanes might be blamed for Jinx nuking <laughs> yeah. the council. I mean, the full representation of Piltover, the entire democratic government is the council. Like. <sighs> For, for what form of democracy they have. Yeah, I'm wondering like, how many are dead, you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to kill Chase, are you? You know? <laughs> like, the uh, one thing that is speculated about, and this hasn't been confirmed by anyone yet, but uh, it is a broad speculation, is that there's a uh, tribe of people, the Solari and the Lunari, people mm-hmm. who worship the sun and people who worship the moon. There's a whole thing with Leon and Diana. I hope that gets elaborated on in an arcane language. You know so much there. more of the stuff than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I know so little, it actually goes so much deeper than I know. Well, but So these are two characters that, like, one, rep- they're, like, sisters from this tribe, but one discovers, like, this long-forgotten moon tribe and, like, thinks that's the right way, but, like, they have to kind of hunt her down, so she's, like, this alternate faction of the sun versus the moon. Mm-hmm. The point is they live on Mount Targon, in and around Mount Targon, which is, like, this holy place where there's a lot of magical essence. Um, um, 
Cool. So the, where like, the most magic... tribes draw their power from is really from this mountain, and it oh, kind okay. of represents itself more in the form of the sun versus the moon, but it's kind of right. imbued in the land. So they just draw power from the magic? Is it like their whole society is built upon the magic? Yes. They're kind oh, of cool. like uh, religious sects, almost. Oh, okay. Almost like, you know what I think of, and I'm not sure if it's like this, because mm-hmm. I haven't seen it, but have you ever seen, like, there's different representations of elves, and sometimes they're... Yeah, they're it's kind of very elvish vibe. Yeah, it's like, yeah. like we're living inside this massive tree that's built around to give us homes and all this, you know, yeah. stuff like that. That, you know, it's or, a lot less uh, green greenery because it's a mountain, right? It's a yeah, lot okay, more earthy. Yeah. Oh, okay. but it is kind of similar, like a right. lot more okay. stone structures and stuff. Gosh, like now it's like the dwarves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, kind of dwarven magic. Oh, okay, if they okay. have more of a magical kind of if it's from less Europe, industrious right? and more magical dwarves. Ah, okay, so like a little bit of like interesting. It sounds like a cross up between elf and dwarf. And and some oh, other uh, league players can try to throw in some good analogies here. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> but, go for it. Uh, I'd love to hear it. Uh, so the uh, uh, those two characters um, both represent the Solari generally is wh- how they're referred to uh-huh. um, and there's a lot of symbology that the Solari do because again they kind of have this religious vibe to them and at the end uh, Mel has that like thing that shines on her back Yeah. and that looks kind of Solari in nature there's an item in the game called the Locket of the Iron Solari that has a similar design. It's not fully one for one, but it's very similar. Okay. And so there's a lot of thought that Mel, and in my rewatching that I did most recently, I tried to pay attention to the flashback reference when Mel was growing up with her mom, where oh, she had that man. moment whether or not to slaughter the conquered tribe. Yeah, I remember when she was like banishing her instead. Like... It's not entirely clear, but some of the dialogue leaves ambiguous whether or not Mel is a biological daughter or an adopted daughter from a conquered tribe that is being groomed to take up the mantle of this Noxian family. Right. And a lot, again, you got to remember the culture of Noxus is this very conquering oriented. Yeah. It's not very, like, like a lot of societies where might makes right, they wind up with a dictator who has a family lineage. Mm-hmm. Noxus is not like that. If you're the daughter or son of the ruling Noxian leader, don't matter. As soon as he's dead, you gotta prove yourself and earn it. Like, okay. you can just immediately be killed because the next guy's taken over and you're in the way and you're trying to oppose him. Well, they'll just kill you. So uh, it's <laughs> kind of a... Um, what, uh, there's a term I can't remember for something like that, but it's almost like a... Like, what realistically what it sounds like is that there'll be a sort of, some sort of oligopoly of power, like the most powerful people and some competition there, and somebody might rise to the top. Yes, but it's... Uh, um, but it seems all temporary, too, because you might what's die. What's the term where it's like... Uh, <laughs> it's the romanticization of what we have in America. It's like... Meritocracy? Um, yes. It's like a meritocracy <laughs> of might. Of might, yeah. Yes. But the, the thing about that is any situation like that, it's like, hey, congratulations, you're the king. You might be king for a day. It's you very know, much yeah, like that. Yeah, it's like, it's, yeah. it's like... The, <laughs> r- the regimes that have lasted a long time in Noxus mm-hmm. are kind of... They're, they're not necessarily u- unique, but they always have had this edge of, like, the last day of that could be tomorrow. Yeah. They okay, always have that feeling. Yeah, that, I think that's where, you, that's where you're realistically going to be in a situation like that. So in, in that type of family <laughs> dynamic, it's not necessarily relevant who is your biological heir. It's more important who is the heir that can take up your mantle. Right. So there's a lot of questioning I was doing, although they look biologically related. Mm, Mel yeah, yeah. might not be a biological daughter, and she might have Solari blood. Okay. And she, this moment where Jinx, this is kind of the general speculation that's out there. No one really has any concrete information they've been able to point to, but this is general fan speculation um, that... There's some type of, since the Locket of the Iron Slurry, when you use its active ability, it grants everyone around you within a certain radius a shield mm. for a certain amount of health. Okay. She, the similarity of that symbol and that item's symbol might mean that she has some sort of inherent magic that she, even if she doesn't realize she's about to, just comes out of her in this moment of danger and protects everyone on the council, or at least part of the council, within a certain distance of her, Mm -hmm. with some type of shield that protects them from dying. Because it seems like Jace is not a character that has died in the game, so people are hoping, perhaps wishfully, that he does not die in that moment. So they're trying to figure out how would he not die? Well, maybe Mel is imbued with this type of magic, 
And maybe that means that she has some Solari blood somehow. Maybe, maybe her mom has Solari blood and we just don't know because okay, Noxus yeah. is a uh, accumulation of people from tons of tribes. Like, yeah. they don't always slaughter everyone. A lot of the strong ones they'll take in and be like, you could thrive in Noxus. Like, you were underappreciated here. Come in our culture and rule. And a lot of times they will. So maybe okay. her mom, yeah. if not directly from that experience, is lineaged from that experience and maybe Noxian by birth. But it comes from the Solari as well. We don't know. God, Noxus just seems, honestly to me, obnoxious. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's fucked. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah. like, because, like, no position you have could feel comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's a certain amount, even America's a fairly violent country, to mm -hmm. be honest. Like, we're the most violent of the rich countries mm -hmm. by far. But even here, we have a lot of established peace. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, the Like, if I go just into a burger joint I want to grab a burger and fries it's usually not much of an event mm -hmm. but Noxus sounds like the place where any place at any time things could shift you know what I mean yeah that's very true that's and what like, analogy you could go into a restaurant at Noxus and have a problem yeah and, I was saying, and it's yeah. like well I don't want to live like that you know what I mean because it's like everything's a problem like I'm going to have to navigate everything's a fight and honestly yeah. truthfully it sounds just exhausting and how do you develop as a society to a greater end like that? You know what I mean? Well, this is why they don't really develop the technology. They conquer the new technology and then integrate it. Yeah. Which is okay. why it seems so likely they would target a Piltover who's yeah. advanced this hex tech. Exactly. Well, that makes sense um, from their point of view. There's a strength and a weakness to it. I'm sure they're absolute hell in battle. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure they're hardened as fuck. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, um, I could see possibly... Mm -hmm. Piltover might be able to create some weapons that'd be quite surprised to them, mm -hmm. just because they're more oh, on yeah. top of the technology, Definitely. you know. So uh, they might have ways to retaliate, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I don't know. It's an interesting fight, um, a brutal one though, because it's like. I well, I hope it's in season two. Well, it's so cool if they go that way. We don't I, know. There's not just, really. Yeah. They could go in a completely different direction. Totally. Oh boy, would that be a ride if well, they went that way? <laughs> yeah, if they went to if they pull in Noxus for what you're discussing here, it, it it's not. It seems like a war of almost. Uh, Malthusian or something, you know what I mean? The all, the all against all. Like, we're going to yeah. conquer you, but we're going to continue to fight inside of each ourselves, you mm -hmm. know, to, to take power. Very factionalized. Like, very factionalized. So, yeah, let's say they fight and they win, they take over Piltover, mm -hmm. then that could, guy in charge, it's like, oh, well, sorry, but you had a pirate victory, you lost half your people. Yeah. And, and the, it's this, other, this other regime here thinks you suck. <laughs> and you're yeah. gonna die now you know what I mean so it's like it just seems like endless hell <laughs> well after what we've seen with um, Piltover with how an entire half of it is really gone yeah. I mean Piltover's not in a position to talk about that kind of factionalization and disunity yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah it's true it's like it's not as brutal on the surface but, yes, but it looks much better looks, on the it, surface. It, it, has a, yeah. it has like this has a veneer, but the only reason why I have hope for the Piltover system, I, I think of it as like a almost an Athenian democracy. And the reason mm -hmm. I say that is because I don't know that how much real democratic representation people have there. But yeah. you have a council and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's closer it's, than long. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, so closer it, than Noxus in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. it's like and, and there's a lot of manipulation, a lot of uh, deceit. And mm -hmm. a lot of, um, you know, uh, powerful people just looking out for their own ends, right? Mm -hmm. So you got that, and that's, that's not good. But the reason that I hold out some kind of hope for this is I want uh, uh, people of principle. Yes. To, and it produces Kaelin, it produces Jace, it yeah, produces it, Victor, even though yeah. Victor's from Zaun, he was yeah. able to come and find shelter and success yeah. in Piltover. I actually felt some connection to Victor in a sense because of, like, I, I'll be honest, like, it's been a long time, and I'm a really soft old man these days, sitting at a <laughs> desk and all that. But I feel, in all honesty, I feel like get, I, I grew up a certain way, so I am white trash, and that's just all I'm ever going to be. Um, and so I'm in this position where I'm at. Where I'm at. And, Speaking of people who've internalized their past. <laughs> yeah, well, and so I kind of, you know, I, I, I feel that way. I really do feel that way, right? Yeah, sure. You know, and so I'm, I'm in this position with people that aren't like that, and it's rare. Yeah. Most of the people, and I'm not saying anything bad about them, they just mm -hmm. come from a very different background. Yeah. And so I really feel like the odd person out. You know, I talk to people about their backgrounds and they grew up in what, the, okay, I don't want to say it the wrong way. I'm not, compared to me, they grew up in luxury. Yeah. Pick a fence adorned. Yeah. 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 The way I grew up, it's not, I don't want to make it the wrong way. It's not like I was getting shot at. 
Yeah. No, it, but it's just more like the kind of chaos. <laughs> you were living in a place where you could have been, though. <laughs> yeah, I could have been. And, <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I knew, uh, and guns did go off, and the kid was shot to death on my street, actually, just a few days after I got there. But, um, but like, uh, and it's funny, James, my friend, is a gnarly street fighter. He was terrified of getting shot because he got some of the wrong people angry, you know? That's yeah. just all it takes. And, you know, he's like, dude's big as a bear, but, you know, scared as shit. And not, and not for, you know, he's not a coward, you know? Anyways, it was just kind of the, the growing up where it's like sometimes we have electricity gets turned off, water gets turned off, we get evicted, right. we don't have food sometimes, that kind of stuff. All those insecurities, and now I'm in the position I'm in, and it's like there's very little understanding of the people that occupy my class now. Yeah. Right? There's very little understanding of what life is like down there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so and I. So yeah, <laughs> and, I, and I know I didn't spend my whole life there, mm-hmm. and I'm grateful. Okay, yeah. a lot of things, well, I got a lot of lucky breaks. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm special. I'm not. I just, mm-hmm. I rolled the dice and it came up, you know. It's almost like I got a few rolls of the dice in my life. In the beginning one, I fucking crapped out, right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and, then it's, and then it's like, but then yeah. just things kind of went my way. You know, I tried, of course. Everybody's trying. Yeah. You know? So I'm not, that's what I was trying to explain both. about that. It takes yeah, it take, effort and luck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It takes effort and luck, right? And so, like, I happen to get the luck. And then, um, but there's very little understanding of that. Because most of the people that are occupied around me grew up far above me and didn't even have to see people like me. Yeah. And if I did show up in their life, I was the help. Right. You know? Yeah. Like when I got old enough to, you know, do work in the family business. <laughs> you were there for work, not pleasure. Yeah. yeah. I'm there to haul sheetrock all day mm-hmm. to do the addition to your father, doctor father's home. Mm-hmm. I've done shit like that, you know? Like, and yeah. It's like, you know, I, I'm the help, mm-hmm. you know? And you might even be roughly friendly like like uh at sure. arm's length friendly yeah. right but that's about all you're going to be yeah. you know because i am that you know i'm the guy that's going to put up the sheetrock for you you know i'm the right. guy that's going to sling the mud and then i'm going to get the fuck out of your life so you, can, <laughs> so you can enjoy your new rec room yeah you know um but anyway so it's like you know, that that's the relationship and there's very little understanding of that the fact that and i think victor would really understand this it's like yeah. it's like taking his decisions i understand that he was trying to like he's looking at death right? yeah he's trying to find yeah. a way out you know, I don't think he wanted anyone to die. It was a tragedy. Well, he didn't even know she was at the facility. Yeah, that late. yeah, exactly, yeah. right. And he didn't know that would happen, so it's a tragedy. And it, he, he he was playing with his own life. Yeah. And thought that he had confined it to that because no one else was around. He didn't even know she was potentially able to be caught in the crossfire. Like it had already happened before he even realized she was vulnerable. Mm. It's like. I mean, how could you plan for that? You can't. You yeah. didn't even know. Yeah, absolutely. And right. like, and I, I sympathize with rolling the dice with your life. For me, like, it was not so dramatic. It'd probably be very boring. But just to quickly describe it, it's like, okay, rolling my dice with the, I'm good at the math and science kind of stuff. And let's see, you know, I got a talent for it. So let's mm. see how far I can go. But what if, what if I didn't have enough? What if I got into it? Like, the first month I spent in college, no exaggeration, I don't understand, I'm stupid, I can't get this, I'm, I'm an idiot, I hate myself, you know, and I didn't give up, but I thought, I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail. Mm-hmm. And then after that first month, everything clicked, and I was a straight-A calculus student, differential equations, all kinds of physics, I loved them, you know, I only got, uh, there's only one time I didn't get an A in a physics class, and that's because I was so sick for the final, I could barely hold my head up. You know, yeah. <laughs> I had an A going into the final, I tanked it. You know, it's like mm. B plus or something for the class. Like, fuck. You know, it was a really cool class, too. Theoretical physics kind of stuff, like mm. science equations. Yeah, well, that I, kind of shit. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I enjoyed it. You know, a lot of people didn't. You know, yeah. you know, a lot of people were like suffering through it. And I'm like, there's a lot of stuff I liked. Oh, some stuff I hated, too. Sure. But what I'm getting at is that was kind of my chance, right? And <laughs> what if it didn't work out? I would just be... In Back the to sheet rock for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, you're right. I'd be fucking slinging mud, sheet rocking, just kind of like what happened. What happened to my brother? Yeah, you know, right. Until he broke his back so hard, and then he's like takes odd jobs and stuff now. And I don't know. I just I sympathize with Victor as a character. I I, I could see myself doing everything that he did, yeah. and I kind of yeah, me too. I stand Very with much. him when it's like, yeah, I'm from the lanes. Yeah, I get I get that feeling. Sometimes. Didn't you get like yeah. the way he said it too? It was like. Don't you remember you're not from Piltover, too? Like, I get it, you're not from the lanes. Like, you were from wherever the fuck his and him and his mom yeah. were from before that mage transported them to Piltover. Yeah. Or, like, the immediate vicinity outside of Piltover. Right. But, like, I thought you understood, because you weren't from here, either. Yeah. What happened to you? You're not from here. Yeah. You, we were supposed to both be, like, essentially from the lanes. What? How, how, yeah, how do yeah. I have to say this to you right yeah. now? Yeah, it's like, how, how'd you get into this position yeah. where you're differentiating me yeah. And all and everyone else like We are the outsiders, yeah. bud. Remember? Yeah, right. It's like it's kinda like Fuck. that. It's, it's like that and also there's an attitude of like, 
what's so fucking wrong with coming from the lanes? Right. Like, you don't get a choice of what you're born into. Yeah. You know? And so, like... These people aren't the problem. There are people here that are the problem. Yeah. yeah it's, a, this, it's a systemic this, problem. Yeah. You know? And so it's like, try to understand that a little bit. Like, I wish... I really do wish they could, you know, walk a mile in the shoes a bit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um... Because that, that empathy and experience is not... There's not making a connection in our world. And I feel like Victor wasn't making a connection. I'm sorry, not Victor. Uh, um, okay, Trace. Trace. Trace, thank you. Trace wasn't making that connection with Victor mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. You know, and it's like... at In that moment, it's like, yeah, it's kind of fucked up because he's not there. But also, it, there's something I've seen sometimes. Okay, and I want to be very clear. I'm not talking about everyone. But sometimes there'll be immigrant populations that are the most bought into their culture that they went to they're like in, in America oh the yeah that are super that's such a good point Jesus yeah. is very much that yeah he got it's like, super involved into it yeah it's like it becomes a part of their new identity it's like I am an American yeah you know kind of thing I remember I was drunk in a cab with a guy you know and I was coming back from Japan you know because I whenever I come back from Japan I get drunk as well of course Odd Taxi was on in the little yeah, oh, I love <laughs> the video player. Player. <laughs> but, but I remember talking to the guy I think he, I he's from Ethiopia you know mm -hmm. and I was talking to him truthfully and this is just my the way I feel about things it's like Okay, you know, we're equally American. You're here, you're living here, you're making your life here, you're American. That's yeah. it. You know, that's my honest take yeah, on it. Really. You know? um, that is the American idea. Yeah, yeah. it kind of is, you know, and it's like, hey, you're doing, you're doing honest work. It's like, I need a taxi, you're getting that work done, thank you very much, here's your tip, you know. Yep. Very, and it's cool, yeah. you know. But uh, the thing of it is, how do I put this? It, 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 Trace is getting into that identity a bit, mm -hmm. where he's like, internalized it and he's a part of it I am Piltover yeah. I think for a bit but I also think he backs off of it a bit because yeah. when Victor challenges him on it I think he shakes that, Jace out of it effectively yeah. I think that moment really he, resonated yeah, with him you could see him be like oh shit yeah, yeah what Jace, the fuck what am I going like what the fuck was I saying you know like, like so it's good that Jace can be moved you yeah. know what I mean because the moral compass comes back into play it's like hey look you know plus I want to make the point it's like where people are from is one thing There'll be different cultures and expectations and interactions. I understand we have to be practical. At the same time, we're all still people. Yeah. You know, and if you were living here, what would you be doing differently? Right. You know, you know it's like, if you were in this position, so it's like, I like imagine if none, none of my talents were valued. Mm -hmm. I've talked to my wife about this before. Like, uh, so what if m m talents for math and science were worthless because we had AI that's better than any human could ever be? Yeah, sure. And they'd be like, oh, you're a trivial appendage. You know, yeah. you're useless. Vestigial. A future that's very quickly coming. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, I mean, that be how would I get out? Mm -hmm. I don't think yeah. I, would, I wouldn't have, right? Because imagine yeah. imagine this different world that other things are placed at a higher value. Say certain artistic creations mm -hmm. in this other world where it's like all the science and art, all the science and math is being done by computers. Lord knows but, I've tried to draw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work out. I got the nice Wacom and everything. It didn't. Try it. So, Man, I'm gonna try again one day. But, so I guess what uh, I'm taking saying is, a break. <laughs> well, a, this is a more effective use yeah. of my time than that. <laughs> well, it's like, I guess what I'm getting at is like you know anybody could be in that position because you mm. don't get to choose your talents, you don't yeah. get to choose your opportunities. Yes. What's available is what's available. You, make, you yeah. make the best choice you can. But guess what? Also, you're gonna make some bad choices because everybody does that. Well, I before you can even make choices, you're steered in a direction. Yeah, like I was steered towards math and science, and. Specifically, and I don't mind the steering towards math and science. I'm a nerd. I like it. That's correct. <laughs> they were right. But the thing was, there were moments, and I can't. It's hard for me to point it out because I was so young. But like, there were definitely moments where I was explicitly steered away from art to yeah. be steered for, towards math and science. God, they were like, yeah. "Don't worry about. It. Who cares? You can't draw. You're good at math. Let's get you some more times tables, and you can do that." Right. Like, and again, I'm kind of fudging the memory, but like. There were definitely, like, I had been, I was bad at art and just taught that I was going to be bad at art and to not care. Right. And it's like, right. dude, in my life, like, I understand some, being good at science and math has been very helpful to me in, at a number of points in my life. Sure. But when I'm just Problem talking solving. about, like, from, from, like, an aesthetic, like, who I am as a person, as it has turned out, like, I, I definitely have appreciated the beauty of systems and in a way that math and science has helped me. Like, because games is like, uh, a lot of games I like are strategy based, but they're like economy management or like decision making. And a lot of math and science kind of comes at like understanding systems and choices. Oh, yeah, know? I bet. Yeah. So, like, in a way that it is, it, it's not that it has no manifestation in what I choose to appreciate in life, 
But look at me surrounded by fucking visual art in this fucking room. All the it fucking wonderful out, out, out of view, all the fucking like statues and figures. Oh, uh, like, I just happy to say. I love <laughs> love visual art and things that are hand drawn and hand crafted. And it's like, and I've I've gotten into something that's a very hands on trade. Like, yeah, there is an art form. Like we we really fucking take take some pride in our ship being level like <laughs> we're not drawing it but we are trying to make things look an aesthetic way right. like art is a lot of what i do and care about in this world and it's like a lot of it is powered by electricity so like a lot of okay. that is science yeah. and math it's not yeah. none of it but episode like, 10 do you ever get to episode 10 of dr stone just for yes that? yeah yes. it's a love letter to us you yes, know absolutely. <laughs> the electrician and electro engineer different jobs but you know we're looking at electricity it was cool the both yeah. of us i'm yeah. sure for yeah. the same uh, reasons yeah it's like, I, I love that that's so awesome it's like the most powerful thing electricity yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right <laughs> so it, take that plumbers and hvac guys. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so i mean honestly i love it i'm looking at how i'm raising my own daughter because yeah I, I do engage her with mathematical stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get, like, her English is almost up to grade level. It's a little bit below. Her first language is Japanese. We did that intentionally yeah. for the first several years of her life because we wanted to stick. And yeah. It really has. Because it won't stick here yeah, if, we'll, you don't if you don't do, do that, that intentionally. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we did that. We steered her that way. Now we have to steer her more to English. She's only a little bit behind in English. Like just mm -hmm. the touch. And actually, she's been making great lengths, so I don't even know if I call her behind anymore. She nice. still has a Japanese accent. Is her primary language? But that's, that's fine. fine. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It might go away. It's probably gonna go away. But you know, it, but probably. I like it because I think what's gonna happen is eventually she's gonna develop an English dialect because she's mm -hmm. kind of doing that now, mm -hmm. and she's gonna probably have the natural Japanese dialect as well. Mm -hmm. She'll speak in very matter of fact ways to even adults and stuff in mm -hmm. Japanese, and they're kind of surprised by how good she is. That's the way I still see with Japanese people. Cool. So it's awesome, right? Yeah. But like, what she likes to do, like I do engage her with math, and I need to do a little more of that, and I mm -hmm. like to get her into math and science because she's really talented at that, and that mm -hmm. could be a path for her. However, I deck her out with art because she loves it. She yes. loves it. So we have all kinds of art stuff. She comes home from school and she gets to do all kinds of art things, and I love it, and I, I do it. I have an art class for her on top of it once a week, every Wednesday. She goes nice. to like an art, art PDX thing. She brings home crafts and stuff that she makes. She knows how to do new things. Killer. Yeah, I, I want to say, like, how do I put this? I want to prepare her, but, like, I want her childhood to be filled with warm, happy memories. Yeah. You know, and if I, if I steer her away from art, I'm steering her away from happiness. Yeah. I just got to make sure she has enough base abilities to move forward. And she's a little bit above, um, like, this is how it's went with math. She was way above grade level, and she's gotten a little bit better. Only probably because I haven't pushed her, and nobody's pushed her there. But she's still better than average in math, yeah. even without really trying. So the talent's there. Yeah, it's funny, you know, like, I taught her a little bit of multiplication, right? Mm. She taught herself division. You understand? Nobody taught her division. Oh, she sick. went the other way. Wow, that's killer. And it's like, yeah, and she's like, and <laughs> she's like, moly. and she's talking like, I don't know how I know. I just know it. She, I don't know how I know it. Just makes just, sense. Yeah, it just makes sense. <laughs> you know, she doesn't even know. She didn't call it division, but she yeah. did it. You know, she did it's division. It's just reverse multiplication. Yeah, it's just yeah. Really, yeah, basically, it's like so she has a talent for it and an ability to manipulate the math, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she, so. I, I think she has a bright future if she wants it. Yeah. But I would never prohibit the art. In fact, what I did instead was I showed her a picture of the Sydney Coliseum, mm -hmm. and I said, if you follow your art and you integrate the math and the science, and you, you follow both of that, this. you can make gorgeous things like this in the world. Yeah. You could do it. You know. Math did this. Yeah. Shockingly, yeah. I it's know, like but there, it did. there's a, there's, a, there's an undergirding lattice of math and science for these structures and there's an artistic expression and you could do both mm -hmm. you know like you're talented so I want to give her that you know and well, part of that the is you know, the art too you know in this society a lot of times it's viewed as an either or and it's just not no like the, nope. there's this the, the best art has that math in it and it like comes from this perspective of both like you're saying and it's like I just feel like it, I, I don't know, I don't like, know if it was a teacher or my you know? parents in particular, but just the idea, and I could care less about me as an individual, I am, I'm a fine with who I am now, <laughs> but like, um, I just think it's a sad reality that a lot of people probably have that experience in this country of like it being treated like a dichotomy. Like, okay. put down the this and pick up the that. I've like, seen a lot both, of that. my friend, both. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I've even done it, but I did it in it like, so... I kind of had an aggressive approach to my education. Mm -hmm. um, it only costs a little bit more to take extra credits, 
and mm-hmm. and if I did that, I could get out sooner, and I owe less money. Yeah. You know, so I took like eighteen very or nineteen wise. credits. <laughs> you know, it was very tough in that sense. Like I would take around eighteen credits, plus or minus one. For, yeah. for so it's like time and a half, and they're all like mostly tough classes and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I had to just power through them all. You know, mm-hmm. math, physics, engineering, all in the labs at night, burning up circuits and shit. <laughs> 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 I left the magic smoke out. Fuck. Um, but, yeah. and, oh and, my so, friend Brian says that all the time. Yeah. Magic smoke. You yeah. just can't let the magic smoke yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> and so, oh, so basically, like, you know, I'm doing all that stuff because I had to. There's a push, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, for my sense of artistic creation, I really love this stuff. I love it. I want people to make it. My, my Nomi, my wife, has a talent for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yuki, my daughter, has a talent for it. I want to encourage them to engage in it and enjoy it. I don't have that talent for the hands-on stuff. Mm-hmm. In my family, and I think what I have, what I have not developed enough, what I have, let, what I have neglected... Mm-hmm. is the ability to write. No, mm-hmm. I don't have the ability of my sister. She is published throughout a great many countries. Mm-hmm. You know, multiple books. You know, she's really made it in that sense. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, I think her, like, Chloe Doe was her breakout book, and then she had Burn, and she got really popular in Italy. Mm-hmm. And so, multiple publishing, right? I can't equal that. I'm not mm-hmm. Susie, Suzanne, I call her Susie. It's a complicated relationship because she was like my surrogate mother. Everybody else calls her Suzanne. I call her Susie. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't talked to her in years now because she went into a fucking religious cult. Anyways, all right, so... Um, <laughs> putting that baggage aside. Yeah, saying. putting that baggage aside for a minute. Like, um, I tried, by the way. I, I didn't neglect her. She pushed sure. me out. But anyway... This is often the case with those people. Yeah, anyway. and, and yeah. so it's like it's fucking tragic because she didn't get treated well either, in my view. But okay, anyway, all right, so going to, like, what, what I'm looking at... If I'm going to be honest with myself, I don't have my sister's talent. I'm not going to get published around the world. But that doesn't mean I shouldn't write. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a talent in me. When I was in school, I was good at the math and science, but I also got really good grades on essays. Mm -hmm. I was good at writing. Mm -hmm. You know, I should probably do more of it. People always say I had good voice, which necessarily wasn't. I spelt everything right or used proper syntax, but... Boy, did it sound like a speech. Like oh, I was that's reading great. someone talking to me. It's like, oh, good. I mean, kind of lend myself to when I went into politics. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Like, I didn't really write that way. That's an excellent thing to, like, to write good speeches. I don't think I would be a great speech writer. However, just creative writing and having fun mm-hmm. and just kind of leading through stories, I think, especially with a sense of humor and irony yeah. and dark comedy and stuff like that, <laughs> I, I throw that in there really well. Mm-hmm. You know, or at least it did. I probably would suck now, but I don't know. Maybe I should unearth that talent. You know what I mean? Like, because it's... I think it's still hidden within me. Well, you had mentioned at one point, like, your wife wanted, like, just, like, story ideas and, like, basic <laughs> outlines to then illustrate and, yeah. like, manga I, out. I just like, gave her... It would be a good opportunity to, like, flex that muscle in yourself. Yeah, I just started to. Um, maybe she do some more writing, but I actually just gave her something recently to give her some ideas, seed ideas, and I don't mm-hmm. know where it's going to go, but one of them I gave, because it's all, like, souls kinds of experiences, mm-hmm. and fun, ones that are funny to me, like, I set up, like, a complex, multi-level thing with traps and enemies and shit, and the first time I go, I'm very careful, <laughs> ow, right in the head, you know, jump down, everything's carefully calculated, and then I get to the bottom, I'm alive. Mm-hmm. Later, I come up, and this same kind of traps, but I'm not thinking, mm, <laughs> dead. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> I've been here before. And, oh, uh, yeah, and then the enemy just dis- enemy just disgraces me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. it's the not thinking that'll get you killed. Yep. You know, <laughs> very much <laughs> that kind, that kind of yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's the oh, it's it's no problem. I got it covered. Oh, you're dead as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> cockiness is your worst enemy. Yeah, really, <laughs> yeah. really is. Yeah. Uh, but it, so it's fun deaths and stuff like that, like plans that go awry, and I'm giving her kind of like physical comedy stuff. I'm starting just a few seed ideas, but I don't know mm. if she'll do anything. And I'm, you know, I could do some writing with it. But honestly, the thing to do, and it's kind of why I'm even here. I'm just doing it for fun. Because yeah. <laughs> it's I haven't flexed that muscle in a very long time. Mm. You know, well, it's just interesting, too, that similarly, like, because I did the trying to stream thing, and until I really experientially understood the grind associated with it, and it was like, oh, this is, I'm not at a point in my life where I can do that. <laughs> well, and I'm not necessarily trying to do that now, but um, this is, like, a fun kind of, like, we hang out and gush about this stuff anyway. Yeah. So why not make a content? Absolutely. I love the attitude, like, a lot of the guys from Trash Days have mentioned, just like, oh... I just make my life content and people love it. And yeah. I was going to do it anyway because it's my life. I'm just living my life. I was like, say, yeah, yeah, cool. It would, like, I want to do the sweet, 
like long form breakdowns and analysis of like Monica Magica explained that like right, right, right. It, it just the filming of the raw footage was over three hours mm -hmm. and then it got edited down to just under an hour which that process took many more than three hours yeah, to do yeah, yeah. and then just to write it took many more than three hours to create Whew. so there was a lot of effort into that and I actually enjoyed doing that quite a bit but you can understand with the hour dedication to that it takes a while to do so yeah. like I want to do something like that for Maji Record and I actually have the script I've shown it on stream previously um, a rough version of the script I want to go back and actually fully script it out yeah, those are kind okay. of like episode ideas oh I think like, it's a great one there's a lot of good material there Oh, there's like a deep character development of people and it's like, such a yeah. fun romp through it because like that explained video it's like I'm almost just like doing without actually doing a let's watch Mm -hmm. Because there's c copyright restrictions. Oh right. I'm basically yeah. just doing a like essay version of that. Like, this is what's happening, and this is why it's cool. And yeah. like, on a multiple, like having seen the series multiple times with Monica Magica, like, note for the future how much you're gonna appreciate how they said this. Yeah, in this context. yeah. Like, I'm like saying, being able to point that out is just so fun. <laughs> yeah, and for you, like you've really done your homework for this stuff. Yeah. And I'm like the guy stumbling in my first try. You know what I mean? Like I've only watched it once, and it's like I, and I try to take it all in, but of course I'm not going to get it perfect. You know what I mean? You know yeah. that you know the universe around it when it comes to Arcane, and also you like I I really like uh, the whole Monica Magica thing, mm -hmm. but you are another level with it, right? Well, you I'm know? super deep. <laughs> yeah, you're super deep. <laughs> I've watched it way There's, too many times. <laughs> that, but honestly, if you're going to pick a super deep one, that's an awesome one to go super deep. On. Yeah, you know, that's, a, a, that's a deep one, man. It's like, yeah, I like it. Uh, well, one of the ways I got really into anime is just through internet culture and how much people had, like, in that similar vein. Like, they'd watch stuff a lot of times over, and, like, they made these cool analysis videos of, like, it, it came from the perspective of the era of on YouTube, let's do reviews and ratings of, like, our favorite anime and try to assign, like, this point value on a scale of, like, 1 to 10, like, how much do we like this, and here's why, and I'm explaining to you why. Without necessarily doing spoilers, some people did, some did it. Mm. Or they would have breaks in the video where there's spoiler sections and aren't. But whatever the format they chose, like, it was basically, like, them just gushing about a show mm -hmm. and why they really liked it, or, like, yeah. taking the piss out of a show that was really popular, like, yeah. famously, did you, bro, did the whole series on yeah. <laughs> Sword oh, Art man. Online. So much as, salt. As somebody who really <laughs> enjoyed the romp of Sword Art I Online. I did! Like... He's super right. That show is like so fucking trashy in so I, well, many ways. That's the thing about me too. Like that's that's why I only like like you pick some excellent topics and and wonderfully deep, gorgeous animated stuff. Like mm. I love the topics are fantastic. I'm so glad you liked Arcane yeah. too. By the way, oh, it God, was a yeah. real roll of the dice. I've tried oh, to introduce man. Arcane to some people who've mm. loved anime and mm. it just didn't like grab them. And it's like, damn, it's, it's that's too bad. It's gorgeous. <laughs> I just appreciate like how I put this like. Even before I dived into the, the cultural experience of artistic expression in Japan, mm -hmm. uh, like it's funny because I was at Nerd Station in Germany where a lot of soldiers like they start shit and they get drunk every night. And, you yeah. know, it's a lot of alcoholism. Um, I did drink, but you know, I even got trashed a few times. Sure, I admit mm -hmm. that. I went on a four day jag in Munich once. God, I bla I was like kind of thing where I was drinking constantly and blacking out. <laughs> <laughs> but usually I didn't do that. Usually I, I'd be like, okay. Um, free for a few days. I got three days or something like that. Or I'd go to the train station and decide on the spot. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could take this train to Paris and wake up for croissants. Yeah. Done. You know, yeah. eight, eight hours, right? Europe is very cool in that way. Yeah, <laughs> it's so cool. You can just so easily get to other cultures and other, other experiences. So I'm like going through the Louvre and loving it. Mm -hmm. You know, and just really like the Dorsey is an excellent portrait museum. So I love all these different forms of artistic expression. Mm -hmm. So for me, at least, if you find something grand like this, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry. I mean, like, I can't promise you I'm going to enjoy and love everything, but mm -hmm. I really do give a deeper chance. Like, when I finally had the chance to take my family to Europe, I, I mean, for my for Nomi, to make it, like, she really loved the Rhine River and all the castles, so I made it, you know, she loves checking out castles, right? Mm -hmm. Like European style ones. And so we made a big thing of that, but we also went to some museums, saw a lot of art, you know, mm -hmm. Amsterdam has a reputation for all that, but it's got some good museums too, mm -hmm. you know, so it really does. Uh, but what I guess I'm getting at is I appreciate all these different forms of artistic expression, and you showed me something absolutely excellent from Western. It, it was a yeah. French, a French studio? Yes, it's a, Man. Fortiche is the name of the studio. It's a French animation studio, and obviously the entire world is a complete original creation of Riot, which is based out of California. Okay. It's a 
They they came originally as uh, half of the dev team that went off to make make Dota two. Mm. They went to make League of Legends instead, and Dota is like a mod to World of, or not World of Warcraft, but Warcraft specifically. I think Warcraft two or Warcraft three. I think it was two. I might be getting that wrong. Sorry, fanatics. Um, <laughs> who have the time to Google it while I'm doing it live? Whatever. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, so it's purely kind of an American gaming like world that's been built, mm -hmm. and it, they've used a French animation studio to help bring it to life. Yeah. So it's a, truly a Western take. Yeah, and it's Franco-American is what I'm thinking at this point. It's yeah, kind of, that's kind of a fair analysis. Yeah, it's like American at its roots in its development, but the French expressed it through their own artistic direction, yes. in a sense. You know what I mean? So Very I much so. But you know, the, the thing of it is, too, when it comes to so many, many different things, I love the fusion. You know, some of my favorite food yeah, is in really? Japan. Some of my favorite food is what they when they take Western food and remake it for their own palate. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that stuff. Yeah. You know, I love my favorite food probably on earth is Japanese curry. I love mm -hmm. Japanese curry. Yeah. To the I mean, like my, that'd be my final meal on death row be Japanese curry. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> Fukujinsuke, like the pickled. I like that too. But anyways, what I'm getting at is, uh, it's really a fusion. Yeah. You know, because the curry was brought from overseas to Japan. They kind of remade it for their own palate. They made like a curry stew. Mm -hmm. And it's really good. I really like that. But, but but there's other foods like that. There's art like that. Mm -hmm. And I guess we got the joy of a great combination of the expression of both an American and the French studio to make something truly gorgeous. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a fusion. Well, there's, like it, you know? there's a... I'm a sucker for covers, right? In, in terms of music. And it's like... It's one thing when you have Motorhead doing Breaking the Law by Judas Priest. It was cool to see him do it in their style, but it's like, it's a different thing when you see, like, I mean, there there are just instances of covers where you have, like, acapella, acapella bands doing, like, covers of rock songs, mm -hmm. or, like, rap songs, or, like, songs from a different genre. But then also there are just these, like, weird like, crossover genre of bands. Like, the, the classic example that actually takes the term crossover is, like, the crossover between punk rock and metal. Oh, like right, okay. crossover punk or crossover mm -hmm. metal are terms used interchangeably for bands that kind of are, like, on that borderline. Um, I mean, I could list off a number of examples, but I think one that's a much more stark and modern example than that uh, is baby metal. Like, oh, like yeah, okay, yeah. J-pop and metal like, <laughs> crossover, like, what the fuck? Yeah. So, it's so interesting and cool, and yeah. it's like, there's tons of, like, weird bands that have, like, crossed these, like, forbidden cultural fusions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's and like, I really why like, would metal and pop ever like, collide? Well, because of J-pop. Yeah, I was like, gonna say, why not? It's I kawaii know, metal. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know if you've ever seen a band called Wagaki or not. Or yes, I love Wagaki. Oh, like, yeah, isn't uh, it awesome? It's like this great fusion of, like, rock. They're definitely rock. one of my favorite bands. <laughs> yeah, my, my wife Nomi showed them to me, you know? I'm like, no, Zenbong Sakura, it's just such a yeah. badass song, and it's such a great I reverse discovered <laughs> them through uh, Miku, with the uh, vocalized version of that particular song. Oh, okay. I was like, huh. Like, just, and not even on that song, but just on a different song, uh, I had seen, like, the original version that they had done, and I was like, oh, I wonder how many of my favorite, like, Vocaloid songs come from original songs. And then I stumbled upon Wagaki that way, and I was like, holy fuck, this band's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. The visuals are great, too, and I'll be honest about it, like, that lead singer woman, yes. ooh, she is fucking hot. Yes. Yeah. I mean, like, like, I'm I'm not single, but oh, I would get I would get turned down so hard. You know? Oh yeah. Me I would too. get just dusted. Be like, yeah. <laughs> there's uh, there there's one thing like the uh, band who does the Mirai Nikki opening is a killer band similar in the vein of Wolgaki, but um, also just that uh, one bands that incorporate lots of different instruments like. Um, Dire Straits uh, does that song, uh, uh, Sultans of Swing. Okay. Where there's, they have a line where there's like, uh, they're just going through talking about the different members of their band and kind of their take on their experience in mm -hmm. it, which is really kind of cool to lyrically incorporate that into a song. But they're like, I, I forget the exact lyrics, somebody, you could look it up, but they're like, and then there's Joe on the bass or drums. He doesn't really care if he makes a scene. He's doing all right. He's got his own job. <laughs> and, and, uh, then they go on to talk about like their fans and they're like uh, there's like I forget they, again they make up a name 
he doesn't care about any trumpet playing band. And of course they have like a trumpet go on or something yeah, like this. And it's like, I love bands that incorporate this brass. Like ska is all about that. Like rock, uh -huh. but with brass. Like right. what would that be like? It's a cool genre. And um, uh, one of the things I like about Wagaki is they incorporate these interesting uh, instruments. That That's what I was going to talk about, right? Here. Yeah. Yeah. But there's that like, traditional Japanese yeah, string instrument. Yeah, like, koto with 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 a rock. You yes. know, so awesome. <laughs> the um, uh, uh, I'm going to butcher the name, but Yoshida Brothers. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar with them, I don't know them, but I probably should. If you're talking about them, you should. <laughs> I'll, I'll get on them if mm -hmm. you're on the stream or on YouTube. Uh, but we'll play it for you after uh, oh, we right, turn right. off the stream. I think you'll uh, really appreciate them. It's uh, two brothers who both of them uh, mm -hmm. use those instruments. Mm -hmm. And they kind of like ebb and flow back into each other. But then they have other uh, more orchestral instruments around oh, them. Oh man, I really like that. It's really yeah. cool. I think like, you're going to love that. <laughs> like, it's funny because I've listened to just Koto performances before where it's mm -hmm. just a solitary... Very... It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's good. But the way they're... They're like a rock in that. Yeah! Blending it with rock is so awesome. I love yeah. that mix. You know, you can't, I get that. And I guess that's got its own... It's almost got its own genre, I guess, mm -hmm. right? It, it sounds like Yoshida Brothers are doing it hard. So, yeah, yes. okay. Please, sh after the show... Please check them out. Yeah, I yeah. haven't heard of them. Cool. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, okay, so to bring this back to Arcane, so I wanted to do uh, two thoughts on that. So, um, one is the final scene. I think we just got to take time going through the scene where Jean, Jinx, like, decides to be Jinx and yeah. has this mental breakdown and... Okay, running through a couple elements <laughs> because I'm trying to skip them over and I can't. So one, there's this moment where Jinx overpowers Caitlyn and yeah. is in the driver's seat once again. Yeah. And both Vi and Silco start calling out to her and <clears throat> Vi is like, think, think of our friends, think of Vander, Picture mom and dad, and J it, it's unknowingly to Jinx, triggering Jinx. Yeah. Like when, unfortunately for Vi, <clears throat> she is. But it's we see it visually represented through her psychosis in these like scratched. Yeah, artistry, the, like the, the representations about. in their like in her head, really, that you're seeing all around. It's her. doing more damage <clears throat> than good, and also yeah. I actually it again, really is somebody not that they need my <laughs> help to shut them out. But there's a killer YouTuber. Um, who does, uh, she's a therapist by trade, oh, and okay. she, uh, Georgia Doe, I'm gonna pull her up, let me switch all over to this, she does tons of stuff, she did a huge thing about Jing, like a bunch of different arcane, uh, characters, a deep dive analysis into them, oh, um, man, awesome. and she does cool cosplays of whoever the focus of her oh, character I, is. I gotta get this down, because I didn't even know about this. She does it. lots more than just arcane, though she's done, let's do a quick jump to her page, she does Georgia tons of Doe. different... Or Dao. So Dao. she's done Vox Machina recently, which is a cool series that mm -hmm. I've gone through. My friend Jordan actually turned me on to that. She did The Last of Us recently. Um, Wednesday, which is cool. Uh, Attack on Titan. So she's cyberpunk. She's done a lot of different things from the oh, perspective. Oh, she did Machima there with the art of seduction. <laughs> Machima yes. scares the shit out of me, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like I can't imagine if I was in a really like like she's supposed to be attractive, I guess, but I would never yes. do it because I'd be scared shitless. <laughs> <laughs> because it'd be like, we'd have a spat, like, oh, you're just going to leave your shit everywhere and leave, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you'll leave your shit everywhere, all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, God, I'm, Chainsaw I'm, Man's so good. I'm become, I'm gonna become a pet pretty quickly. <laughs> like that, she treats Denji. So, please no. <laughs> but, uh, you she, she was the one who pointed out the uh, mm. moment of, of like how it's triggering her trauma in that moment. And as Vi is calling out to her, she's actually like doing more harm than good. Yeah, you know, it's damaging Jinx by bringing this all up in this moment of pandemic where she really needs calm. Yeah, you know what's interesting? This is coming back to my time as a firefighter, right? We were taught, like in times like that, like if somebody, if you're, like say somebody's trapped, you're trying to get them out, and you know, to help calm them down, think about the people you love, you know, and like mm. calming kinds of things to help, you know, so they don't panic, you know, as we're trying to get through and help them. So usually doing that, I mean, 
could be more helpful. Like if they're alive, it's like don't yeah. worry, we're gonna get you out. We're here to help you. Just think you're gonna be with your mommy soon. Who's dead? Oops. Oh shit! Right. <laughs> we just I watched Good Burger. Yeah, alive. and I think, oh, that, dear. <laughs> I think that changes everything, doesn't it? Yeah. You know I mean, like I don't want you to be thinking about the trauma of the dead people. You know, like and what could Vi do? Because all the people except for her and Silco at that time that were connected. Yeah. Her and Silco were the only two connected. So really, Vi, I, don't, I think she was trying to do the right thing, but she fucked up because she did something that you would normally do, but you shouldn't do in her case. Really, what I would say in Vi's position, this is me. Mm. What I would be saying in that position would be something like. We, we are sisters, and we can make our life together. Yeah. You know? Well, that was kind of the core of what she was trying to offer, James. Like, we yeah. can leave right now and yeah. never look back. Like, she was trying to go that line, but I think that moment, one, it's a beautiful thing in how it represents how damaged Jinx is and the trauma Jinx has gone through, but also yeah. Yeah. it kind of emphasizes how estranged she's become from Vi. Because Vi has been gone for all these years, and she, if she hadn't, would know not to say those things to Jinx. Yeah. But she truly hasn't seen how much Jinx has lost herself to this psychosis. And it's one thing to say it's been amplified because of the shimmer, mm -hmm. but yeah. like, still, even so, like people who are who have never known what Jinx was as powder, like Caitlyn, can really easily recognize it in Jinx. But Vi is kind of clouded from her memories of powder mm -hmm. when she kind of was fully under control. Like, Vi has never seen Jinx out of control mentally until this most recent run through the lanes, and she's seen it in a very limited capacity. Most of the time she's been gone, like she turned her back on Jinx and like she had this fight with Echo. Like she didn't get to see this moment where Jinx was like, no, nope, blowing myself up, I'm gone, I've made the choice to be gone. Like Echo saw that in Jinx, but I wasn't there to see that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in that, a lot of tragic truth in that. Yeah. And I do think she was offering that, but it was just a tactical mistake to bring up the dead. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but but, it, but it, the thing is, like, in a lot of cases, that will be a good thing, you know? Yeah. And I, I guess you're, I think that's right. She did have herself, like, on offer, and I think that's all in the end, other than that tactical kind of blunder. But, yeah. like, offering a life with her, like she did, is kind of all she could do. But I think it was also just you know, Powder realized that she is now Jinx. Yeah. Truly. And that she has changed. She even said it. You know, it's like, you've well, changed. Well, she didn't really full, fully, I think, embrace that because at the <clears throat> at the start of the tea party. Yeah. She, <laughs> she was, it was a fork in the road. A very right? funny yeah. name for that incident. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, she, uh... Hell of a tea party. <laughs> she, I think it was her, her kind of last throw of denial where uh, she was okay, like, yeah. if you make Caitlyn go away, we can be together. You can have Powder back. And I think kind of that, I, if I'm remembering that, that was before Vi sort of stayed, stated that and tried to reassure her that they could still go away together. But I think that was kind of her recognizing that, like, Caitlin's become this important person in your life. So I don't really believe that we can go off and you can just walk away from her. Like, you're going to want her to be in your life, but, like, Caitlin represents someone who will recognize in me that I am too far gone and I can't be this normal person anymore. You could forgive me. You could give me a chance and work through these problems. Caitlin would be quick to think I can't be repaired and there's no salvaging me. Yeah. So you need to choose me over that. And like the way I'm making you do this is a way you can't say yes to, unfortunately. But like that'd be this cold blooded murder at that point, right? Right. But that's what she she wanted Vi to choose her over that. And I feel like Unfortunately for Jinx and giving her this false choice in where she can't this impossible choice for Vi. Yeah. She can't choose to kill Caitlyn. No, that's not who that, Vi is. Yeah, her but that, center would never allow it. That made Jinx feel like she wasn't being chosen. And that gave fuel to the things that Silco was saying of like she's not she's gonna realize that's not you in a day. It's oh, like, no, yeah, that would be yeah. Caitlyn. Yes. Vi would stick with you. That's what I think. Yeah, that's I. That, I really think so. I think Vi would stick with like you know when I I, I see Vi as a character that would stick with her. And mm. if, if Jinx was going off the rails, it'd be like tackling her to the ground. Like no, we're not doing yeah. this. You know, like I, I'm not going to kill you or anything. It's yeah. like a, I'm sure as hell going to fight to stop you and you know help and help you. You know, well, what you mean? see like, that in the moment like, where like, after they're first reunited when she lit the torch mm -hmm. and like. Jinx is just fucking unloading that machine gun at the firefly uh, oh, firelights. Yeah. Vi is like, what the fuck, Powder? Dude, you, <laughs> you're gonna kill them. Yeah. Like, Vi's just trying to, like, knock them out. Like, typical Western cartoon, I'm gonna knock you out and that will be the end of the problem. Yeah. Which is why she, you know, 
she doesn't actually kill uh, Silco, who's probably going to be her su- the successor for Silco. Mm-hmm. Like, she, at the most, maimed her mechanical arm. Yeah. Like, she never really finished her off. Yeah. And it's like, this is what happens. Jinx finished off her problems. Yeah. I would say with Vi, I'm not saying she could never kill someone, but I don't think it could be intentional. You know what I mean? Like, yes. It, 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 it would be like the way Jace killed that yeah, child. Exactly. Like, it would be a mishap. Yeah, it would be a mishap. Or it somebody be... who's far gone in those chem monsters. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, like, it would be a tragedy for, you know, it would be something that she wouldn't want to have to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, or uh, if it happened, like, tragedy, like with Jace, you know, that kind of thing. But you get the idea. So it's kind of. It's just not in her moral center to actually kill Caitlyn or anyone like that, really. Yeah. Even if it was somebody that she didn't like. Yeah. You know, if, like it was Silco or something, or, or it was the woman that she fought with under Silco. I think she's And when she kills Silco, it's exactly like you're saying. It's this tragic oh, moment right. yeah, yeah, where yeah, yeah. it's like, I didn't mean to. Like, she's immediately in tears, like, mm. please, no, I'm sorry. And then Silco to have the forethought. I, to. Upon rewatching, this gets me every time. God, man. <laughs> the, the point where he says, uh, "I would have never given them to you," he said. He said that before. Yeah, he said you're perfect. And then he you said know? the "you're yeah. perfect" line before yeah. too, and it's just like to have it. Like I, I guess it wasn't necessarily foreshadowing, but to have those callbacks, like, yeah. oh, they just mean so much more. <laughs> yeah. Hearing them, it's an interesting thing because although Silco did monstrous shit. He definitely had a heart. Like, when he loved somebody, he really was truly, deeply dedicated and loyal. The monster with the heart of gold. Kind of, yeah. yeah, You know what I mean? Like, and it kind of makes me wonder, if you were more into Silco's world, and I can't say for sure, right, but I think it felt like the intent that he had was to fight for the lanes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to get into a position where we have power. Yeah. And we can decide our own fate. You know, it's like, I think that was his objective. And considering the historical treatment the conditions, I think, will make people, maybe not exactly like that, but people analogous to that, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, because it makes me think of people that have been oppressed, yeah. and how much fighting back actually happens, and how determined that can be. Well, it's like the retrospective on this country, one <laughs> man's freedom fighter is another man's, you know, terrorist of or, a nation. Yeah, or whatever or, else. Yeah, yeah, excuse exactly. me. One yeah, man's terrorist is yeah. another man's freedom fighter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, it's you like, can't found oh, a nation are, without are, rebelling are, against the legitimate right. yeah. power. Are you not sure? Just call them gorillas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And so it's like, I mean, and, and, you know, like, it makes me think of the Troubles in Ireland, you know, yes. where it's like, get... Brown and tan, the fuck out yeah. of here. You know what I mean? It's like we're gonna put bullets in your back when you're rounding a corner. You know, it's like when when I've played uh, games like Civ and played as uh, an Irish faction, it, there's a, a cool song, uh, and I forget forget the name of the band, but uh, it's called uh, Black and Tans. No. And the chorus of it's like. Oh, come out, ye black and tans. Come out and fight me like a man. And it's got this great Irish accent throughout. Oh, it's so good. It's like, talk shit about, like, how they would go, like, they're, they they would come back, uh, uh, obviously, after these world wars, and or, like, uh, imperial wars, where they would come back and ha- be, like, these venerated soldiers who conquered these, you know, wild tribal people in Africa or, <laughs> yeah, like, whatever, fought off yeah. Italian or whatever. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'm sure how how f- fearful they were of you with your 16-pounded gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, Mr. Warrior, yes. Yeah. Definitely not that gun you carried. Like, <laughs> it was even sarcasm, super good. Yeah, and I, I, mean, I don't fucking blame them. So it's, like, one of the interesting things I've seen in some... I don't know how common it is, because I don't know enough about Irish politics, but I've seen Mm. passionate defenses of certain Irish politicians when they're speaking about people being oppressed, like in Palestine or something like that. It's like, they're like, they're, they're, they mean it, you know, it's like, they, they, I guess they feel it because they were there and they're like, you know, no, no, no. They have that cultural memory. Yeah. 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 So it kind of, I like that they have that desire to stick up for people that need it. Yeah. You know, that's a pretty cool thing. They care about the oppressed. (laughs) Oftentimes when you hear, it wasn't so long ago that we have, the we went through that, it has an Irish accent. (laughs) (laughs) So I I have sympathy for that, I really do, you know, and so it's kind of, but yeah, coming back to Silco, it's like things are bad Mm -hmm. enough, you can almost guarantee you're going to have people that that are going to make determined attempts to improve things, and probably in that kind of situation, it's going to be the most combination of people that quite frankly are intelligent enough, determined and tough enough. 
and focused enough and kind of have a certain just ruthlessness to them. They're likely to rise to the top. And that's the word I was thinking of, too, was ruthless. You know? yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like you're going to have to be, like, you can't be half-assed in any of this. you got to do what <laughs> it takes, otherwise it's not going to succeed. Yeah, exactly. And you'll probably wind up with you being a dead body somewhere, too. Yeah. So it's like you got to Breaking be, a few eggs. Yeah, it's like you got to understand that probably in that process there are going to be a number of people like Silco that fuck up and die. You yeah, know? and then then there'll be like one of the. It's not. I'm not gonna say it's a meritocracy because there's a lot of luck involved too, right? But yeah. there's gonna be some kind of competition for power there, and eventually you're gonna get your your mafia done. You know, yeah. that kind of shit. It's because just I don't know. I mean, I see a lot of these things as, as materially determined, yeah. maybe even over determined at times, where it's kind of like all these forces are coming together, and you almost kind of just anticipate this, and like reacting with force and, and enforcers. And, you know, breaking people's jaws is such a very common approach, yeah. which never does a long-term fix. You can oppress people in the immediate sense. You can force them with power to physically do things, but to actually resolve that yeah. doesn't. It only it sets. It's like you're throwing fuel on the fire ultimately. Well, yeah. this is the other conversation I wanted to have about the classic meme of Silco did nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I obviously don't. I think anybody really feels that Silco did nothing wrong, but it's like. I wonder how much you could say with that kind of perspective on the situation with what's happened in Zon and, and Zon trying to establish itself as a nation unto itself, how much is Silco a, an unavoidable or necessary evil? Mm. And like with the components of what he's doing being that necessary unavoidable evil, how much of the rest of it that was up to his choice and his autonomy did he go out of his way to do good? Like, he really tried to take care of people. He really tried to avoid conflict. He really tried to establish a, f a, f a presence within the enforcers to try to avoid conflict when yes. possible and find this way to establish Zon peacefully. It's kind of interesting, because that the, in the initial split, Vander was more towards the side of peace, and, yes. you know, but eventually Silco kind of did, you know, more or less go out, because it kind of have to, if yeah. you're going to rule, I mean, you can't rule with constant warfare. I mean, you could do that. <laughs> you can, and it's called Noxus. Yeah, it's called Noxus, <laughs> right? And, I mean, you don't want to make that. Like, yeah. it's, it's hell on earth. But, so, and also, you might not survive that long, even if yeah. you're really good, you know, it's just going to keep on, you know, going, going That's why Noxus. everyone in Noxus who's noteworthy, has scars. Yeah. Large scars. Yeah. Ob <laughs> obnoxious. Okay. Uh, so it's, <laughs> yeah. I think of it as. But, that's a really, uh, I actually yeah. haven't really ever heard anyone make that pun. That's a good one. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what do you do when you meet somebody? Punch them in the face. Fucking obnoxious. Yeah. Anyways, though, but I would say, uh, with the thing about Silco mm -hmm. is that in all honesty, like... Uh, like, I live my life peacefully. I'm given wonderful choices, mm -hmm. you know, to do that. Yeah. So I do it, right? Yeah. I've in, I'm incentivized to do that, and that's fine. I'm not living underneath the heel of anybody. Now, if I were, and I've, I've, I've some of it's just reading it, some of it's been talking to people that have lived through these experiences, you know. God, I talked to a, a survivor of the Hiroshima bombing. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's a story I'm trying to... In, un, unto itself, right? He's a very, literally a story that we build museums to try yeah. to capture. Yeah, yeah. and I, I mean, I talked to this man. He's absolutely to the core dedicated to bringing peace on Earth yeah. and to avoid anything like Hiroshima ever happening again. Yeah. There's no revenge there. There's just like we yeah. have to stop this. So it's, it's a very noble thing. But what I'm actually I'm getting at here, though, is when I when I look at how bad things are and what Silco has done, mm -hmm. I have to be honest with myself. I I look at the real Martin Luther King Jr., the one people hated. Yeah. The anti-war, anti-poverty. Yeah. You know, bring wanting to bring people, a million people, in his own words, from the black people from the ghetto, the Hispanic people from the barrio, the, the Native Americans from the reservations, and the poor white people from Appalachia. Yeah. He wanted to bring a, an army of them to, to the capital and, yeah. and, and, and engage in continuous non-stop events of civil disobedience until they passed an economic bill of rights for all of us. Yeah. So I love that man. He was probably that. in large part why the second bill of rights was even floated around as an idea even mm -hmm. though it never yeah. came to be. Like, yeah. He was a big part of that. Yeah, and I mean I think that's part of what got him killed. You know, but likely. I mean that's but in any event, that's just my opinion. Very likely. <laughs> but, you know, but well, that's what he was organizing. You yeah. know, when when he was assassinated. But yeah. you know, but you know what I'm getting at though actually is um, that. There's his way of doing things, and I love and respect him. Mm -hmm. 
but I have to look at my honest heart of hearts on things. And I make all these nice soft cupcake level decisions now because I can, right? right? And I know I'm a very soft person for it. Yeah. I've lived here in a very domesticated way for many years, and I am a very, very, very soft marshmallow. I'm just being honest about that. <laughs> but I wasn't always that. Mm -hmm. And if I look at that part of my life and how little opportunity can really be, if I was really crushed into that position underfoot, I just have to be honest, I'm more of a Soko person. Yeah. I'm more of a Malcolm X person, by any means necessary. Yeah. You know, because look what's done to them. Can you tell me it's not an act of violence to keep people underfoot and yeah. desperate and next to death and condemned, you know, like that? To me, that's a deep act of violence. It's yes. just a different weapon. That's all yeah. it is. It's like, it's, I complain about this to my wife. If I kill somebody with a gun, it's murder. If I kill somebody with a knife, it's murder. If I kill somebody with a corporation, it's just business. Yeah. You know? And I mean, that's kind of what happens, right? And I it's, a sad, it's a sadness that our society has that happen. Yeah, every, oh, all the time to catch my joke. Yeah, yeah. kind of. And honestly, like, being in the position I am, I know I'm protected more, right? But that doesn't mean I'm agreeing with this at its heart. I think yeah. we can do better. And I don't want them to, there to be... There, we don't need to have an underclass. It's not a necessity. The way our society is built, we have one, yes. Yeah. But I think we're really getting to a point of technological advancement where we have an abundance of so many things, yeah. including food, and we could build so much more shelter. Yeah. There's... We don't have to organize the way we are. We are. We can. We've gotten better. Well, we're brute forcing our technological advancements so much yeah. that we're nearing a point where it's no longer even like. To create a state of abundance where everybody has enough, we don't even have to sacrifice the baseline anymore. Like, we just almost have true abundance of what the average experience is. Yeah, we pay farmers to stop farming. So we don't yeah. so we can get the market set up a certain way, yeah. right? So they can the, sell it for enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, and it's not. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against the farmers here at all. They're in a bad yeah. position. I, I oh, they have had a hard time. <laughs> they have had a hard time. You know, it's like that's the thing too. Is like I know I'm Mr. Like urban guy. I really am a city guy. I admit that. But yeah. it's something I've tried to, and I'm gonna have to explain this again to my daughter. She likes toast, right? Mm -hmm. That's fine. It's like I want her to understand that a lot of the people did work to create this delicious toast with butter or whatever you're going to have and how yeah. you can appreciate that. I want her, as she's growing older, I want her to understand that. And the hands of many farmers went into this, yeah. you know, and it's like, I appreciate it. It's not just the Franz owned yeah. machine. Yeah. And it's There's like, a I, lot of farmers who touch the wheat. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, um, my, my real feelings on this, <laughs> it's like, I know if I'm from a different culture. I know I live differently, and that's fine. But I want to support those farmers, and I appreciate the fact that they feed my family. Yeah. You know, they, they deserve to have a dignified life. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And instead, they're, it's a massive corporate overhaul where they're being controlled and abused and pushed around. Yeah. I fucking hate it. You know, I'm sorry, but it's like, I hate it because, like, they're, they're providing this wonderful service to us. Don't they deserve the dignity of a decent life? No, you don't even deserve that <laughs> dignity. You got that by mistake. We're yeah. trying to rob you of that dignity back. I kind of feel, I, I, yeah, I feel like, that's kind of, honestly, uh, that's really what I feel like. I know I'm going all off track here, and I'll, I'll finish no, my, my train of thought, but it's just like, what I have is nothing amazing, right? Yeah. Uh, I have a decent enough house. I have a car that runs fine. You know, I, I have a nice vacation once a year, yeah. right? I just feel like everybody should have that. I don't yeah. think that's asking too much. Yeah. You know? I mean, there was a time when, admittedly, America was a lot less equal than it is now. But yeah. uh, there was a time when that was kind of a more expected standard American experience. Yeah. And, like, to get there, we had to bomb the rest of the world into economic shambles. But <laughs> it, it, there was a time yeah. when it was truly thought of as, like, a standard thing you could expect. Right. And it's just not now. Like, yeah. you have to... It's expected that both uh, members of a household will work, that you have two members, mm -hmm. and even then, you're not necessarily guaranteed that level of an experience. And it's like, yeah. mm, okay. Many times Interesting. not. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and like, like, a lot of the important work that's done in our society, the pay and treatment is shitty. Yeah, they're you know, undervalued for how necessary and valuable it actually really is for it, society. Yeah, like yeah. like all the moving freight stuff came to a head a few, like, a few months back or whatever. Right. It's like, hey, they're asking... They're making reasonable asks here it's like yeah. they want hey, the point that's like the injured, last you know? two or three things that are on the dividing yeah. line like those don't really seem like the biggest ask like the yeah. rest of it seems like it was kind of a more ask i understand it's on top of that but yeah and maybe just give them the cherry on top how much yeah. is the cherry compared to the sun yeah and just it's give like, them the cherry <laughs> yeah I, I kind of feel like that plus they do important work and it can be rough and yeah. you know i want them to have time like it's they, hazardous they this, work it's hazardous work so what if yeah. they get hurt or sick they need to be able to take that time 
and have enough people to replace them yeah. and have the staff and, 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 and keep it safe. That wasn't even part of it. Yeah. That intentional understaffing and stuff. Yeah, like the intentional yeah. understaffing is a, is a safety issue. And it's like that, that you want to fix that. We, well, one of the ways is to get more skilled and dedicated people on hand. Yeah. You know, maybe shorten the train some too. Make it an easier thing to, you know what I mean? Like, don't be so goddamn aggressive, you know? It's mm-hmm. like I'm looking at the, like, it's not. An unreasonable ask. You're talking like it's hazardous. We never have train accidents. In yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because it's like you, there's like been several derailments recently. The really yeah. bad one is in East Palestine, right? But it's like, yeah, I've even told Naomi about that. Like, there's a, we're not gonna ever live next to a railroad track for freight or anything like that because yeah. even if they don't crash, a lot of times, like they leave debris that's nasty, like yeah. radioactive coal and shit like that. Yeah. You know, it's just not a good place to be. You know, so it's it, sorry, but you know, it's like. Welcome to Civil War era breaks because it's cheaper, right? It's like fucking hell, man. It's like God. I mean, I guess they built it to last. So you give them that much credit, but fucking a. I'm just yeah, so yeah. So I mean, it's like I'm getting it back, but but I, I can jump back into arcane and just say that like the inequality is built into the society, and what we're getting at, or what I'm getting at, is like the getting at the roots of it is more of a path to mutual prosperity. Yeah. I think it's possible, but one of the one of the problems with this is if you get too much concentrated power, too much wealth and power and everything into a small number of hands, they don't want to give that up. Yeah. So that's well, a, you've that's seen a that. The, the people yeah. of Piltover didn't choose to help uh, Zon when they could have. Yes. Yeah. You know? And that breeds someone like Silco. And it's like, yeah, it's very easy to say, like, you know, I want to be the MLK or I want to be the Gandhi. But what is yeah. Gandhi without the Indian National Army? Yeah. Behind him. Yeah. You know? well, there's a like, lot of that. There's a lot of good cop, bad cop stuff going on. At the same time, I just have to be honest with, like, on a moral level, yeah. right? If people are being oppressed, what what is allowable on a moral level? Yeah. You know, and if, if they're being oppressed to the point where they're having to face injury, early death, and, yeah. and being truly, like, used as a means to an end, like a tool of broken and thrown away, yeah. like serfdom, you know? Yeah. If they're living through that, I think they are morally um, obliged to fight back violently. I don't know that I have the... Uh, Sorry, but that's, you know... Whether, I don't want it. Whether want or not it, I could recognize that the path of a Gandhi would be the morally best way to handle the situation, I don't know that I have the... Uh, it's, I don't know exactly how to say this, but, like, the moral endurance. Yeah. Like, the, the wherewithal to suffer through that struggle to... <clears throat> continually choose the moral high ground when I feel like a soldier in the Indian National Army would be the more effective route. And I have Even to... though it's not necessarily as moral of a path. If it could get us to the end quicker, I don't know that I could be that Gandhi. It's just, mm. it's very hard to choose that path every day. Well, I uh, can't, I already know I can't, because when I was in the position of being a soldier and also in the position of just being poor around the yeah. other parts of my life, I, I'm not proud of it, but I was very angry. Yeah, and it was the situation was making it really bad, and I was not a pleasant person in that regard. And I kind of feel sorry for my friends who stuck with me for that time. But I I can't be that. I can't be them. Okay, I know if I'm there and I'm living like that, I'm gonna be Malcolm X. Yeah. You know, I'm not that leader type, but I'll be following that person. I'd yeah. be, you know what I mean? Like, there's no way out. Right. You will follow Lelouch and not uh, yeah. Suzaku. Yeah, that's, that's that's really who I am. Just yeah. you know, always being honest because I think that's it's why I got the Lelouches and not the Suzakus. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like, <laughs> it's, so it's like yeah, the Lelouch or you know, uh, in this case, Pablo. Honestly, quite frankly, when Silco came to power, I think I would, might wind up with him. I would like to think I could wind up with Echo if I hooked up with him. You know what I mean? Maybe become yeah. a better person. Maybe I could follow that. I would like. To I, would hope. That. I would hope. I would hope I could find Echo. I could, yeah, <laughs> so much happens to chance. Happens to chance. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I mean, I'll never meet Echo, and then yeah, I mean, you know. I'm wrapped up in silk. So, you know, I don't want to fight back, you know. Yeah. The enforcers come, you know, they they punch my, you know, my like say Susie when you know she's more like my surrogate mother. They punch her in the face. I'm pissed. Yeah. You know, like nothing came of this. What I'm about to talk about, so I can talk about it a little bit freely. <laughs> but there was a guy when we were living rough that tried to bash Susie's head in with a metal pipe, mm-hmm. and she managed to get out of there. My brother and I went looking for him. Yeah. You know, like, the cops aren't going to do anything, but we fucking are. And look how easily we could have lost an engineer who's really trying to use green energy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... But, I mean, that's the thing. Like, Echo went through that. The but, shop but we, by the way, we never, we never found him. He fled. He left, yeah. like, completely. He knew we were, uh, were out for blood, you know. And so he, he fucking left. But the guy, who was, the, town. the guy <laughs> who was raising Echo was killed. Yeah. And it was like... 
Yeah. Uh, Echo found his way to, like, I don't know, a, at least a modicum of forgiveness and acknowledgement of the situation and trying to handle it better than what Silco is. But, like, what we're saying is we could easily wind up in Silco's faction, and then our encountering of Echo could be a negative one because Echo's group already views us as the enemy. Mm-hmm. And then our first exposure to them is not one where we could appreciate that we should go over to them because we're in an initial state of conflict and then we never can find our way over there. You know, like, you so it's so circumstantial. It, yeah. Exactly. It's so circumstantial. It's like there's so many uh, opportunities around you that you're going to be more that are going to be more visible. Yeah. And, you know, it's easy... To, it's easy to see Silco's faction. Yeah. And it's easy to take a, a, a broad view when you're not in it. Yeah. You know, and, I, yeah. and it's like, oh, you could go here, do there, and make, all, make it out of the maze, like, making all these good decisions. Maybe. Right. <laughs> but some of those decisions you have to make immediately. Right. You know, and this moment. shit happens, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, kind of like, imagine that I'm, you know, sitting somewhere, whatever, it's like I'm, I'm grabbing a bite to eat, and, you know, and then enforcers jump in, and they punch mm-hmm. somebody in the head that I, you know, like, and then Silco's men are fighting back, what am I going to do? Right. It's like, fucking ain't right, you know? Right. It's like, the enforcer's going to go to punch, I'm going to grab it, and then Silco's man's going to punch him, then I'm going to yeah. punch him in the fucking kidney. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like, and then we're in a fight, and, you know? Well, and that's, and that's assuming everyone's a logical actor in the moment. Sometimes yeah. you're freaking out, and you <laughs> yeah. see somebody at the table has a gun pointed at someone else, so yeah. you shoot the guy with the gun, and yeah. they're like, oh, fuck, I shot somebody. There's a lot of oh, fuck involved in life, you know? And so lots of shit happens that way, and I mean, I can, I'm yeah. glad I've never killed anybody, but I'm just like, a, I can relate to the oh fuck and you know yeah. and like you, you, it's not easy to make good decisions in the moment like that necessarily and then honestly in some cases you're just fucked you yeah know? sometimes you're gonna get in a sometimes fight there is no good yeah decision. there's no good decision you're gonna get in a fight and that's it you know but anyways what, what I what I guess I'm trying to get at is um, most like he Soko went too far in a lot of ways and I don't think I could hang with that mm. but at the same point is what I'm getting to is that um, that kind of ruthlessness is earned by the people that oppress them yeah, it's almost like a reaction to an action. You know, yeah. it's almost like physics. You know. Yeah. So it's it's, yeah, it's tragic. What I want to do is to work towards reconciliation. Yeah. You know, but that is very difficult. And I think it was Malcolm X that talked about. You know, you can't put the knife in nine inches, take it out three inches. That's not healing. You know. Yeah. That's not you know. And you can't yeah. take it out. Someone. Oh, no, I'm not stabbing you as much. No, no, you have to. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. like you've got to remove the knife and treat the wound, and then the healing can start. You know right. what I mean? Like basically, his point, and I think he's correct, is the fucking oppression has to end. Yeah. Must end first, yeah. and then we can start healing. And yeah. until then, we can't. Yeah. You know, and he's right. I'm sorry, but he's right about that. And to add on to that, it's another thing too, even to get the knife fully out. Then healing may start on its own, but like the person who stabbed you isn't necessarily going to help patch you up. Yeah. And to truly begin that reconciliation process you're talking about, like you need that pe- the the people who are part of the stabbing to be the ones who start patching you up and trying to get make sure it's not infected, yeah. start stitching you together. Like that's how you get to true healing, and it's it's really it takes a. I mean, it takes something like what happened in Germany. That yeah. level of a momentous change. You had a whole restructuring and crumbling of their society to have such a dramatic shift in such a short period of time. It's really rare that you see something like that. It really is rare, and I'm thinking... Japan's it's, another example. Yeah. Of quite a shift of their society. Oh, after yeah. Like, two. After, I mean, they were a conquest kind of based mentality in, mm-hmm. in, in World War II, but after that massive failure, like... I studied some of the period afterwards. There was like a uh, famous military leader, one of the powerful people that mm. killed himself. Mm. And the people's reaction was like, good. It saves us the trouble. Yeah. They fucking Jesus. hated. Like when, <laughs> once they saw how much was bullshit and propaganda and lies, they yeah. fucking hated their old leaders, you know. I mean, there was a, one of the old style guys, I forget his name, but he's like an actor. I think yeah, he was an actor. He's kind of, you know, known person. Mm. And, but he was like, you know, we want the old Empire Japan thing. And he was just laughed out of the room. He tried to pull that <laughs> shit. It's like everyone's like, fuck that, fuck you, fuck the horse you rode in on. Yeah. You know, they, they did reform their society in a very peaceful way. In fact... That was their mentality, and the route to prosperity was we're you know we're they become the floating factory, and we're going to build, yeah, and we're going to make better. But like I'm I'm old enough, so I remember there were some things from Japan that were made, and they're considered crappy. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, like crappy cheap Japan Japan shit, and they got better and better and better, and now they're like the best in many fields. You know what I mean? And so like they built up. That's how R and D research build it up. We're going to make prosperity through work, kind of a yeah. thing through peace. 
yeah. peaceful means. So, like, you get a modern day Japan where a lot of people, it's like the thought of, like, they don't want to go to war. In fact, there was a poll on that not too long ago. It was like, your country asked you to go to war, you know, what percentage? And the percentage of people willing to go to war in Japan were extremely low. Yeah. You know, they're like, that isn't, that's a path of destruction. Yeah. Not a path of prosperity. Mm-hmm. You know, so you can change. And I'm really, in, in, to be correct about Japanese society, I'm just representing it truthfully. Sure. There are different factions. Not everybody is reconciled. It's not as oh, yeah. not as complete as Germany. So oh, you have yeah. like people like <laughs> the Hiroshima Memo- Peace Memorial mm-hmm. absolutely reconciled and it's wonderful and, and, and my heart and soul goes into that and I love those people. And then then you have other places that are like shrines to war criminals. Yeah. And I've been there We've as well. Talked about those, yeah, and it's you know. like fuck that and it pisses a lot of people off and should you know it's kind of it's like imagine if we had a shrine dedicated to the most brutal slavers and you know yeah. what I mean it's like and we're honoring them in some way yeah you know it's like sickness you know so uh, it's 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 fucked up but yeah it's so it's not perfect everywhere but you know what we're not going to get perfect yeah so but reconciliation takes a lot more work but you get so much more for it yeah. you get genuine prosperity what about a world where instead of bombing each other into the ground, we build each other up? Yeah. You know? Well, where we do a Marshall Plan. Yes! Is, there are exactly. these great moments, and yeah. like, to your point about Japan, like, Japan has this underlying culture of, like, honor. And we yeah. emphasize that a lot nowadays, because that is kind of the manifestation it takes nowadays. And it has always been there, the samurai honor and everything. The sure. samurai is a perfect example of this point of, the samurai is also about the strength. Like, they are the skilled swordsman, the mm. deadliest man in the land. Right, yeah. Like, with honors, often this, like, mm. secondary face of it is power. Mm. And, like, you're seeing kind of this interesting parallel of, like, pre-World War II, Japan was much more about the imperial power and the conquest. Yeah. And, like, not, not to bring in a politically charged issue of today into this, but Russia is often talked about in terms of, like, they're culturally about power and yeah. respecting power. And it's, like... Even if they were to have some sort of loss or, like, Putin was to be taken out of power in some way, the next person to come in would still be generally the same person. Culturally that way, yeah. About power. Yeah. I don't know that that's true. I don't know that there's a people that are so lost to that, or at least that Russia is an example of a people that are so lost to that. Like, yes, Russia is very power-centric, and they have a history of, like, wanting to have that powerful leader and, like, people who are culturally, mm-hmm. like willing to use their strength and lead with strength. But there is that second side of that face where there's honor in that. And Japan took that and turned on a heel. Yeah. You know, and there there was a lot of exterior intervention with that and a huge loss of a war. And I'm not necessarily saying we should go down that path for Russia. (laughs) Yeah, like, they totally, like, there's a lot of propaganda that people saw were lies. I'll give you one example. I don't know if I ever told you about this. But they rounded up a bunch of women that they considered to be expendable because mm-hmm. they wanted them to be the ones that would get raped by the Americans that came. Jesus right? And, and, yeah, quite, exactly. And the Americans came up like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, they disbanded it. You know, like, yeah. yeah, it's like, no, we're not raping it. You know, like, you know, like, this is bullshit. We're not, yeah. we're not the demons you say we are. You yeah. know, and I'm not saying Americans were perfect. That's not my point. But they're right. not, there was a lot of propaganda trumped up to the point where it's like, they're going to rape and kill everyone kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, that, that didn't happen. Yeah. You know, and so when that didn't happen, that was just another full social force of like, you've been filling us full of bullshit. Right. You know? And people talk today about, well, the Russian people are too propagandized to ever be pulled out of that. They're too I stuck I don't at, know about that. Was Japan less propagandized than propagandized Russia is today? Hell, I don't know. Right? Not World War II. Japan, yeah. like, was really propagandized well, internally. <laughs> yeah, much more so, I would say. In fact, when I look at Russia today, I think it's a split, and I don't know the split, but, like, yeah. so many people left by plane when the war started. Yeah. Some people rebelled against the... Um, or even went Korean. to, like, the Kazakhstan and, like, other surrounding yeah. areas just to get out of yeah. Russia proper. Like, right. People then, are clearly aware. <laughs> yeah, there was a big protest with a lot of people, and mm-hmm. they took major risk to protest. Oh, know? yeah. Those people, a lot of them paid pretty hard. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, man, uh, the, I, I just cannot express enough admiration and appreciation yeah. for those Russians that came up and said, no, war, this war is wrong. It's reminiscent you know? of the Arab Spring kind of courage. Like, yeah, cause there really. Was, Though there was a lot of like harsh crackdown dictatorship vibes throughout yeah. Africa and the Middle East before mm-hmm. the Arab Spring happened, it's like wow, <laughs> like, you guys are like really taking a risk. That's very noble. Like when the civil rights stuff was happening downtown, I did attend sometimes. Mm-hmm. Right, not all, I should have attended more, but 
you know, go there sometimes and like they had riot ribs that were feeding everybody, so I'd like throw Sino and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, but it's like, but uh, the thing of it is, like, I don't think I have the courage to do what the Russian protesters did because of how the government they're dealing with, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, when it got really hot, I wasn't trying to go fist cuss with the cops, you know what I mean? Yeah. I had those options for me, but like, I don't know, they like they were really taking a risk. Yeah. So my opinion, they're more <laughs> they have more courage than me. All yeah. right. So I'm just saying that how I see it, and then you know. So I don't. But here's the question, and I don't know it. What does that split look like? What percentage yeah. of Russian society said "fuck this, fuck you," and I'm not doing it? <laughs> you yeah. know, like no fucking way. You know, I mean. Well, interestingly, I wonder if it's researchable. Um, when I look into this afterwards about what that split was like in Japan during World War II or just prior to, I wonder if there's any type of polling from back then. I, I would well, be hard pressed to think there was, but there there could have been something. There, yeah. I mean, from what I understand from the World War II era, more and more power went to the military structure. Mm -hmm. There were people that you know didn't want to be as brutal, but they were they were removed from power. Mm -hmm. You know, there are also people that warned, like, you know, attacking America, you're attacking, like, a sleeping giant. This is a bad idea. Yeah. And they weren't listening to it, you know. And so it's like there was a lot of militaristic, you know, people that might have had, more, honestly, more empathy and more wisdom. They, mm -hmm. The Heimerdingers were fucked, kicked out. Right. You know? And so, and that that's how that power went. When they lost, they lost all credibility because that's all they were is that's war, right. war leaders, you know what I mean? Now they're now they're leading nothing and then now they're going on trial. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Sometimes like, it takes that to really shake people out of it. Yeah. I the thing is though, like and to bring this but back to I think the, a big thing is I'm sorry, is helping really? them build up. You know, saying, Okay, we bombed you to hell, it was a horrible war. Let's get you built up. Yeah. It's a sign of good faith. It is. It's a sign of good faith and when you can uh, say, you can build a peace that way. Now a thought of war between America and Japan is unthinkable. Mm hmm You know? We're genuinely allies. We're major trade partners. We work together. Right. You know, I want the world to be that way. And to that point, and again, to bring it back to League, it's like one of the saddest moments that I had in seeing, well, not the, obviously one of the saddest moments. There's been a lot of killing. But one of the saddest moments just from an outside, like, cultural perspective of seeing what's happened as a result of the Ukraine war is uh. the sanctions, to the extent they've gone, mm -hmm. like... Everybody who's involved in the West generally on just an economic basis, like a, on a company level, has had to pull out of Russia. Uh -huh. And one of the consequences of that is like throughout this last season of Worlds and even prior to Worlds, the uh, Russian League of Legends, because there's like regional zones, mm -hmm. like North America has one, Europe West and Europe East has a zone, Russia the Commonwealth of Independent States, so I think it's a lot of, like, the Russia bordering states that were part of the Soviet Union as well are incorporated into that, but it's mm -hmm. mainly Russia, like, the participants. Um, and then there's, like, Japan has one, Vietnam mm -hmm. has one, yada yada, China, obviously, so South Korea, obviously. Um, but so the uh, Russian League mid-season was shut down. And then the team that was winning it usually gets a slot into Worlds to compete, and they were notably absent. Right. And they were doing really well. There was, like, actually a lot of hype for them coming in. It was a known <laughs> team. And it's very unfortunate, one, to miss out on that for the experience of Worlds. And it's, it's like oh, yeah. someone being disinvited from the Olympics. Yeah, but also that's what too, I was thinking of. It's like, shit, wow. Those kids, like... I mean, they're they're in their twenties. Some some of them, but sure, like, but whatever. I mean, you know, the, this is a path out of whatever they would have had to gone into otherwise. They're like, you know, it's it's like again to bring up trash tastes. Like the they've had like some interviews of them done by like traditional Japanese media and stuff oh, like right, this, okay. and they're treated like ambassadors of America. Like r those kids are like ambassadors of Russia culturally, yeah. to the rest of the world. It's like, we're all just league players. Yeah. We're all here trying to be the best. We're all not quite as good as Faker. Like, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, but we're trying, and we're doing, we're actually really good. Look at how good we are. We're actually killing it. Yeah. Like, we're, we put a lot of time into this, and like, there's, we're not so different. We all have sponsors. We all think about this game the same way. We all really resonated with Arcane. Like, yeah, and like, Think We're about, not so different. It, not only that, but like I like the idea of keeping communication channels open. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, there's a few things to say about it. One is that that culturally that can have an impact over time, and it's it's a sad yeah. absence. So I think of it exactly like the Olympics example, right? Yeah. Another thing too is that like 
it's not like they're going to be screaming Ukraine where they could be, but like you could talk to them about like, hey, dude, I don't know what your opinions are. But I would just, be shocked. Let's just leave. Let's just leave that at the door. Yeah. Can we do that? You know what I mean? And Given probably some of the cool. comments, uh, at least some of the teams and the people who are banning the league from inside of Russia had made publicly after the decision was made and announced. It seemed like they were much of the thing of like, hey, we wanted to just not even touch that, leave that at the mm-hmm. door, and just be here about the great and be yeah. here about this game and the experience. And from from what I had said too, I think there were a couple comments they had made on Twitter about the idea of like, this would have been a great opportunity to reach out and remind everybody that we're all just people. Yeah, and it could have been a last line of communication yeah, and cultural exchange. I don't want to cut those off. That is Seriously, that is a serious cultural loss. It's unfortunate. And I don't blame Riot for that or anybody who's part of the like professional league. They might not even have a choice. Yeah, it was, it was probably just a thing of like, due to the sanctions, if they had maintained it, they would have had ramifications. So yeah, I totally there, get There's it. more powerful figures here. It's than, more like, about, like, it's sad that the sanctions <laughs> came to that and that yeah. this war has come to that. Like, we're losing... Then put aside, obviously, the generations that are being lost between the two sides right now, but, yeah. like, they're, they're, the level of isolation that's being done, it's like, well, then people will start to lose sight of it. They will start to think every Russian's been propagandized. They yeah, are an irredeemable but, warlike yeah. people. Like, you're starting to lose touch and, uh, with it's like them. I, I really don't want that. In fact, there's a few Russian people that I've worked with there, mm-hmm. and I, I haven't really talked to them at all about it, but I totally like working, like, Peter Karasev, is just like a fucking awesome expert for our um, a tool that we use, right? And mm-hmm. I, God, I hope he's not feeling shitty about this stuff because it's like, dude, he's, people I work with are people, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what their specific feelings are about this, but I don't want war. Most people don't want war, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't like the wars that fucking America gets into either. And they, yeah. You know, they don't listen to me, right? So um, I, there's one thing I say about the war. This is, tends to be true in any kind of a mixed society. It may, it, it may not be true in some cases, but I think it's going to be true here. And it's that wars tend to be more popular initially. And yeah. then the gravity of everything starts to hit. When you start to see the people it's, not coming home. Yeah, it's a, yeah, or, yeah, you come to tin boxes and stuff like that. Was it like with zinc, zinc boxes, something like that? There's a book about that with the Russian experience in Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. They're sending home mm-hmm. the people in coffins. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like... Um, what I'm getting at, though, is that uh, that time goes on, that support tends to fade, and people are like, what the fuck are we even doing here? Yeah. Especially if they're just bogged down in the Ukraine and don't make massive gains. Like, if they took Kiev, that might be something, right? But if it was over in a month, people would cheer and forget. Yeah, exactly, but it's not. It's been a year, Yeah. and they're still bogging down. They're planning this big spring offensive, but if it comes to not, yeah. then they might start to lose more and more support at home and more less will to continue the war. Yeah. I mean, I just think over time, it takes a lot of time, yeah. But that support will degrade, mm-hmm. especially because it's in there. It would be different if they were getting invaded and fighting for their life. Right. But it's just not that kind of thing. So. Well, that's the whole thing. It's the opposite side of the coin. And yeah. Again, you can put aside what brought us to this, but it's just like the the thing that you can't escape is ultimately you stepped into someone else's country, bro. Yeah. Like no matter how much I can sympathize with the events leading up to this and what happened in Ukraine with previous governments they had, you crossed the border. Like, no matter how much you can say you were egged on to do so, yeah. you blinked, and yeah. you did it. So yeah. now you're wrong. Yeah, I hate to say it, <laughs> No well, matter what, well, you you're, know, you're wrong now. I, I'm not even saying I agree with it, because I don't agree with all the politics that happened, even yeah. on the Western NATO side of everything. I mean, I know there's a lot of egging on. I don't, I don't support that kind of bullshit. But the thing of it is, that was on a certain level of... of Mm, aggression, right? Yeah. It was more of a chess game. They're playing that, and, yeah. and it's like Russia got pissed and threw the, mm-hmm. threw the threw the chess game off the table and invaded Ukraine, mm-hmm. right? So it's like fuck it's this, major... we're not fucking around anymore. Yeah. We're doing this. Yeah, it's, it's like, like no, 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 no. We weren't really doing this. Yeah, it's like, doing? Hold yeah, on, it's wait kinda, a yeah, it's like we're doing it a certain level of aggression, which I get that, which isn't necessarily justified. Yeah, and they're all right, but nonetheless, nonetheless, you did raise the level. Exactly, of it's a major it's level of aggression. You. It's like it's like somebody who's imagine if I'm like it's almost like if I'm at the burger place where there's some place I'm you know yeah. I'm, at, I'm at a place grabbing food and somebody's just fucking with me and like hey you bitch you know yeah. and it's like I can punch them but I've done a major escalation if I do that right well and it's even beyond that it's like you shot them yeah yeah really <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like what I should do. I mean like it's okay if I say fuck off you know what I mean yeah. like if they played some kind of a chess game themselves you know and tried to pull some kind of, I don't know whatever it is yeah. right well you know it, that's different right that's just that's that's the whole almost a relic of the cold war put your thumb in the eye right. yeah, you know I'm gonna fuck with you and fuck with you you know it's like it's not good but it's 
the, taking it to war is a higher escalation. It's about as high as it gets, right? Yeah. Other than nuclear blast, so. Right. 100 seconds to midnight, dude. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the last time I looked at the clock, and I think it still is. Which is all to say, I reach out to our Russian League players, and I say, I remember you're just League fans. Yeah. It's okay. I'm not mad at you. People in the West aren't mad at you. <laughs> yeah, fuck up. What the fuck? Let's be honest for a second. Like, what the fuck does our higher level government care what we want? No. You know what I mean? None of them they, care about yeah. what we want as far as some of the best governments we have in the world right now still don't yeah. really give a shit about yeah. their people. Really? It's got to result so much of that. To, to another point too, we've mentioned trash taste a number of times. There was a contingent of fans in uh, Russia that would translate every episode and dub it mm-hmm. with like they had a dedicated voice actor for each of the trash taste guys. Oh, right on! Who would dub every episode cool. and then subtitle it? <laughs> it's like that was cool. Like there's I mean, yeah, these moments cool. of like cross cultural things with like Russia and China. These like. The, the taboo, not Western society, where it's like, no, we all just are people who like the same cool stuff. Yeah, we are human beings, and honestly, there's a lot of political and propagandistic manipulation to get people to support wars, right? Yeah. Some people will do that all around, right? Yeah. But then we get, then it's a fucking meat grinder that, you know, yeah. is there so much death and suffering. it's war. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I remember, like, the thing of it is, like, I remember when my sister, she's usually peaceful, but she, at the very beginning, she was manipulated enough to support the wars. Mm-hmm. That, you know, in Iraq and Afghanistan. I started talking to her, it's like, okay, how many children do you think need to die here yeah. to go out without arms and legs? Yeah. How many people do you think are, you know, are going to get raped today? Yeah. You know, because, like, the, when things start to break apart, like, the, I mean, this is part of what war We will have through. those numbers yeah. once this is done. Like, and realize... it's not going to be zero. <laughs> yeah, realize this is going to happen. Are you okay with that now? You know, and it really hit her with a lot of gravity, and she kind of yeah. stopped, you know, like, oh, shit. It's unavoidable. I've never really thought about it like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's we'll like, start thinking about it like that. Yeah, yeah. because we're propagandized to not think about it yeah. like that. And it's like, the people are human all over the world. It's a horror show, and you don't want to unleash... Yeah. Most, almost nobody... A, a, a few serial killers and sociopaths aside, who really wants to fucking? Do you do you really like just really think of blasting somebody that you don't even fucking know? Yeah. And one okay. of the things that got to me too, and this is just how I felt as a soldier, mm. I never hated professional soldiers that were on some other side. Yeah. You know what? They're they're, they're kind of, yelled at too, and yeah. given a gun and <laughs> sent off. Fucking air right? <laughs> yeah. Same old bullshit. And we have, we have the same. We're gonna write the same love letters, and we're gonna have. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's we're not that different. It makes me think. I think it was was it World War One in the trenches where uh, Christmas. The Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean. I. I that I don't. I want us to play soccer. I don't want us to kill each other. <laughs> you know. Let's whatever. leave it on the field. Let's yeah. settle this on the rift. Yeah, Come no on. kidding. Yeah, yeah. It's like, so I, I do think that's a, that's an unfortunate loss. Unfortunately, if that were the case, South Korea would run the world. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. That wouldn't be so bad. We'd all have fiber internet. You know, maybe. Yeah, we'd be getting high speed everywhere. Starcraft would be on every network. Like it's great. I'd be down for that. We could yeah. have our. You're welcome, Samsung. Yeah, Enjoy. Yeah, so everything's like a Korean cyberpunk future. Yeah, yeah. I don't care about that. It can be worse. Neon can everywhere. Worse. I can live with that. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> um, so to bring it back uh, one more time to what our title is uh, for this episode, and mm. if I remember right, the YouTube upload as well. Okay. Um, <laughs> so our thoughts, I asked you briefly just to get it approved as our title for the episode, but Arcane as the goat for Western animation. So we've talked oh, a lot yeah. about how we're suckers for the fact that it's incorporated some very, like, stylish animation. Yeah. It's got a lot of that French flair, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, so we're talking about things that's up against the likes of Samurai Jack. Okay, I very really enjoyed beloved, that. I love I, Samurai Jack, I too. I really, as much as I... Very I, stylish. <laughs> so, I love the style. And I love just the kind of futuristic stuff he was mixed up in, you know? Mm-hmm. I know it was like, I, maybe I was too old for that, because I'm, like, old. I still loved it. Yeah, and I like several. Nights. I didn't see them all, but I've seen a great many of them. And they did the the reboot. Did you see the reboot? By I the saw way? some of it, I think. Okay. Yeah, but no, not, it was not nice. It tied the story up in a bow. It was. Oh. It felt a little rushed on the last like episode or two, oh. but it did tie everything up in a bow, and it was nice to get a conclusion for that series. Yeah, that's really right. Because I didn't really have. Okay, yeah, that's part of why I felt like I kind of did. I should probably do that, but it's so late now. You know what I mean? I just kind of lost track of it. Mm. In terms of stylistically, though. As much as I love it, like, sometimes, it's like there's sometimes where there's a creation that elevates your levels of expectations. You understand? Like, Samurai Jack was already like, oh, this is great. This is absolutely super great, right? Mm -hmm. I liked it. Like, so stylish. Love it. Love Mm -hmm. it, right? And I'm thinking of that as a 10 out of 10. The thing of it is, Arcane comes along and says, no, we're going to elevate the art to such a level that you're going to be expanded, 
your 10 was here, now it's going to be here because yeah. that's where we're at, you know? And that's how good it is. Yeah, goat for absolutely sure. <laughs> for me, for all my experiences, yeah. The, I, the I other spanner I was going to try to throw in the works was Avatar. Avatar is very beloved. I didn't grow I up on it. Avatar. A lot of people have. Oh, yeah, okay. sorry, I, I, I don't know. I haven't seen it. So I, mean, I know it's beloved. There, you know? I know about it. I've lo- watched quite a lot of it. That'd I didn't grow cool. up on it, but there there's some really cool things like... Uh, and obviously, there's the four elements. Yeah. One of them's like, the wind element is essentially genocided as the premise of the show. Last Airbender <laughs> stuff or whatever. And, and <laughs> there, yeah. And then there's this like the Earth Kingdom at a certain point has been reduced to like there's one major hub city that's like the capital that hasn't been touched by the war mm-hmm. intentionally because they're saying inside that kingdom is the name of the city's bossing say, there is no war in bossing say. Uh-huh. So they're not going to do anything about it because it hasn't become their problem yet. Right. So it's like an eyes wide shut kind of thing. Oh, right, right. And it's, okay. so there's a lot of really cool things like that throughout the series. Interesting, yeah. I would say Avatar tries to... Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Uh, Avatar kind of tries to hit on these broader themes. I think Arcane hits them a lot harder. <laughs> And in a much more visceral way than they do. It does, man. It elicits empathy for me for almost all the characters. Even like, damn it all, I don't want to like Soko so much, but I do. Oh, and yeah. how he I died. I want to like Soko, me. and I do. I, I do. You know, like, because like, I want uh, honestly, like, I want to be a good dad. Yeah. You know, right. I don't always accomplish that. Yeah. For all of his failings, yeah. I would hope to be as good of a dad as he was. The way, to have done as much as he did as a man with as many failings as he did, yeah. that truly is rising to an occasion. And if I'm going to be honest with myself, like the man that I want to be, I want to be there for Yuki at that level. I want to be, like, if I was dying, I want to tell her she's perfect and that I love her. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's right. like, so it's just, it really touches me, really, and deeply, probably part because I, I, I have a daughter, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, God, man, that Ah, so he really nailed the father at part at the end, and that just kind of sealed it for me. Because <laughs> yeah. you know, it's you are a wonderful dad. You Sam- know, like, Samurai like, Jack talked a, a lot about different themes and different like honor and what it means to be in society, and like the the whole thing that Aku built was a lot of critiques of society. Mm. But like, there there were definite moments where that series hit me really hard. But Arcane was just like constant barrage of those kind of moments. I it's felt like I was to... immersed in it. Yeah. You know, it was the artistic flourish was so gripping, yeah. right? So it's beautiful in its own way, its own steampunk fashion, mm-hmm. right? But it draws you into it with that beauty, I feel. Yeah. And then you're really gripped and paying attention to the people's lives there. Yeah. And you can't help but become invested in everyone. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And they really introduce them and, and like relatable ways dealing with with relatable problems as mm-hmm. far as i'm concerned that, yeah. so, that, so it maybe everything in, yeah. felt relatable yeah. and like this gray moral area it, there it was does. very few people who are like oh you're a fucking villain yeah i mean like it, even you you made a good point for marcus you know like, yeah. i don't like him but in a sense he's just a <laughs> i would fear that if i lived in arcane i would be marcus <laughs> I th- you know what i really think the truth is like some of those weak decisions and kind of going with the flow no i'm gonna be frank about it and be honest with myself i can do that i have done that at times that's not my whole life i yeah. feel like marcus was on that train the whole way probably and i think yeah. when we're at our worst we could be like marcus but when we're at our best we'll not be like Marcus, you know. It's like, <laughs> we Mark- could hope. <laughs> yeah, it's like fuck, man. Yeah. It's it's like that's like how do I put this? It's like that's what you get for being sort of morally mediocre. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like there are times in life where I've taken stands, and there are times in life where I folded my cards. You know, I'm just being honest about that. You know, probably at the end of my life, I would probably have somewhere I wish I took more of a stand. To be completely frank, oh, but, I know I will have those regrets for sure. <laughs> but, but it's like even though I was thinking about that, I can honestly say with myself, there were times when I took a stand that Marcus just never seemed to take. Yeah, you know what I mean, and it, that's why, even though it's relatable, it's also like a cautionary tale. Like, <laughs> I hate to say this, but just I'm gonna be honest about it. It's like saying, Eric, this is you at your worst when you're trying to do good, but you're being a pansy about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so, yeah, it is pretty much hard. Guess. Yeah, it, it, it's not like, to hate, but I mean, it is true. It, it, it's, uh, yeah. So it's like a little bit of a like. Sometimes you gotta raise hell. Yeah. You know, I mean, not in a sense of making the violence worse, but sometimes you're gonna have to. So also think a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, 
if you're gonna do make moves like this, I can't imagine how dopey you are to not try to make allies to, you know, yeah. to, like miss so many opportunities and mess. Like, how blind yeah. are you? Like, you know, if you're gonna actually bring about that kind of a peaceful transition that you're trying to do here. Vander was Fuck. willing to use strength, but Vander would find an ally when possible. Yeah, she, Vander worked with that old, like, ba that battleship woman. She was, she, had, she, <laughs> yeah. she looked tough as hell, you know? She, it's like she died like a motherfucker, right, don't get me wrong, oh, but, yeah. but, like, she looked like a tough person, you know? Yeah. It's like, like, I've been in street she, fights. She's done some shit. Well, yeah. both her and Vander were see seemingly the only ones who had really been through the visceral experience of what the last war in the lanes was like right right and i mean it's funny because like you get that there are some like you know the most most anti-war person i've ever known is my uncle bill um he was drafted into vietnam mm -hmm. and he hasn't talked about it a whole hell of a lot but you know i'd never heard him say anything negative about the vietnamese people or anything like that yeah However, war, like when we were looking at going to war, immediately he's like, no, no, fuck, no, no. You know, like <laughs> yeah. it, everybody getting propagandized into the Iraq war. Oh, yeah. nuclear weapons. He's Mr. No. Like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, like most anti-war person I've ever known, like unflinchingly against it completely, yeah. always and forever. There are some veterans that are like that, right? Yeah. Especially because what I do know. Is rough, man. Like he got, he got, he left Vietnam with a permanent limp and a metal plate in his head, Oof, and permanent sense. neurological damage. So like, if he's not paying attention, what's in his? I think it was his left hand. He would drop it, kind of lose it. Yeah, yeah, and it would just drop a screwdriver like that, you know, because he's not, you know. And then, um, so he also was on a barge, and they were ambushed. And I think it was a very close friend of him that was just brutally killed. Right turned a bur right by him, yeah. Oh, on God. the bars, like turned into burger, you know? And I mean like that's what I know of it, right? So it's fucking horror show, right? He gets out of that, it's like <laughs> <laughs> there is no way you're gonna get my Uncle Bill to agree yeah. to a war. You know what I mean? It's like it's just not in him. Like he yeah. he will disagree to it to the to the day he dies, right? Yeah. So you can I can imagine like two gnarly veterans, like that woman whose name I don't know, and Vander's kinda like, look, you know we got to find it any other yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> like, there's some things that... I love that moment when the, the message comes and that, like... It almost reminded me, what's that show? Was it Harry Potter where they had the little messages that came through the pipe system? I don't, I don't remember which one Harry was. Potter, so it might be that. There was yeah. some show where they had this... That was their message that, communication that's, system. I've seen something out. like this. So it might be... Yeah, okay, it was probably. delivered like that. And she like right when she was talking to Marcus about, like, oh, God, we're, there's no other... We're going to be sucked in the war. And then he goes... Funk, and it was the message from Vander, and she was like, we might have a chance. <laughs> yeah, and it, that's just it. It's like, and they're really working for that, because it's like, how do I put this? It's something that is clearly so fucking horrible that they don't want it. And I, I think he explained it well yeah. to, Vi, to Vi. Like, uh, who are you yeah. willing to lose? Yeah. You know, are you willing, like, are going to have powder dead? It was the kindest go? way to say something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's rough, man. It's like, you're, and you're not, the truth is, after you pull the trigger on something like that, you have very little control over who exactly, you're in battle, right? Who, anybody could die. Yeah. You know? Um, so with, with that convenient mentioning of the interaction between Vi and Vander, I want to go pull up this one last meme here. <laughs> yeah. This is one that has always kind of stuck with me of all of all the arcane memes that have gone around. Uh, I really <laughs> it, it amplifies how much like there's all these parallels. We've talked about so many different themes that have come up and different events that have happened, but there's mm. been like multiple parallels with multiple characters for each of them. Yeah. And that's one of the things I really loved about Arcane, like how much when they hit a theme, they hit it from several angles and make several characters experience it so you resonate with it no matter who you're jiving with and that yeah. run through. Um, like you've got Vander and Vi, you've got Silco and Jinx. You've got Mel and her mom. You, you've got Marcus and his daughter. And you, you, every one of them has the same weaving of, like, they're kind of being dragged away from what they want. Like, Marcus, like, was... Uh, his whole story was he was trying to do everything he could to make sure his daughter was insulated from these problems. Like, he, he was a little too willing to compromise himself to make sure that things worked out well for her, mm -hmm. were peaceful for her, and he succeeded and was promoted to head sheriff and all this stuff. Right. And then what happens, he winds up getting entangled in this so deep that he dies, and now his daughter's going to have to be raised without a father. 
Probably yes. the worst choices he could have made in retrospect. Yeah. Vander kind of has similar vibes with that, with Vi, but, like, he's his story is not really fully done in a sense, but, like, he, he winds up, like, being a memory to Vi. And, like, he, he tried to lead her the best while he could, but he could only reach her so much, and in his death he probably reached her at a deeper level than he did when he was alive, even though he did have those moments where he was able to communicate with her. Yeah. Like, she remembers those moments so much more vividly now as an adult because of his death. Yeah. I was saying because of his death, because of what he imparted to her, and because of her additional experiences. Yeah. You know, and it's like she's grown up, so she ha she has the ability, the capacity, you know, she internalized it, now she has the capacity to deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like. And this seems like that to me. Like the wisdom is kind of being handed down. I actually, <laughs> and I really relate to it when she was on the ground, like the kind of almost an angelic, you know, Vander comes. It's like, yeah. I wish I could tell you it's going to get easier, but it's, it's not. not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that is so relatable to me. That is so fucking relatable. So it's like, yeah, I, I thought uh, that was very cool. It makes me relate to Vi. I like her compass. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, I know she's not seeking power. You know what I mean? Not really. That she hasn't been involved in that Machiavellian stuff. She's just trying to get her sister, you know? And it's fucking sad that it can't be, you know, he can't turn back time, right? Yeah. So, you know, she is who she is now. I think the thing of it is, like, I, I kind of wonder what chaotic turn, you know, she's going to take. Because Jinx, well, she's a wild card now, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's... <laughs> She just took a an extreme action. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, how's Vi gonna deal with that? You know what I mean? It's like I don't think Vi would want to kill her, but maybe to capture her and like you know stop the madness, right? Um, and uh, so the the lore of what has been the past has been uh, right. I'll say this: Riot has said they're working on trying to uh, create a grand unified lore because now they have multiple games. Some of the characters from League are in some of their other games, like Legends of Ruterra. Mm -hmm. Some of them, uh, like Apex Legends, are a new set of characters, completely unrelated. Um, they're trying to work on, for at least the world where all the League characters are, uh, a unified world, a unified lore for everything. So everything ties nicely mm -hmm. into itself and kind of supports itself no matter what aspect you approach <coughs> it from. Um, the... Uh, mm. There, there's some changes that are probably going to be made in what's happened in the past when these initial lures for the characters when they were first released, but the general sense that you got from Vi and Jinx when both of them had been released, and it wasn't clear that they were sisters quite yet, mm. um, was Jinx is this, like, nuisance to pilt over. <laughs> Vi is part, uh, she's second in command uh, to her friend Caitlin. Mm. Uh, it wasn't clear how good of friends they were. <laughs> um, and they're, cha they're like the top two enforcers of all of Piltover, um, and Jinx is the one criminal they can never quite catch. Oh, and Jinx man. kind of mocks them every crime, in a sense. I can see her think that she can. She, like, dangles herself in front of them and then yeah. gets away. It's like they set the <laughs> trap or something, they go around a corner, boom, yeah. <laughs> son of a bitch! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, you know, it's totally off topic, but, like, I feel like after... You know when Vander was going to surrender his position? Yeah. I feel like I just want to grab him by the shoulders. No, goddammit, you fucking hold this, you know? Yeah. Like, carry that wisdom forward and do good. You know, you've learned a lot. Yeah. You have a fucking moral compass. Look at these people. You know, like, shit. You know, so that's... <sighs> it's like destruction, man. It's, it really matters who's in those seats of power, unfortunately, yeah. you know? So you want... We want like it's like they they surgically remove the conscience, you know what I mean? That's a terrible thing to happen. Yeah. Maybe Mel will bring some of that forward, but you know a lot of the others seem like they're almost just big characters or just Machiavellian jackasses. Yeah. Unless they build them deeper and have other motivations of some sort. Please give me some hope there. But the council seems fucked, and I don't know how many people like I don't know what Riot's gonna do or how they tell tell the story. How they do they retire characters? Do they kill them like that, you think? Uh, just because a character's dead doesn't mean they're not a playable character in the game. Oh, like, okay. a lot of the characters are... The, the idea of the rift initially was it's like this magical place where there's a rift between worlds. Mm. So people of note throughout history can be summoned there. 
And, like, the way you fight war is, like, you, the player, are... At least this was the lore. They've moved a bit away from this, but I still like it as an idea because it's kind of a cool way to tell the story of the game. The, when you pick your character from the hundred-odd characters there are That's now... That's a lot, yeah. Um, <laughs> you're choosing to summon someone, so you are, like, a powerful mage representing one of the regions, Noxus, Demacia, oh, okay. Piltover, Zaun, mm-hmm. and you're fighting against someone from a different region who's re- summoning a different one as a powerful mage, but the character is limited to what abilities they had. Jinx is a gunslinger with multiple types of guns. She's got the ray gun, she's got the machine gun, hmm. she's got the rocket launcher. Vi has fists only. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just... You can summon characters and then fight, and that's Some, what the rift is. Something about that, I don't know, it's, maybe it says too much about me, but I just love that Vi style. <laughs> yeah, Polk smash. No, I mean, it's like, it's funny because the truth is, like, if you look at my general life, and I'm trying to make points to this around, like, I, I make certain decisions and I show how I'm applying science to do it. Um, I'll give you a very simple example. This mm. is not genius level stuff here or anything, but just an example. We made, like, a little glow, but it was leaking, the seal wasn't tight enough, right? It wasn't correct. Mm. So it's like, how are we going to fix this? The water is there. We can't really just paint over the water. Mm. So my solution was to turn it upside down and the slight air pocket is going to be there and we let it dry out and then we apply it. And by the way, it's, it's fixed. It's not leaking. Uh-huh. Right? But but I'm, a le- I'm explaining the science of it, you know? Yeah. It's like, this is we were looking at the behavior of the water and how water will dissipate, you know, and evaporate over time, mm-hmm. you know, and how we're using gravity in our advantage at this point. These, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. But it, it's really simple, but I think it's, you know, I have a kid, right? So, right. so you know, it's good to teach stuff like this and applied science and how we fix problems, mm-hmm. you know, fix stuff. So it's like, there, I have that element to my thinking, but at the same time, in these games, what is wrong with me? <laughs> like, I just want to punch, you know what I mean? It's like, a, yeah, yeah let's, let's fucking brawl, you know? <laughs> it's like the Souls player in me, you know? It's like, sometimes I'll play, I mean, like, usually I, I use more versatile weapons lately. I've been running with katanas, mm. you know, they're kind of OP. Um, but, but it's like, but I've done all kinds of shit, and sometimes it's fun. In the older games. You've been known to wield the ladle from time to time. Oh, yeah, I've, I've fought with damn near everything. You know, I've definitely went lunch lady on it. You know, but, but it's like, at the same time, like sometimes I'll have fun just putting on a bunch of armor, like high poise, mm. really high poise shit, and a mega colossal weapon. Yeah. You know, I'm just waiting for my timing. Tink, tink, tink. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like one of the fun things, I, I there's a specific battle axe that, that you use in Dark Souls 3. Mm. One of the things I love, and I've killed people this way a number of times, because it's not a liked weapon, it's considered low tier, and I agree, but it has one, one ability that kind of surprises people. Mm. If you miss, like here, right, mm. you stun the other player with a hit to the ground. Mm. So they're, they're kind of stun locked, even though you missed. Mm. And they're surprised enough, you can follow up and bash the hell out of them. And it's fun, <laughs> you know, it's brutal, fun. Work. Anyways, so there's that part of me that it's, does plays games that like scratches that. scratches that same itch that playing mono green and Magic the Gathering scratches. Okay. This is the big green jack. And I have a 6-6 six, six body. <laughs> oh, you dealt with that? Very clever, blue player. I have a 7-7 seven, seven body. <laughs> Deal with it now. Just throw the big green men at him. Yeah. Eventually the brute force will solve my problem. <laughs> Take this. Bonk, bonk away. You know, yeah, so it's like... So I played all kinds of styles, but that's something I guess I've always enjoyed the brawling aspect. <laughs> like something's broken inside me. Um, honestly, come to think of it, this is really strange because I'm an old fat dude. But <laughs> consider I'm 48, right? Mm-hmm. So this is a long ass time ago. But in all honesty, for a period of time, I say about five to six years, mm-hmm. I was very serious about martial arts. I trained almost every mm-hmm. day, and you know, I, I was competitive, and you know, I went to tournaments, and you know got a few medals mm-hmm. you know but like and, and so I, I wasn't great mm-hmm. you know one of the things too is that like okay so going back to that time when I was young I remember I had an instructor that was really tough he mm-hmm. didn't say nice things but it was kind of like you really hit hard you had to admit that much you know because I could do that <laughs> but, but in my opinion that's all I had you know what I mean mm-hmm. I wasn't very good I wasn't very agile you know I wish I could have been more agile compared to those professionals I was nothing you know yeah. I, I just couldn't move like them but you know at the same time though it's it's kind of like <laughs> you have good power in your strikes your mother's still a whore <laughs> you know <laughs> you know it's yeah. kind of the feeling we have. but but okay we, we I've had some that. coaches like that <laughs> it, but it's like uh, I guess that part of me 
likes the kickboxing element of stuff. Mm -hmm. God, I'm sure I can't do it now. I'd fucking break myself, right? Yeah. But I used to actually enjoy it. We'd clear out the garage and we'd fucking kickbox in the you know in the neighborhood mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know, believe it or not, I actually like that. I'd get my bell rung a few times. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that's funny too is like a lot of the people will come out full energy, like they're just gonna throw massive amounts of punches. But after like three rounds, they give up. Because they're yeah. gassed out. Yeah. You know? Punch like, themselves out. <laughs> they punch themselves out. Like, a lot of the inexperienced people will try to do that. They just come at like, flurries, and it's like, okay, dodge, 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 get a little jab in, dodge, you know, like, yeah. I'm, I'm not really that hurt. And, you know, just they're just not experienced. And then yeah. the few, a few rounds into it, they're huffing and puffing, and it's like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> okay, I give up. You know, it's like they know, they know it's just going to be a beating at that point, you know? Yeah. It's kind of funny to watch that, but. Um, but Scott and I, my brother, we would box, like, a legitimate 12 rounds, you know, three-minute rounds the whole fucking time, you know, mm. and constantly be at each other, you know. Anyways, God, I, you wouldn't expect it from me, but I I, I worshipped <laughs> at the I worshipped at the altar of violence and trying to get good at it. Once upon a time. Once upon a time, yeah. <laughs> so I think, like, right now you can't expect any of that from me. I'm just a fat old dude. But in my <laughs> attitude, I guess I connect with Vi a little bit for that. I'm just thinking, I'm analyzing myself honestly. Yeah. Like, you know, I do kickboxing, I kind of like... <laughs> You know, I want to do tricky, nice combinations. <laughs> I think the uh, the best thing to do with League is to, when you're get, first getting into it, to pick a character that you like the personality of, that you connect with on a visceral level, mm -hmm. and you feel the mechanics are fun. Yeah. But, I think she's that. that yeah. you, you know what I mean? Even at, like, the, gonna, forget who's meta, forget what's strong, yeah. forget even what lane you're supposed to play. Like, you can play, a lot of characters are, like, Vi's meant to be a jungler, but, like, you could play her support, you could play her top, you could probably even play her mid, arguably. So, the thing of it is, like, too, I'm, I'm flexible to some degree, like, I don't have to get overly fixated, but mm. my first inclination, and this is, like, the, the reason why I think it's just, like, oh, you and everybody else, because people watch Arcane, and I just gotta think that there, there are characters, certain characters people are going to like to play more, and Vi's probably one mm -hmm. of them. I, I totally expect that, uh, I, I think Vander has a, like, he's an attractive man, and I think that might, you know, that might be, a, like, a strapping guy, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm expecting some people, like, I don't know how many women players or, get, honestly, uh, you know, maybe people that are attracted, like, also gay men might be playing, and it's like, he's, you know what I mean? Like, he just has <laughs> that look Vander, uh... In the iteration you know him is not a playable character in League. That is the oh. list I will say. There's a lot of speculation okay. and Easter egging that hints that he is a character you would not recognize. Oh, okay, okay. I, didn't, I, I will leave that. that to season two because it isn't really confirmed, but it is very strongly hinted at, and when it's revealed, I think oh. you will find it to be quite and, moving as a revelation. And so some I will say no more. Okay, okay, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, that's very interesting. I mean, I had no idea. But what, what Victor, you also won't recognize, but like yeah. his name is Victor. You will, you know, it's him. I was going to be he, interested how it's going to be reconciled. But I, I'm curious to see. I don't know his mechanics, and I guess we might not know anything for sure by the sounds of it. Victor is another guy I connect with. With, you know, but I suspect there's another thing that will motivate. He's more of a like spellcaster mage, right? And I, okay, I mean, I mean, I could tinker maybe, but yeah. like, but the thing of it is, like, um, how do I put this? With, uh, with the connection I have, I like Vi for her moral compass and her mm -hmm. approach to things, her love and loyalty, and though it didn't work out, but mm -hmm. like, I, I think it's admirable, you know, and I like her style of fighting, mm -hmm. and it you know just connects to me. Mm -hmm. uh, Realistically, I'm just going to say this because, like, you know, there's a, there's a sexual element to what some people will pick, and some people are going to pick beautiful women, to mm -hmm. pick beautiful weapon, women. Um, I'm not sure exactly who that will be. I think Vi would probably be one of them, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I think basically every character, like, you have Gragas as a really fat, let's be honest, Irish man. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough, you know. Um, Throw some color So there's there. a couple of characters like that, uh, but most. League isn't. Totally a game that's been like hypersexualizing all its characters per se, but like it leans into that. Like, why would you draw something that isn't beautiful? So, right. like, every character kind of has like, like a classic example is Garen. He's not like a super, like, he's very big and muscular, but he's not necessarily like a cut guy. Like, Set's very cut. You know, he's the typical, what you would think of, like, a Michelangelo kind of statuesque kind of person. Oh, okay, right. Garen's just much more brick shit house kind of guy. Mm. But there's a skin, uh, which I'll... We've, you probably are familiar with the idea of skins. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So that's one of the things that League kind of pioneered as the only form of monetization in the game. Oh. Free to play, no pay to win in any stretch of the imagination. 
Um, yeah, so that's Garen's that's a good a game. You know, Garen's a good example of a character. He has a skin called Rugged Garen, where it's him with a five o'clock shadow and a bit more of a dashing pose. Like <laughs> they kind of, you know, everybody's got their kind of way you could appreciate the beauty of that character. Okay. for the most and part. And honestly, I really, really do appreciate the beauty of the characters I watch in the animation. But I think mm-hmm. it was called my age or whatever. But like, the feelings I have towards Vaya are almost more fatherly. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like. There's a lot of good in her. Mm-hmm. There's a, a lot. Of, I see. I, I like a lot of what I see in her as a person. Yeah. So that's the kind of connection I have. I imagine there'll be much younger players which could be attracted to her or something. You know what I mean? But I'm just. I I, I don't know. I'm a bumbling old dude, but I love this shit. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I was. I'm laughing with my with Naomi about this. You know, my wife. Like I. You know, Akibara or Akiba. Mm-hmm. Whatever you know. You know, locals called Akiba. I guess. But you know, like I'm gonna be that old dude going through there. Like yeah. yeah. Manga. Hey. <laughs> you play me some video games. Can I get the big titty figure, please? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take that one. Thank you very much with your cane. <laughs> Walking yeah, out with the bag in one hand, the cane in the other. <laughs> they're gonna think I'm an etchy old dude, you know. Like, so <laughs> it's not like, untrue. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there can be truth to it for sure. You know? yeah, <laughs> there are things I appreciate sexually. My, <laughs> that's not my attraction here. Yes. No. But but uh, but that said, yeah, I think I'm just down this road for life, and in fact. I don't know if this will ever happen, if I'll ever get to retire there. But if I do, the leading place I would like to retire would be actually one of the cheapest places in Tokyo. Mm. And I would have a straight train route to Akihabara if I go there. Like, uh, it's one train. Sick. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, it could be one train, it's, it's not that well, like 10, 15 minutes, something like that, and I'm in the heart of Akihabara. The train station in Akihabara, you're right in the heart of it. In fact, when you get out of the train station, it's awesome. It's decked out with all these posters, and advertisers, and everything, all that anime stuff. Like you know, nice. it's all. It's, so it's like, yeah, I'm like really, <laughs> I'm entering the Akihabara world. You know, I know it's like overly commercialized and everything, but like I, I don't know when you're gonna go. God, it's fun. Hopefully this year. Yeah. That's the plan. Later yeah. This so, year. so yeah, that's awesome. You know. Um. So before I do final thoughts from you, I want to say our plan for the next thing might be a little different, uh, and it might take a little bit of time, so perhaps I will actually get that uh, Maji Record Explained video out. Still working on it in the background. Do hold, dear fam. It's (laughs) coming, I promise. Um, But so I want to do, since we've talked about getting some type of uh, streaming slash recording setup set up at your house, I want to help you actually do that. Okay. Um, Okay. Uh, do one of two things, depending just how the flow goes. One, uh, capture slash stream you. You're welcome to use my stream. I don't care. Um, <laughs> uh, doing a play, full playthrough of Bioshock Infinite. Okay. And or, depending again how timing works out, perhaps interspersed throughout that. Uh, also, a uh, like, uh, like have you on some sort of voice comp Skype or Discord or something, mm-hmm. and uh, stream and record from my perspective teaching you how to play League. Ow! And we okay. could do it together. Like, I could boot us up into 1v1 and kind of teach you just how the mechanics of the game works. Oh, really? That'd be cool. And then also, we could play bots together, so I could kind of guide you. We could play in the same lane. Well, yeah. I mean, that could even be potentially useful to new players. They could. You this know... is my thought. League okay, is yeah, yeah. notoriously very hard to learn, and everyone that I've ever talked to in-game, and I used to be a lot more social with the game, like I'd get thrown into a group of randoms and we'd post a Discord link and just all hop into the same call together. Mm -hmm. Um, And I made a lot of friends through League throughout the years, so I'm very much against that idea that the community is very toxic, though it does seem that way at times. Well, I'm I'm asking this, I don't know, but like, when Mm -hmm. when we're fighting, they might try to play the psychological game, get me angry, or get me, you know what I mean, like... Trying to diss me or something. Yes, and I don't there care. is shit talking, but it's more the people that talk about toxicity are talking about coming from within their own team. Because a lot, a lot of times it feels like people will boot up having a bad day and like, man, I just want to get a good game a week in. And then they start to lose the game mm-hmm. and then they start to get toxic because they're having a bad day. Oh, and in, in all honesty, yeah, to, to be accurate, probably in some cases they have weaker players if it's random. Sometimes yes, they have better ones. Sometimes about they have, 50% yeah. of the time. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> so it's like you gotta, that's something to deal mm-hmm. with, and it's how do I put it, like, uh, I think that randomness is, I don't know, I'm, I'm not trying to shit on the people that are having a bad day. Yeah, absolutely. But, but you know, I sympathize I've with that. I've been there. <laughs> yeah, I think we all have, right? But yeah. I mean, but I would say that, like, if you're going to play the random stuff, then you're going to have to deal with the random nature of rolling those dice. And it's right. not the fault of the other people. They are who they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's you, part of the experience of playing with nine yeah. random people. Yeah. Sometimes people run it down. 
Yeah, I, I, I can personally see how it would be fun mm-hmm. um, because it could be so random you just don't know what you're getting into and then you kind of got to feel it out by the different players and their abilities. You're going to probably feel, oh, he knows what he's doing. Oh, you know, she's an expert. That guy is lost. You know, like... like I will say, and if people really wanted to find it, it's probably still up on this YouTube channel uh, from when I streamed myself trying to play more competitively at League. There are games that I won purely on the back of me having a positive attitude in chat, cheering people to not give up, mm. and like voting no, where I was the deciding vote more than once in a <laughs> surrender vote. Oh, okay. And uh, we came back and won. And League is a game that the later you get in the game, the less the difference up to that point meant. Like mm. things kind of get equalized, and the later it goes into the game, it all comes down to that last team fight. Okay. So, like, I've won more games than I could count based on just having a positive attitude and a not give up and really play it out and just try your best and weather the storm. And sometimes, sometimes you know, you're down 0 and 19 and there's nothing you can do. Sometimes I've been down, I think, literally like 3 to 21 and we come back and won. And there are miracle games like that every day. So it's really a matter Wild of swings mental fortitude. Wild swings, yeah. Yeah. I say that's interesting, but it all comes down to the end. It almost I don't know if it trivializes what comes before or if that still matters a little bit. No, because it takes a lot of skill when you're down that far to not just lose. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> there is some defender's advantage aspect of the game, but it's minimal. Like Okay. Yeah. And with different balance patches over the years, it's shorter games a lot of the time, because it'll matter less. It's harder oh, to yeah. defend How and sometimes longer. How long do the games usually run? Like it's oscillated a lot. There's been patches where an average game is 30 minutes, oh, okay. and then there's been patches where an average game is 15. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's a good, that's it, that's... It's changed over the years. It seems like the spot they try to hit is around like a 25-minute experience. I think that's cool. Mm-hmm. I think that's very doable, because realistically, call me what you will, but I sit down for... I, I play my games. You yeah, I, I, I sit down for yeah. sessions, personally. Yeah, yeah. I, I, do. It's, it's like, <laughs> I just won't play the game if I don't have enough time, which is why it's been a while since I've played League. Yeah, it can be that I way. get sucked into it, I try to think about builds, I try to learn a new champion, which that I want to have multiple sessions to really get to know the mechanics and how to play. Like, when I start to understand how people read me, that's when I'm like, oh, I get this character now. Mm. Like, But that takes a lot of... A lot of reps. <laughs> right. Okay, okay. Now, that makes sense. And it's kind of... Like, for me, it's a, I'm putting myself in that position. It's yeah. like, I, even though I haven't played this game, I'm thinking about other games I've played. And there's... Yeah, there's always that. Like, even if I read the instructions, which I honestly almost never did, I would just be pressing every button and figuring it out. Yep. You know? Me and too. it's kind of... That's it's, how I you know, you, you throw in combinations together, see what feels good, you mm-hmm. know? And then, you know, take it from there, interactions and stuff, you know? Whether it's a computer or other player. Which is why I would mm-hmm. like to... Uh, stream us doing this uh, because the tutorial they've actually gotten pretty good about uh, giving a basic tutorial now oh, that's okay. available in the game uh, but I maintain that by far and away the best way to learn the game is the way I learned it which was having a friend who already knew how to play coach you through and mm-hmm. give you like no stop it do this go here buy yeah. this do that and then just trust me you're yeah. gonna want to be here go here and hit that button like the first couple times, and then you start to get the flow. Okay, you start yeah. to, and they start that's, to be like, "Why'd you do that? Do you see why you died there?" Like, yeah, that's okay. kind of the experience you want, and it's really hard to do that without another live person coaching you through it. So I'd like to get an experience for a new player up that's like that because I haven't really seen somebody brand new get a coach in like that. Yeah, I'm definitely. I think that's the best way to do it. It, it sounds like it could honestly it sounds like it could be a lot of fun because I have good yeah. spirits about it. Like I'm sure I'm gonna die. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna laugh at myself. Oh yeah. You know, and it's fine. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm the type of guy too. All right, we'll you're gonna die enough experience. to where the game will become unwinnable because you in particular. Have yeah. Died yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that will happen for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I mean uh, that's just you know learning curve, right? Yeah. So I, I'm actually totally cool with it and have a good nature approach to it. It'll be um, fun. I think it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. So you know, and, actually, and the thing about it is, if if it is that, and it provides additional instructions to people, then hopefully it's you know yeah. enjoyable. Even if it's a small crowd or whatever. Like it, you know, if not, like we'll have fun. Yeah, sure. <laughs> just like with yeah. this. Yeah, indeed. Um, so uh, uh, any uh, final thoughts about Arcane in particular? Ah, uh, wow. They left it at such a suspenseful ending, you know, with the missile hitting yeah. you know, the council, yeah. right? <laughs> Holy shit, man. Like, the fallout of that, if they're going to be following that up, that's like a, that's a one hell of a cliffhanger. Even if uh, the council themselves are protected as the speculation goes by some sort of, like, Solari ability Mel turns out to have, mm. 
that building's gonna get blown up in a very spectacular way still. And that is gonna cause quite a bit of fallout. <laughs> Dude, I, 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 spumole. I predict, like, I don't know how they're gonna play it out. Who lives and dies and what, how people might change or whatever, be wounded or whatever. I don't know about all that. Mm-hmm. What I do think is that there's gonna be, I would be, I would be shocked if there wasn't retaliation and violence and a ma- massive fallout from this. So it's like, great show, 10 out of 10, absolute goat of Western animation. Um, just because of my timing, I haven't had my wife watch it yet, hmm. but I'm like, I, I'm t- highly suggesting this, <laughs> you know, like, even, like, honestly, Good, yes. yeah, Good. Like, no, I think she should see it, I think she should, because it's like, how do I put this, um, it's, there's a few things I've suggested this year, I suggested hmm. Chainsaw Man to her too, and she likes that. Right, okay, batting a thousand so far. <laughs> yeah, really. And, well, yeah, no, but this might be. What's the next the off caller suggestion? Spy Family. <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny. how do we stumble on that? One? You know, but oh, well, it's funny. Your suggestion, um, mm. because we finished up Spy Family, mm. but your suggestion for Bochi the the Rock was very good. My, oh, my daughter liked that. Watch we, that. We, yeah, we watched. Watch that. Yeah, we watched it over dinner, and my daughter really liked it. Nice. You know, it's it's kind of a cute you know, like I think it's like Kion or Kion, the other one I've never seen. Oh, K-On. K-On, yeah, thank yeah. K-On, yeah, yeah. It's like, it has that, that vibe of a, a girl band and everything mm. and all the personalities in it. It's, yeah. it's very I'm cute and everything. It. Yeah, it's very, like, how do I put it? It's, uh, uh, to me, it's a it's a little bit slice of life, a little bit Iyashike, which mm. is totally fine, and my daughter liked it, so it's, you know, yeah. it's, uh, how do I put this? I don't know how many people are out there like me. Maybe not many, but... I'm pretty sure there's an entire culture of people who love slice of life anime. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I was going <laughs> yeah. say, like, one, of the, one of the nice things about it, like, I watched the most slice of life anime when my life sucked the most. Yeah. Um, I watched, uh, um, oh, God, Yatsume Book of Friends. Um, it's like... I don't know, I've seen that one. Yeah, it's like, it's like this one where he, I guess he, he's like an orphan, and mm. he's been adopted, you know, and uh, and he, he doesn't really, didn't really know his parents, I think, but mm. he has, I think it was his maybe his grandmother or like relative had this book where it like trapped all these spirits in it. Uh-huh, and so he has to deal with all these spirits and trying to let them free, you know, huh. cause it causes all this turmoil. And actually one of the greater, extremely powerful spirits kind of befriends him and hangs uh-huh. out with him. And if he gets into any real trouble, he's like, I eat demons. You know, it's like you can <laughs> you turn to something similar to a dragon, but he's just like a house cat walking around. And you, can, <laughs> you can just poof and be like, you know, a massive like dragon like thing. You know, it's not like a dragon, fun. but it's like a massive <laughs> animal of ter- terrific powers, right? Yeah. He's like a demigod or something, you know. But but it's all very slice of life. The cat is always like, hang- usually he's in his cat form and it's like, oh, I'm going to eat more senbei rice crackers, going to have some sake. <laughs> I'm like, I'm living the life. This is delicious. You know, you get that kind of Yashi K feeling with the cute cat. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> very nice. Anyways, so, but so I went on track with that. But uh, but but the thing about it is, is like um, I like Chainsaw Man, but I don't think I'm gonna have my daughter see it at this age. Oh yeah, definitely it's a little not. too bloody, right? <laughs> so I got to be selective. And uh, Bochy the Rock is an excellent selection for like a you know like a nine year old daughter or something. Mm-hmm. It's and Arcane might be a little much for her right now too, but definitely one day. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I might go back on this. I want to see how she matures, but a few more years down the road, basically, and then I'm thinking, like, art levels of, of violence and arcane. She's certainly seen some death. Yeah. No, I didn't really want her to, but she has seen a little bit. Well, growing up in America, she's probably going to see the level of death Arcane has, probably. (laughs) (laughs) Just by that age. She's going to be a teenager. She's going to be watching movies that are going to have that kind of death. It's coming, right? And and I think she's actually almost ready for it. She's not quite mature enough, in my opinion, but it's like she kind of lost interest in magical girls because they always win. Oh, she's going to love Monica later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 She's, like, she's not ready for that yet. But, but Monica's wow. going like, to... Wow, yeah. what an anticipatory thing as a father to hear her yeah. be like, they always win. Oh, yes. yeah. Dude, yeah. Yes, I'm glad you feel a problem with that as well, sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there yeah, it's like, it, this is like, uh, <laughs> like I, 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 this is just a really one-off from nowhere. <laughs> Apropos of nothing, mm-hmm. um, this, the joke in my mind is being buried up to my shoulders, mm-hmm. and then it's a game show, and they have a lowrider in car like a Camaro. Brand new car! <laughs> 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 and that's what you win in Monica Magica, you know. Oh, it's yeah. like your powers are going to be there, but you know, it's like you're going to have a sh- most have a short reign. Hashtag worth. Yeah, <laughs> it's like make the most of it because it ain't going to last that long. You know, it's like sorry, but you know the 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 big bad. Um, I always forget, the the German name does something not. What's the what's the word that? 
Well, Purgus Noct. Well, Purgus Noct. Yeah, yes. I don't remember Noct because that's the German for night. Yeah. Probably, well, Purgus probably means something horrible. Uh, <laughs> I think it means uh, Witch's Night. Oh, like, okay, okay. More, more ominous than, than uh, terrifying. Yeah, well, it's like it's this invincible big bat. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. it, it missiles. It's the witch of all witches. <laughs> yeah, it's it. So, anyways, I mean, that's one hell of a thing to, to be fated to, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, but yeah, I will wish on that to later. So, yeah, I don't have any more thoughts on Arcane except uh, it's a definite watch and when the any sequels come out I'm going to check it out yes and there should again be one in the works I, they haven't given a release date on it but they said it should be less production time than it took for the first one which was six years mm. um, it's already been out for I think a year now maybe a little bit more than a year how, how well is it done um, because it's like it's oh, it's been um, super well received. Excellent. It should it. be. You know, sometimes <laughs> weird things happen. You know, or it's like you have a gem that gets lost. The league community has showed up for this one. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, I have no problem recommending this to anybody if they don't know a damn thing about league. Because yeah. I didn't. And it as, was awesome. a, as one more note to the release date, they had started production on season two before this had been released. The way they kind of explained it was like they have story writing and then storyboarding and then animation mm -hmm. kind of as like a sequence of development so like before animation begins they maybe have even begun work on the story for season two kind oh, of okay. yeah. sequence so like cool. it's been in production for quite a while so it could be as early as this year it could be as late i wouldn't think it'd be beyond next summer mm, okay. just as the sense i've been getting great so yeah hopefully it's this year killer <laughs> yeah 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 I, lo I mean honestly i'm ready for it you yeah know? but it's like because that cliffhanger but uh yeah i guess the only other thing is i gotta definitely uh have, have Naomi experience this um because it's funny like how do i put it she's trained you know she worked in a manga mm -hmm. you know as a manga car and all that uh, for many years ago um but without a doubt she uh, she appreciates it, like artistic beauty in a broader sense you know like we enjoy that together mm -hmm. going to art museums and things and so I, I think this will be a major hit sweet yeah and I can't wait to certified my waifu yeah. material yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that note thank you all for watching and if you want to see more of this content and his uh, depravity as he descends into being a league player <laughs> uh, <laughs> feel free to subscribe for more <laughs>